Hey everyone. Welcome back to another video. This here is the first part of, what if Naruto had soul powers? Summary, one small choice, Naruto figured he was no good at shadow clones. So he looked further on the forbidden scroll and came upon a jutsu that could push him to whole new heights, ninja art, soul drain. Familial Team 7. Be warned, this is a bit of a crackfic. As always, huge thanks to all of my Patreons, making these videos would be impossible without you guys' support, especially with all the restrictions YouTube places on my type of content. As always, the full story is already out over there for you guys along with about 30 other different stories you can enjoy. Also feel free to send me any messages over there if you have any questions or even if you just want to chat. Link to all of that will be in the description. Anyways, everyone, enjoy the video. Chapter 1, Ninja Art, Soul Drain. I have to make it to Mizuki Sensei's training area, Naruto thought as he ran as fast as he could away from the Hokage Tower with the Forbidden Scroll on his back. In the Hokage's office. Naruto has stolen the Forbidden Scroll of Sealing from my office, I want the scroll and Naruto return to me now and I will not accept failure, we can't let Naruto be hurt or the scroll captured, Hiruzen Sarutobi, the third Hokage of Konoha proclaimed. Hi Hokage-sama, a battalion of Chunin and Jounin called. Move out. And with a wave of his arm, the shinobi of the Hidden Leaf Village disappeared in a puff of smoke. Let's see, Shadow Clone Jutsu? Crap I suck at clones. Next, Reaper Death Seal? Sounds like an emo jutsu, he he, maybe I should keep this for the team, Naruto laughed at his little joke while looking through the scroll. Huh? Ninja Art, Soul Drain, absorbs the target into the user and gives the user access to the target's muscle memories, recently used jutsus and consciousness into their own mind. Sounds kinda weird Naruto wondered on its uses for a while. Well I gotta start somewhere, okay soul drain it is. Naruto. Hey, Iruka sensei. Why you found me fast I was only able to learn one jutsu. Iruka paused and had a good look at Naruto, he was scuffed and dirty and seemed to be jumpy but focused at the same time. Almost like the squirrels found in these forests. Naruto, why did you steal the forbidden scroll? Do you know how much trouble you'll be in? Nah I'll be fine. Mizuki sensei said that I'll be again and after learning one of the jutsu in the scroll, Hokage Gigi won't mind if I borrowed it Naruto yelled with a grin. Mizuki? Iruka wondered suspiciously before hearing a whizzing sound. Naruto move he turned back to Naruto only to see him scurrying up a tree while staring into the forest just in time to avoid most a few dozen kunai, receiving only two, one cutting his left foot and the other scraping his right bicep. Wow Iruka, you sure did find the little monster fast Mizuki snarled from a branch on the other side of the clearing. Mizuki. What are you doing? Sensei what's going on? Why did you attack me? Naruto asked as he fell onto the ground, nursing his wounds. Shut up demon. Mizuki screamed as he hurled one of his giant shuriken at a scared and hurt Naruto. Naruto get down. Schlink. Naruto looked up only to see Iruka knelt over him with a shuriken stabbed into his back. Iruka, sensei? Why? Naruto asked with tears in his eyes. Because Naruto cough cough I couldn't just let my favorite student be hurt. Iruka boldly stated with a sad grin. Ha ha ha. Favorite student? Please Iruka we both know you hate just him like everyone else, that's why you always lied to him, Mizuki stated with a wicked smirk. Lied to me? About what? Naruto asked in confusion. Mizuki's smirk grew into a crazed grin, about why everyone hates you. Iruka's eyes widened in disbelieving shock don't Mizuki. Mizuki jumped down behind Iruka and pulled up a kunai to finish Iruka the truth is Naruto, you are the nine-tailed fox, QB reincarnated. Naruto stared in stunned silence at Iruka's face, it all makes sense now, why they all glare at me, my birthday, the beatings. Thinking of all the painful past experiences Naruto started falling into a depression, then seeing the look on Iruka's pained face he remembered the few that do care about him and made a decision. No. I don't care if I was the fox before. Right now, I'm Naruto Uzumaki and I have a sensei to protect. Naruto rolled out from underneath Iruka while swiping a kunai and throwing it at Mizuki's shocked form. It nailed his right lung. Og. You little bastard. Mizuki looked up in time to see Iruka throwing his shuriken right back at him. Take this traitor, Iruka yelled. Mizuki dove out of the way, but not fast enough. Ah he screamed as his legs were sliced off at the knee. In a last-ditch effort, Mizuki threw his last shuriken at Iruka, which Iruka dodged by ducking behind a tree, the shuriken stuck halfway through the tree shocking Iruka with Mizuki's strength, that was when Mizuki smirked holding a hand sign. 
Katsu the shuriken exploded, knocking the tree down and throwing Iruka far out of the clearing. Mizuki's vision was starting to fade. Well at least I got to take that smart bastard out with me. Forgetting someone? Mizuki's eyes widened when he saw Naruto in front of him holding the ox hand sign. Demon. What are yo? Ninja art, soul drain. That's when Mizuki felt it, Naruto chakra was compressing Mizuki's down into a little ball, it was excruciatingly painful ah. When Naruto's left hand clenched Mizuki's forehead his whole body was sucked into Naruto through his palm leaving only his shredded and bloody clothes behind. Naruto fell to his knees clutching his head. Mindscape. Huh? What happened? Naruto looked around finding himself in a large maze of sewers. This is weird. Boy, come here a dark voice bellowed from around the corner. Naruto walked around the corner to find a huge room with a giant cage in it, um hello? Is anyone there? Suddenly, a giant claw reached for him from between the bars and only missing by a few inches of his face, uck? Naruto muttered before falling on his ass. This is my container? Jeez you're fucking tiny the nine-tailed fox demon mocked from beyond his steel cage. KQB? Naruto stuttered in shock. Well what do you know, he's not a complete moron, QB chuckled at Naruto's frustrated face. Oi! I'm Naruto Uzumaki. And I'm gonna be Hokage someday, Naruto yelled in a childish fury, you can't talk to me like that. Wah! What did you do to me demon? Naruto turned around to see a nude Mizuki hung on the wall by chains. Ga exclamation mark dot dot the fox? Boy, what is this pathetic creature doing here? The fox asked with a snarl. Um I think I did it with my technique, the soul drain. Naruto replied in a slight awe that it worked properly. Whom were you practicing this technique on squirrels? Yeah, why? That explains the lunch I enjoyed a few minutes ago. Lu lunch? Mizuki stuttered while shaking in fear on the fox demon. Yada that means I saved Iruka sensei. Naruto cheered before turning to Mizuki with a dark look on his face, now to finish what I started. Mahaha. Boy. I think this will be the start of a beautiful friendship the fox grinned from behind Naruto, with Naruto matching the wicked grin. What are you doing demon? Naruto walked over to Mizuki while weaving three hand signs and Naruto what are you doing? Finishing my technique, ha. Huh? With that a glow emanated from Mizuki and split in two, the first part entered Naruto through his eyes and mouth, and the other materialized in front of Mizuki's body, taking the form of a clothed Mizuki himself. Ah, actually that didn't hurt as much as I thought it would, Naruto said while smiling at a see-through clothed Mizuki that was on his knees in front of his hung body. Hey Kyubi-san, open up. Naruto then flung Mizuki's body to the fox, who happily munched on the corpse before swallowing. Mmm, boy, you are by far the best host I have ever had ha 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 Kyuubi smiled with blood hanging from his lips. Mizuki's consciousness looked on and expected to feel furious at Naruto and the fox, but all he could manage was a week. What am I gonna live in now? And how come I'm not pissed at you damn I'm the fucking demon you whelp dash, okay, Naruto it is. Why am I not trying to kill you right now? Naruto looked at Mizuki seriously. I dunno. Mizuki stared right back with a slight frown. You're a brat. I can answer that, both Naruto and Mizuki looked up at the giant fox I consumed, along with your body, your negative emotions. Um why? If you don't mind me asking Kyuubi-san? Asked Naruto. They taste juicy. Okay, Mizuki said feeling confused but, happy? So now what Naruto? Fox demon. Now. You stay right here, QB stated before placing his giant claw over Mizuki's frame, thus holding him in place. Ouch bastard fox. Ha, huh, guess he can still feel frustrated. And me QB san Naruto asked with a raised arm. Well now brat, you have a story to fabricate the fox replied before blowing a light breeze at Naruto, flinging him out of the cage room and down the hall. Woo. Oh ooh smack ouch Naruto said as he fell onto his ass, again. Looking around, Naruto realized he was back in the field he and Iruka defeated Mizuki in. Wah? Was any of that real Naruto thought? Yep. Ah Naruto span around looking for the QB. I'm still in your head kid, and you need to get rid of those clothes, that's when Naruto looked down and saw Mizuki's bloody clothes left over from the jutsu. How do I do that qb san Naruto thought to the QB. Hey it's your problem not mine, you figure it out. Naruto sat thoughtful for a second before he heard Iruka moan and get up from his place just out of sight. Naruto panicked trying to think of a solution quick um. Uck, I got it he thought with a grin. 
Naruto weaved a few hand signs before whispering Earth style, headhunter jutsu. And diving into the ground, taking Mizuki's clothes with him. Iruka wandered into the clearing on guard, Naruto? Where are you? Naruto popped up behind Iruka and shouted, Right here, Sensei. Ah! Iruka yelped before falling on his ass, causing Naruto to laugh loudly. Naruto paused in his laughter for a moment while thinking, Hold up, how the heck do I know the headhunter jutsu? Iruka looked annoyed at Naruto before realizing the absence of Mizuki. Hey, Naruto? Where's Mizuki? Did he get away with the scroll? No way sensei. I got the scroll right here. I destroyed Mizuki just like a future Hokage would, Naruto said with a grin while pointing to a darkened patch of earth with a blood-stained headband sitting atop it. Iruka's eyes widened in disbelief, you, completely destroyed him? How? Naruto's grin grew even wider, with my new jutsu from the scroll. Iruka stared at Naruto in shock, this academy dropout managed to beat a high-level chunin? With one jutsu? Iruka thought in amazement, if that doesn't prove he should be again and then I don't know what will. Grabbing Mizuki's headband from the ground, Iruka waved Naruto over, hey Naruto close your eyes for a second. Grinning stupidly, Naruto sat in front of Iruka with his eyes closed, Naruto felt a tugging on his goggles then a cool feeling replacing them. Congratulations Naruto, Naruto opened his eyes to see Iruka and his reflection in the goggles that he was holding, you graduate. Naruto reached up to Mizuki's headband, no, it's mine. He thought in awe before hugging his sensei, Iruka sensei. Ha 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 ha. Ouch Naruto I'm still bleeding here. Ha 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 ha. Chapter 2, Explanation and Squad Formation. Knock knock. Come on in you two said Sarutobi Hiruzen, the third Hokage of Konoha. A bandaged Iruka entered with a polite bow the vastly powerful elder, good morning Hoka. Hey Gigi. Knock IT off Naruto. Naruto ran over to Sarutobi with a smile on his face so big his eyes were closed tight, ignoring Irika's furious outburst. Sarutobi chuckles graciously, HMHMHM. Good morning to you Naruto-kun, how was your rest? He hopped into a chair and leaned back relaxing, he pouted ah the hospital was stuffy and they kept me up all night and they don't serve any ramen you gotta fix that. Sarutobi HMM ed with a smile before turning to the now seated Iruka, and you Iruka-kun? All fixed up? Only a scar or two now Hokage-sama, he said, patting his side and wincing, and the scroll? He asked. It's in the right hands now, so don't worry about it. Gigi I'm again and now. Look. Sarutobi turned to Naruto with a withered smile, yes you are Naruto and I'm so very proud of you. Naruto's answering smile lit up the whole room. With a small cough, the third Hokage now demanded their attention causing the two to straighten up in their chairs. Now, Shinobi of Konoha, I want a full report on the happenings of last night starting with Iruka. Hi Hokage-sama they chanted together before Iruka led off with his version of what occurred the night before. When I arrived at the fourth survival training grounds, I discovered a tired but cheery Naruto clutching the forbidden scroll and staring at me expectantly. After learning from Naruto that my colleague Mizuki told him to steal the scroll in the first place, I witnessed Mizuki attack a fleeing Naruto with the shadow clone kunai jutsu, the aged Hokage picked up his mug of tea to try and calm his growing anger at the deceased Mizuki, after this I stepped in and attempted to stop Mizuki's attack. This is when Mizuki told Naruto the S-class secret about the, um, well the demon fox. The temperature in the room dropped as the Hokage clenched his mug in his hand barely controlling his rage. And then, Naruto defeated Mizuki to save me with his new jutsu. The rage disappeared, huh? The Hokage said looking dumbfounded at Iruka. Iruka looked at the Hokage nervously and stated academy student, Naruto Uzumaki, completely destroyed senior Chunin Mizuki Kohaku. So I gave him Genin status. The Hokage stared at Iruka stunned and then at Naruto disbelieving, kid, I think it's time to tell them the story we fabricated, the QB thought to Naruto. Naruto nodded, okay qb san Um, Gigi? Do you want my report now? The Hokage looked at Naruto and slowly nodded while refocusing. All right. Well after Iruka sensei returned fire and managed to injure Mizuki team, Mizuki blasted him away and I thought he was hurt. So while Mizuki was down I hit him with my new jutsu. And sent his body way underground to rot. But when I came back up, Iruka sensei was waiting for me and he wasn't too bad off so I was really happy Naruto said before smiling like an idiot up at Iruka. An earth jutsu? Well that is impressive Naruto, could you give us a demonstration? Sarutobi asked with a proud nod. 
I knew this boy was a real treasure, already learning such advanced techniques at his age. Smirking to himself. Ugh. Well the thing is, Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, I kinda, forgot the jutsu. Sarutobi and Iruka deadpanned at Naruto, I take it back, he's a moron. Sarutobi weakly smiled at Iruka, Iruka-kun, thank you for the report, I'll see you at the meeting tonight yes? Iruka knew a dismissal when he heard one, Hi Hokage-sama, I will be there. Turning to Naruto he ruffled his hair, Catch you later Naruto, good luck as a Konoha Genin, and be careful okay? You got it sensei. Naruto beamed up at Iruka as Iruka smiled and left. As soon as the door closed, Sarutobi took off his Hokage hat and gave a woeful sigh, Naruto, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about the fox. But you must understand, if the wrong people found out about your status as a container, well it wouldn't end well, Sarutobi stared to Naruto, willing him to understand. Kid, I think he was just trying to protect you from being harmed. And I guess, from me the QB supplied to a confused Naruto. QB san I have to tell him the truth. If I can't trust Hokage Gigi then how can I trust anyone? Naruto thought to the fox. With the fox's following silence, Naruto took it as an agreement with his statement, Gigi, what I told you before, well it's not the full story exactly. Naruto gazed up at the startled old man, I remember the jutsu, it wasn't an earth one. Sarutobi sat back, shocked and worried about Naruto's subdued behavior and after a few moments silence, Anbu, leave us alone for a moment, four blurs moved from strategic points in the room and flew out the window. Naruto, please tell me what happened? I swear on my honor as the fire shadow that I will not tell anyone of what you say now unless it endangers the village. Sarutobi looked comfortingly at a scared Naruto. Well when I opened the scroll, the first few jutsu just didn't stand out to me, so when I found one that did I jumped on the opportunity to train, Naruto started blabbering nervously, it's called, Ninja Art, Soul Drain, at this the strongest man in fire country, the legendary fire shadow, went stark pale, I I didn't destroy Mizuki, I absorbed him, he's in my head right now. If I go into my mindscape I can talk to him. How do you know that Naruto? Sarutobi whispered in concern, if a person like you entered their mindscape, they'd meet. Their tenant. Naruto shifted nervously, well if you mean Kyuubi san then yeah I've met him, and I. What did he say to you Naruto? Naruto looked up into Sarutobi's eyes with fierce determination and boldly stated, the Kyuubi pledged itself as an ally to myself and to Konoha. Sarutobi sat shocked and silent for a few minutes, a demon this powerful, being channeled through someone with Naruto-kun's spirit? This could very well be the bringer of the destruction of the shinobi world I'm talking to, Sarutobi looked down at Naruto seeing what he could be, then Naruto grinned at Sarutobi like the innocent child he is, and just maybe he will be the most incredible Hokage this village has ever seen. Sarutobi thought with a smile. Sarutobi sat up straight and placed his hat back on his head, all right Naruto-kun, I've come to a decision. The public story will be what you first told Iruka and myself, only I will know of your new last resort jutsu. You will keep your position as Genin, in exchange for a wish of mine, okay Naruto? Naruto nodded his head vigorously and with a huge grin, yeah Gigi whatever you need, I can do, believe it. With an aged smile, Sarutobi slowly got up walked around his desk and knelt to eye level next to Naruto, believe in the will of fire Naruto-kun, now placing the Hokage hat on Naruto's head. And use it to protect the Hidden Leaf Village. Naruto looked up at Sarutobi with more determination than any twelve-year-old should have, till my last breath yea, I will live by these words. My new nin do. Believe it. Finishing with a hug Naruto gave the hat back with a smile. Good to hear, stated Sarutobi while adjusting his hat, Naruto Uzumaki. Genin of Konoha. Our meeting is adjourned, the details of this meeting is an A-class secret Sarutobi ruffled Naruto's overly happy head. Hi Hokage Gigi. Hash. Iruka sat at Ichiraku Ramen feeling lucky about the whole situation with Mizuki, I wonder when Naruto is due to come out of the meeting. Not a moment sooner Naruto hopped up onto the stool next to him. Hey Iruka sensei. Don't shout idiot I'm right here. Laughing, Naruto said ni, Iruka sensei, remember you said you'd buy me ramen if I graduate, right? Iruka sighed in defeat, yeah sure, go ahead Naruto he couldn't help himself from smiling seeing Naruto so happy. All right. Hey old man Ichiraku. Give me four miso ramen and keep em coming. Damn it Naruto you think I'm made of money? Hash. Later that night at the large meeting hall at the base of the Hokage Tower, 
Iruka and the principal of the Ninja Academy sat alongside the Hokage, facing 24 Jounin. Clearing his throat, Sarutobi gained everyone's attention. All right, thank you all for coming, tonight those of you that want to may request a new Genin for a squad that will be ran by you. If you have any problems with what one of your colleagues suggests feel free to share your opinion. At this Asuma Sarutobi, Hiruzen's son, stepped forward Hey dad, I'd like to request this generation's Inoshika Cho unit, under my old team banner, Team 10. The Hokage nodded approvingly, a sound request, anyone object? Silence. All right Asuma, Team 10 is yours. Um, Hokage-sama? Kakashi Hitake stepped forward, I was told that no matter who I chose I'm gonna end up getting the Uchiha Kos of my Sharingan. Gun, so can I have Naruto as well please? At this a huge uproar broke out, the demon passed? Hokage-sama. You can't let the demon be on the same team as the Uchiha I love Dengo. Silence. At Sarutobi's yell everyone shut up, Anko, please leave you are a Tokubatsu Jounin and as such not allowed to train a squad anyway. K. Anko says before diving out a closed window, shattering the glass all over the floor. Sarutobi sighs in exasperation, Kakashi, was there anyone else you wanted to request? Looking up from his book, huh? Did you say something Hokage-sama? Sarutobi facepalmed himself, for the love of log, your third candidate Hitake. A widening in realization, oh um let's see, I guess I'll take. Kakashi rummaging through the sheets of paper containing Genin names, hmm, this one? Okay Sakura Haruno I guess. Any objections? Nobody cared, alright squad 7 under Kakashi Hitake, Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto Uzumaki and the pink-haired Banshee. Everyone looked at Sarutobi with a raised eyebrow, or a suppressed giggle. Uck. I mean. Sakura Haruno. Next, Chapter 3, Introducing a New Naruto, Member of Team 7. Mindscape. Hey Mizuki Team, Kyuubi-san. Why is it a sewer down here? Naruto yelled upon entry into his mindscape. Cause kid, you're as unimaginative as a shit. Kyuubi honestly replied. Bastard fox. Naruto yelled back childishly while shaking a fist at the legendary demon. Well Naruto, a see-through Mizuki stated leaning on one of the bars on the cage, a person's mindscape is basically the representation of how they imagine their consciousness to be, yours is a sewer because you are young and impressionable. Naruto just looked at Mizuki blankly. What I'm saying is it took a random simple form, you can change if you want. Just by willing it to change. Mizuki explained. Naruto's face lit up in realization, why didn't you just say so before? See what I'd have to put up with by myself if he chose another jutsu? QB deadpanned at a face palm Mizuki. So I can do this, Naruto exclaimed staring in concentration at a blank space. A lot of people can glare at the floor kid, it doesn't take much concentration to a small two-story house with a flat roof suddenly appeared. I stand corrected. Mizuki looked at the house in awe, holy log. That's incredible. Smirking, Naruto jumped onto the roof almost done, he said and chewed his lip in focus. And thus, a 10 by 8 meter flat screen television grew out of the roof, along with a four-seater couch. Done. Now you too can watch the outside world through my eyes and ears. Mizuki looked at the black screen and listened to Naruto's snores. Truly invigorating. He sarcastically stated. I know right? Naruto obliviously yelled. That's nice and all, but you need to get up. Your team assignments is in four hours, and you need to get new gear. New gear? Why? Naruto asked looking at Kyuubi. Since you have my fighting style and main jutsu, you need to acquire the items that work with it. Mizuki explained. Huh? So that's how I knew the headhunter jutsu? Naruto asked with a look of understanding on his face. Yeah kid, say what other jutsus do you suddenly know? The Kyuubi asked. Naruto tried to think of what jutsu he knows, well, all my jutsu that I know I can do are, substitution, transformation, ninja art, soul drain, shuriken shadow clone jutsu, earth style, headhunter jutsu and the earth style, earth wall. I also feel like I have a higher understanding of chakra control. Naruto's smile threatened to split his face in half, wow I totally picked the best jutsu ever. That's nice, Mizuki said standing behind Naruto, now, wake up Mizuki punted Naruto back down the hallway into consciousness. Hash. Beep 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 smash. Naruto sat up quickly fully energized, all right. Let's go. Naruto cheered as he jumped to his feet. Hash. 
After getting dressed, Naruto ran down the street to the Higurashi Ninja store, hoping they'll let him in since he's now a ninja. Now standing at the door, Naruto took a deep breath hurry up kit, you don't have all day. Realizing the annoying Baka was right dash. Boy. Naruto walked into the store listening to the jingling of the doorbell. Good morning and welcome to the Higurashi Ninja store, how may I help you? A roughly 40-year-old burly bald man asked from behind the counter. I'm um, hi, I'm looking for a twin set of those giant shuriken, Naruto said pointing to a shuriken identical to Mizuki's hung on the wall, and a shinobi assassin set please. The burly man's eyebrows lifted, an assassin set? Aren't you a little young to already have a shinobi specialty? Naruto smiled up at the man, old enough to kill, old enough to do whatever the fuck he wants. That was taught to me by an old sensei of mine. A huge laugh bellowed out from the man, what an interesting life philosophy young man. Alright I'll grab it for you. The man walked into the back room where Naruto heard a lot of metal clinking. Not two minutes later, he walked back out with a box the size of Naruto's torso, and two small metal bracelets, these are the latest giant shuriken sets, the bracelets have three seals on each, and each seal can hold two giant shuriken. It's a bit pricey, but for a kid like you I can knock it down a little since you're buying a whole assassination kit as well. You want me to fully stock each seal? Naruto looked on blankly at the bracelets, um I don't know if I can afford all that, I only got this much, said Naruto as he opened his froggy wallet, letting all his cash fall out. And after the bounty on a B rank missing Nin, Mizuki, there was a lot. The burly man's eyes flashed into dollar signs, I think you can easily afford all of this with a half of what you got there my boy. Ha ha. Naruto smiled up at him, thanks mister, um, sorry what's your name? The man thumped his chest proudly and stated in a much rehearsed voice Dan Higurashi is my name, and blacksmithing is my game, and you my boy? Naruto suddenly got nervous, will he kick me out once he finds out who I am? Like all the others? The QB whispered to Naruto through his thoughts he seems to be a good man Kit, trust him and he may return the favor. Naruto looked up at the man nervously, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, rookie Genin of Konoha. Dan's eyebrows lifted once again and stared at Naruto for a solid minute, putting Naruto on edge, ready to run at a moment's notice. You're the kid that painted the Hokage monument? Dan said with a smile, that takes guts kid. Naruto smiles back widely, he he you heard about that? Everyone did, what I wanna know is how you managed to get away from all the monbu in a bright orange tracksuit, Dan said while he chuckled at his own joke. Naruto yelled confidently, orange is the best color by far. Believe it. Laughing at Naruto's enthusiasm, Dan said, well I can help set you up with some proper shinobi clothing while keeping some orange if you got the time, what do you say Naruto-kun? Yada. Naruto cheered while following Dan to the clothing section. Naruto heard the QB sigh heavily, this is why we left extra early kid. Hash. Good luck with the team meeting Naruto-kun, said Dan waving goodbye to Naruto as he ran to the academy to meet up with his new squad. Naruto half turned and grinned back, thanks Dan-san. I'll be back soon I promise. Jumping onto a nearby roof in his new outfit, Naruto took a second to admire how cool he looked. With the tracksuit now folded away and safely sealed into his new orange ceiling belt, he now wore black ninja pants with a print of an orange shuriken on each of his knees, with a chainmail singlet laying under his new black t-shirt with an orange trimming. On his feet he wore standard black shinobi sandals, sitting over orange bandages wrapped to hold the hem of his pants in place. He had orange and black lined gloves on his hands showing off his shuriken seal bracelets, the look was finished off with a new cloth on his headband which was a jet black. Jumping on top of a nearby power pole, Naruto yelled out, look out world. A new Naruto Uzumaki is in town. With that, Naruto focused chakra to his feet, and started building hopping towards the academy. Hash. Sasuke Uchiha? HN. Naruto Uzumaki? Dot. Naruto? Iruka looked up from his role to look towards Naruto's seat only to see it empty, with a frown Iruka thought, Naruto what are you doing? Being late on your first day as a shinobi? Geez he's probably just slept in. With a deep sigh, Iruka was about to continue on when suddenly Naruto popped out of the floor in front of Iruka's desk, hey sensei. Naru, too? Iruka stopped his rant when he noticed, yes Naruto did pop out of the ground, and with a new look. With a grin Naruto said, sorry I'm late sensei, I was stocking up on ninja tools. You know what they say, better to be late and prepared than early and dead. 
He finished before moving to his desk between Shikamaru Nara and Kiba Inuzuka. Iruka stared at Naruto in shock until, Oi sensei we're all here so can you get on with the team announcements? It's troublesome to be here any longer, spoke the resident genius. Now snapped out of his daze, why yes, good point Shikamaru, right team 1. Nobody cared unless it was their team that was called. Team 7 Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno. Under Kakashi Hitake. Sasuke had no outward reaction at all, Naruto only frowned slightly, Sakura cheered that she was on the same team as Sasuke. For an unknown reason, Iruka felt like he was witnessing something special. Hash. Where the fuck is this sensei of ours? Naruto don't swear it irritates Sasuke-kun. Fuck you Haruno. Team 7 appeared slightly frustrated that their sensei was late, by 3 full hours, starting to border on 4. Though on Sasuke, you can only tell by the slowly increasing frown. This is the site one Kakashi Hatake finds himself walking in on, hello Team 7, you're tacky and I hate you. Meet on the roof in 1 minute. Poof, and the jounin is gone. In a rush, Naruto grabs his teammates and using the headhunter jutsu, dives into the outer wall of the academy and moves up to the roof. Hash. Poofing onto the roof Kakashi took a seat against the railing, waiting for his charges. What he saw next was more than he expected. Wahoo, yelled Naruto as he flew out from the rooftop with a screaming Sakura under one arm and a stunned silent Sasuke over his shoulder. Naruto let go of his teammates in midair and landed with a thumbs up directed at Kakashi, as Sakura landed in an unceremonious heap on her ass, and Sasuke flipped around at the last second to land in a crouch next to Naruto. That was, interesting, how did you do that Dobi? Said Sasuke with a raised brow. With a grin Naruto looked to Sasuke, he he with my new jutsu team. Sasuke smirked back at Naruto's grin, guess you won't be as useless as I thought. Before Naruto could retort Kakashi cut in. Impressive you three, getting up six stories in eight seconds. Very impressive. Thanks sensei, Naruto shouted proudly. Shut up Naruto you're yelling is annoying everyone. The useless banshee screeched. She was just about to scream again when Kakashi slammed some tape over her mouth. Right, now that that is taken care of, how about some introductions? Starting with the blonde, Kakashi said while pointing to Naruto. Why don't you show us how it's done sensei? Sasuke asked. All right, my name is Kakashi Hatake, my likes are none of your concern, my dislikes are the things I don't like, my hobbies include things I like, and my dreams are rated R18 plus so I won't be sharing them with children. Now you blondie. The three just stared at him thinking, all we know is his name and he has grown up thoughts. Okay then. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like ramen, my comrades and my tenant, at this Kakashi's visible I widened. My dislikes are the scum of this village, irritating fangirls, and traitors. My hobbies include sleeping and training and ramen. And my dream, I will protect the will of fire and the people that follow it. Believe it. Kakashi nodded, alrighty then, I'll need to talk to you about you tenant comment later Naruto. Alright the emo, your turn. My name is Sasuke Uchiha, I like training and getting stronger, I dislike weak fangirls, and a certain man. My hobbies are the same as my likes, and my dream. No I don't have a dream, but my ambition, is to kill a certain man. Well aren't you a ray of sunshine, Sasuke glared at Kakashi. All right in your turn Pinky. MMMPHMNNMMPFFF. That's quite amazing and more than enough information, thank you Sakura. The two boys looked at Kakashi confused, did he actually hear her introduce himself? Or did he already know our names? They looked at each other then at a fuming Sakura. Kama best not to ask. All right you three, meet me at training ground 7 tomorrow at 6 am for your second test. Naruto, I will be visiting you this evening to discuss, things, Kakashi said before poof, he was gone. Naruto turned to Sasuke, hey what do you think he meant by second test? A frowning Sasuke looked back, how should I know Dobi? I have to go train. Then he started towards the stairs just as Sakura ripped the tape off of her mouth. Sasuke-kun. Let's train together. Sasuke froze and turned back to Sakura before turning back to the stairs only to see Sakura standing there staring at him with hearts in her eyes, Sasuke Kuun? Sasuke scowled, crap. How do I ditch this banshee? He thought when he suddenly felt someone grab his arm. Turning, he saw Naruto, come on team, he yelled before jumping off the building and dragging Sasuke with him. 
Naruto you're gonna kill US. Sasuke screamed in a very un-Sasuke moment. He looked at Naruto to see him holding a one-handed sign. Dobi what are you doing? And then, the two disappeared as they dove into the ground. Hash. Coming up at Team 7's new training ground, a giggling Naruto let a freaked out Sasuke free. He he that was great. Did you see her face? Ha 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 ha. A now slightly calmer Sasuke said, I guess a thanks is due Dobi, nice save. Although, I could have used a warning. I owe you one. Naruto, now smiling widely, alright then, I'll consider us even if instead of both of us training separately and without a sparring partner, let's train together as long as we're on this team together, sound good? Naruto asked. Sasuke looked at Naruto weighing the pros and cons, after a moment he nodded fine, but only for as long as the anti-fangirl service is active. Deal? Naruto nodded, deal. Naruto and Sasuke took their stances, taijutsu only dobi? He asked with a confident smirk. For now team. Enough chatter let's go, Naruto yelled as he shot forward with a higher skill level than ever shown previously. Hash. Knock knock. Naruto looked up from his dinner of instant ramen and blinked, who do you think it is Kyuubi-san? He thought. It's probably that Cyclops from earlier. He did say he wanted to talk to you about me. Naruto nodded and slurped the last mouthful as he took the necessary steps to the door. He opened it with one hand to see that it was indeed Kakashi who was waiting, yo Naruto, he said with a wave. Naruto grinned, what's up sensei? You wanted to talk about Q. Within a second, Kakashi had closed the door and moved Naruto over to his bed. When Naruto got control and sat back up normally, he noticed Kakashi had pulled his only chair up to face the bed, what the hell? Naruto yelled. Kakashi I smiled, sorry Naruto, but I can't let you talk about that so callously, he said before leaning forward and speaking in a serious tone, your comment earlier today. About your tenant, explain to me what you meant exactly? Naruto stared into Kakashi's eye for a moment, what should I say Kyuubi-san? He thought to the fox. Naruto heard the fox chuckle, just repeat after me, even if I say something you don't agree with. Naruto nodded to himself before talking to Kakashi, well Cyclops, I meant the QB, but since it's in my gut, I don't see how it's your business, he said before folding his arms and pouting childishly. Kakashi's eye widened, and here I thought he might be similar to Minato-sensei. He thought before sighing. Naruto, I'm your sensei. I'm asking for the safety you and your team, Kakashi said while placing a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto blinked in shock, he, cares about me? Naruto thought. No shit kid, why else do you think he came here? Repeat after me again, I wanna mess with him some more. QB ordered with a chuckle. Naruto frowned, bastard fox. Forget it. You're cut off. Naruto thought as he broke the signal between him and the TV in his mind. Naruto smiled at Kakashi, um, sorry sensei. Well, I met Kyuubi san the other night. Other than being a prick he's pretty alright, Naruto said while scratching his head. Kakashi blinked, the Kyuubi dot pretty alright? He asked skeptically. Naruto nodded, um, he has no influence on me if that's what you think. I can cut him off anytime. Naruto explained. Kakashi nodded, well, alright. I'll take your word for it. But if I see any problems concerning its chakra I won't hesitate to take action, Kakashi said, signifying the importance of Naruto's control. Naruto nodded, I wouldn't expect anything less sensei. There are people in this village with a strong will of fire, I refuse to let them be hurt because of me, Naruto said in a moment of seriousness. Kakashi appraised Naruto before patting his head, you're a good kid Naruto. I think you'll do well, Kakashi said before standing up straight, that is, if you guys pass my test in the morning, Kakashi said with a smile before waving, later. Naruto watched as Kakashi disappeared in a poof of smoke, it filled his small room in seconds, causing him to cough and splutter as he opened a window to let it free. Naruto stared out at the Hokage monument as the smoke filtered out and held his arm up to it. Clenching his fist he vowed, I will pass your exam sensei, believe it. Chapter 4, The Bell Test, Our First C Rank in Training. Shvive it. I can't believe I'm late, Naruto yelled as he ran as fast as he could towards training ground 7. Oh man, I'm so screwed. Approaching the training field he could see Sasuke and Sakura leaning against the training posts, oh crap, they're gonna kill me hey guys. Sorry I'm late, my training got a little rough yesterday, then I had a late night, 
he said sheepishly as he came to a stop. Sakura scoffed, yeah right, I bet you just knocked yourself out by falling over. Naruto glared at Sakura, I may have been knocked around hard but I got a couple of decent hits in as well, I'm just not that smooth with unarmed combat. Naruto explained. Sakura scoffed, who'd train with you? You're the dead last, only a moron would waste their time with you. Sakura glared at Naruto hatefully. Naruto smirked, oh really whoever would train with me as a moron? Duh. Are you deaf as well Baka? Sakura screeched. No he's not, he's just wondering why you'd call me, the love of your life a moron. Sasuke smirked from his place leaning against the training post. Sakura turned to Sasuke and looked horrified, no Sasuke-kun. Why would you choose him over me? I had the highest marks in the academy other than you. I am way better than this loss MMPF. Sakura suddenly found her mouth taped shut courtesy of Naruto, team you were right, she's an annoying banshee, then Naruto dove underground and pulled down Sakura till only her head and shoulders were left above ground. Naruto came back up smirking, that's one more training session Sasuke. How about now Dobi? By the looks of things Kakashi isn't gonna be on time again Sasuke stated with a replying smirk. You said unarmed combat isn't your specialty, so what is? With a huge grin, Naruto swiped his hands over his opposite wristbands and with a poof of smoke. Whoa, Sasuke said in shock, and Sakura's eyes widened from her position in the floor. Naruto stood slightly crouched holding one shuriken in front of him in his left hand and the second in his right above his head. Grinning confidently, you like Sasuke? He said with a chuckle before twirling them expertly. When did you learn to wield those Naruto? Sasuke asked. A, hey, just something Mizuki-sensei passed on to me. Naruto replied with a smirk before resealing his shuriken. I think I'll leave the armed combat to you then, Sasuke said. Naruto let out a huge yawn, I'm still tired, maybe we could sleep instead of train this morning? Sasuke yawned in reply and answered with his trademark HN. Lying down next to Sakura's head, MK, goodnight team, Sakura. Sasuke did the same on the other side of her head, hmm, night. Sakura was stuck in the ground fuming at her teammates, MMMPFF. Yeah you're right Sakura, the sunrise does look nice this morning. At 11am Kakashi appeared in a poof of smoke, sorry I'm late I was lost on the road. Of, life? He looked around to find Naruto and Sasuke, using an almost completely buried Sakura's shoulders as pillows. While she glared up at him with her mouth taped shut. In this situation, Kakashi did the only thing he could. Reaching into his pouch he pulled out a camera and took a photo. Flash! Ah! Naruto jumped to his feet with a yelp, whilst Sasuke rolled to his feet whipping out a kunai. Good to see you three are so alert this morning Kakashi said with an eye smile. Naruto, please get your teammate out of the ground. Sure thing sensei, Naruto said with a salute before falling backwards into the ground. With his three students now sitting in front of him patiently, Kakashi began his speech, Alright guys, now I'm sorry to break it to you but until you pass my test you are not full genin yet. Q jaw drop from Naruto, scowl from Sasuke and muffled Sakura trying to take the tape off of her mouth. In this test you need to take one of these bells from me in combat, and return them to this alarm clock he said pulling out two bells and clipping them onto his belt. You need to come at me with the intent to kill or you won't stand a chance, the alarm will go off at noon so, begin. All three Genin disappeared into the surrounding foliage, now, I wonder who will come for me first. Or if they'll take me seriously. After two minutes of waiting, Kakashi heard a whizzing sound and barely ducked in time to dodge a flying shuriken, what the hell? What Genin is capable of using a full-sized battle shuriken at this speed? Kakashi turned to where the shuriken was thrown from, only to see a fireball mere meters away from him. Shit. Boom. Naruto jumped into the clearing holding a second shuriken, damn, Sasuke he substituted. Naruto complained. Sasuke appeared next to Naruto HN. Seeing the substitution log, they both paused to offer their prayers to the fallen log. An onlooking Kakashi's eye widened, followers of the log? And these boys are barely genin. And by the looks of things they've also figured out they need to work together to get these bells. Looking down from his perch, Kakashi saw Naruto's discarded shuriken. Now why would he leave such a pricey ninja tool sitting there? Approaching the shuriken, Kakashi kept his focus on the genin in the clearing. He will plan to come pick it up, and by then I will have a trap set up for the both of them, Kakashi thought as he crouched in front of the shuriken. 
he reached into his pouch on the left side of his belt line, leaving the bells wide open on the right. It was at that moment, Naruto and Sasuke turned to him while smirking. Now Sakura, yelled Naruto. Shocked that the two genin managed to sense him, Kakashi didn't react in time for the shuriken to go poof and reveal it to be Sakura under a transformation jutsu. Sakura grabbed the bells, and ran towards the boys who were running towards her. Seeing this, Kakashi snapped out of his daze and ran to get the bells back. Hurry up Naruto. Ready Sasuke? Said Naruto as he was sinking into the ground. HN. Fire style, fireball jutsu, Sasuke said as he launched the jutsu straight at Sakura and Kakashi. Kakashi's eye widened, what are they doing? They're willing to burn through Sakura and the bells to get me? I have to save her now. Kakashi thought as he began running full speed towards Sakura. The fireball was flying towards Sakura and she was still running towards it, with Kakashi only 3 meters behind her. 2 meters, the fireball was almost upon them, Kakashi reached for her. Only 1 meter away and Kakashi almost had her when Sakura suddenly, sunk into the ground? Kakashi stared in shock at the place Sakura disappeared to, and looked up barely in time to see the fireball start to burn the material of his sleeve he instinctually used the substitution jutsu to barely escape with only minimal burns. Falling to the floor at the base of a nearby spruce, Kakashi looked at the alarm clock and saw Sasuke smirking at him. Not a second later, Naruto popped up from the ground with Sakura by his side holding the bells. Just in time for the alarm go off. Naruto smirked, looks like Team 7 passes Sensei. Hash. Knock knock. Come in. The door to the Hokaye's office opened and in walked the newly formed Team 7, Sarutobi looked up shocked Kakashi. Did you actually pass a team? With a small eye smile, hi Hokage-sama, not only did they get the bells, they used an abnormal level of teamwork not found among many jounin, also they managed to best me in a deceptive trap earning me this. Kakashi showed the Hokage his now bandaged arm. Sarutobi looked on in shock at Team 7's smirking faces, well Gigi? How about a mission knee? Naruto said with a grin. Be respectful to Hokage Samabaka ah, Sakura yelled as she slammed a fist into the back of Naruto's head. She was about to rant again when Sasuke slammed tape over her mouth, quiet. He ordered Sakura before kicking Naruto's side. You dead Dobi? Sarutobi laughed at the young team while Kakashi I smiled, well, I guess every team was its quirks. Kakashi thought as he watched his team. Hash. Over the next two months, Team 7 participated in numerous d rank missions of vital importance. Finally. Naruto shouted while throwing down his paintbrush. Sasuke put down the leftover paint buckets and sighed as he wiped sweat from his forehead with his forearm, at least with the Tora mission we get to train our tracking skills. He muttered. Leaning away from the newly painted fence, Sakura turned to Sasuke starry-eyed, HMMPFMM HMFMBM? Now now Sakura, this is no time for such language, Kakashi said from his place in a nearby chair while happily reading Icha Icha Paradise. Earning himself a dark glare from the girl. Kakashi sensei? Can we please get a C rank? I know it's early for a rookie squad but come on. Naruto pleaded. Kakashi looked over his students and seeing them all looking at him hopefully, he sighed, I'll ask the Hokage but I doubt he'll say yes. It's extremely unlikely so don't get your hopes up. Hash. It's about time you asked, I've had this one sitting aside for a week now, Hiruzen said with a small smile towards a wide-eyed Kakashi. Yada. You're the best Gigi. Naruto ran up and grabbed the scroll from his hand, let's go, he yelled in victory. And with that Naruto and Sasuke ran out of the office to get ready for their new mission, leaving a still-shocked Kakashi behind with a recently untaped Sakura, um sensei? Shouldn't you get the scroll from Naruto so that we can actually unseal the info and do the mission? She asked in a whiny voice. Snapped out his state at Sakura's question he replied, Why yes Sakura, you are correct. Now, go pack a standard survival kit for, let's say a week, okay? We'll meet up at the main gate at dawn tomorrow morning where I will share the mission details. Ciao. And off he poofed to get the scroll from the boys and inform them of the meeting time and place. Hash. Naruto walked up to the gate half an hour after the specified meeting time, knowing that it will be at least another hour before the team sensei arrives. Morning guys, yawn, how was your sleep? Naruto asked with a grin. It was fine. Sakura quipped, now knowing it doesn't take much to motivate Naruto into taping her mouth shut. Sasuke just nodded to Naruto then looked behind him with a raised brow, 
Curiously Naruto turned around to see Kakashi walking up to them with a small travel pack on. Good morning team. They just stared at him in shock before Sakura held up the ram hand sign, Kai. Sakura what are you doing? Asked a confused Kakashi. Sasuke answered him, probably thought that you being here within the hour was a genjutsu, it crossed my mind. Kakashi just blinked at them, me? Late? Since when? Naruto threw a stick at his sensei, piss off sensei, you're not fooling anyone, he said with a pout. Catching the stick and tucking it behind his ear he said, well I guess I have been a tad late sometimes. His team just glared at him. Kakashi I smiled, okay then team, let's move out. The first C rank is always a letdown so let's get motivated. Kakashi pumped his fist in the air while walking down the road. Naruto just followed after with a scowl on his face, yeah, great speech sensei. He muttered as the three Janan trudged along behind their odd leader. Hash. All right troops, we'll stop here for the night before moving on to the town. Hi sensei. The team muttered as they entered the middle of a small clearing surrounded by huge trees with trunks 10 meters thick. Sakura turned to their sensei, but we still got hours of daylight left, in fact, we could make it to the town by tonight. She whined. As Kakashi sat down in a clearing, he began talking as he opened his pack, correct Sakura, but I think it's about time I taught you all proper chakra control, and what better way is there to do so than climbing trees? Sasuke deadpanned at their sensei, anyone can climb a tree. Ah yes, but how about walk up? Kakashi said with his classic eye smile. Imagining it, Naruto felt as though it was common practice and knew how to do so already, ni Kakashi sensei? You mean focus chakra to your feet to adhere yourself to a vertical or upside down object? Surprised at Naruto's knowledge Kakashi asked, you've done this before Naruto? Naruto shook his head, nah but I have a decent idea. Well then, why not give us a demonstration? Kakashi said as he tossed a kunai into the air, mark your progress on the tree with a kunai, you two follow after Naruto. With a confident grin, Naruto snatched a kunai and ran towards a tree. Focusing chakra to his feet, he starts to climb, yes. Thank you Mizuki. He thought in victory. After getting past the fourth branch Naruto's grip started to loosen and he came plummeting down, ah crap. Boom. Sakura runs over to Naruto, are you okay Naruto? She asked as she looked down to see a Naruto-sized hole in the ground. After she helped pull him out he replied, never better. Except for the embarrassment and the cracked skull. Totally fine, he muttered while walking in a circle before he fell onto his side and started snoring. Um sensei? Is he gonna be alright? Sakura asked chewing her lip. Kakashi looked up from his book, hmm? Yeah sure. So do you two get the idea of the exercise? Great. Get started. Kakashi casually walked over to the unconscious blonde, picked him up and continued walking up a nearby tree. Sakura and Sasuke looked on in awe. Picking up a kunai, Sasuke ran at his tree, all right, the dobi said focus chakra to his feet, but how much? I'll start with enough for the fireball jutsu and see what I get. Sasuke manages to get three meters up the tree before being blown off by the force of his own chakra. Performing a quick backflip, he rights himself and lands on his feet. Okay that's far too much. He thought with a sigh. His thoughts were interrupted by a loud success. He looked over to see Sakura standing upside down on the fifth branch of her tree. Looking over to them, Kakashi nodded good work Sakura, you seem to have perfect chakra control. Although that is a wonderful thing to have, it also means you have an abysmal amount of chakra. Sakura frowned at her sensei, hey sensei. Don't point out my weaknesses in front of Sasuke-kun. She shrieked, thus earning herself chakra reinforce tape over her gaping maw. MMPFMMMFM. A dizzy but newly conscious Naruto stood upside down next to Sakura, what did we say about your fangirl mannerisms? He asked sagely. MHMMMPF? Sakura screeched as she glared at Naruto. Kakashi clapped, bringing her attention to him exactly Sakura, now start running up and down your chosen tree while holding the transformation jutsu, this will deplete your chakra reserves quickly so that they are forced to expand at a faster rate while you sleep. He explained. With a glare at Naruto and her sensei, Sakura started running up the tree again and transformed into her friend Ino. From Naruto's angle he had a clear view up Ino's skirt, causing him to lose concentration and blood from his nostrils. And with that he fell again. Not again fuck? Naruto blinked in confusion before noticing that Kakashi had jumped over and caught him. 
Now Naruto, you really should start practicing this technique. You may have a good understanding of how it works but you don't seem to have it mastered like our Kunoichi has, so get at it. Kakashi ordered while tossing Naruto down to the ground. Naruto landed with a humph, before he walked over to a tree next to Sasuke's, Hey team! Need some pointers? Sasuke just glared at his mark on the tree, barely 5 meters off of the ground then glared at Naruto, What do you think Dobi? He said sarcastically. Chuckling, Naruto said well it's obvious what you're doing wrong, you're using almost 10 times more chakra than you need. That is why you are literally blowing yourself away every time. Sasuke's eyes widened in understanding, and after concentrating on his chakra, he ran for the tree again, making it to the third branch before slipping off. Landing on the ground and looking up at his progress, Sasuke smirked at his success. HN. Turning to Naruto to thank him, he realized Naruto was having one of his daydreaming spouts, staring blankly at the tree. Sighing and turning back to his tree, I can thank the Dobi later, I guess I owe him another one and an Uchiha always repays their debts. He thinks before running at his tree again. Hash. Mindscape. How come I don't have this down right away? Naruto asked from his spot lying down on the couch on the roof. Mizuki stopped watching the Uchiha practice and turned to Naruto, my guess is that even though you recall how to do it from my experience, you're remembering it for someone with my size and mass. Since you are smaller than me, you don't need as much chakra. Though it seems to be close enough to hold you for a few seconds. Naruto raised a brow, well, that makes sense. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Only I seem to be able to contact you without you being unconscious kid, and I'm a bit too big to even need the tree climbing technique. The fox pointed out. Naruto frowned, but the scroll said after meeting you in my mindscape, I should be able to converse with you freely. With a sigh, Mizuki started clicking buttons on the TV remote. Let's see what it actually says. He muttered. Mizuki skipped back through Naruto's life, each time he clicked skip it went back 12 hours. After a minute, he said here we go, alright now I just need to pause it on when you were looking at the scroll, there. Click got it, Mizuki said in victory. Naruto scowled up at Mizuki, how'd you do that? These are my memories. Mizuki shrugged, this is how you programmed it, even if it was subconsciously. That is actually pretty cool, probably useful as well. Mizuki interrupted, aha. Found it. Alright it says exactly when the user is like-minded to a specific target, he can freely hear air thoughts so I guess if you think like me we can communicate freely. So basically, I have to think like a boring lecturer with secretly evil intentions? Hit the nail on the head kid. Well I don't think I'll be doing that anytime soon Naruto guessed. Kid, you should get back to training, and remember use only a little bit less chakra. Yeah Naruto, it should only be about as much chakra needed for a third of the substitution jutsu, got it? Naruto rolls his eyes while walking back out of his mindscape, yeah yeah, geez you two nag like a couple all the time? He said before having to dodge a tail of chakra and several kunai on his way out, laughing his ass off as he went. Hash. Coming back to his body, Naruto waited till Sasuke was just about to step onto the tree again, I've got it, he shouted, throwing off Sasuke's concentration and causing him to shoot from the tree on his first step. Scowling, Sasuke turned to Naruto. Damn it Dobi I almost, had it? He muttered, only to realize Naruto wasn't there anymore, Naruto? Yeah team? Naruto shouted from his place at the very top of his tree, out of Sasuke's sight. Sasuke scowled before getting back to practicing, I won't be left behind. He thought in determination. Kakashi appeared in a poof on the tree facing Naruto, book in hand good work Naruto, since you finished before Sasuke why don't you go set up the team's tent? With a small chuckle, nah I'm good sensei, I already have a six-man tent set up right here, Naruto said patting his ceiling belt. Curiously, Kakashi asked you're that proficient at ceiling already Naruto? Most shinobi don't get taught proper sealing methods until they become chunin. Scratching the back of his head sheepishly, well in all honesty sensei I just bought the belt with pre-made sealing pouches, all I know is that it'll help with my specialty. Kakashi raised a brow, specialty? What have you chosen? Turning to Kakashi, Naruto became serious as he spoke, assassination. Kakashi's eye widened, shocked at the change in his student, Naruto are you sure you've made the right choice? It's a bit early, and I don't think you understand what is needed for that line of work. Looking at his sensei seriously, Naruto smirked darkly as he spoke, I know who I am and what my purpose is, I made a promise to Hokage Gigi. 
I will fulfill that promise, even if I have to fall into darkness to do so. Kakashi stared at Naruto, putting away his book and standing straight, Naruto, I can't let you go down such a dark path. And I know that the Hokage would never ask you to do something so severe. His smirk grew into a dark grin as he unsealed one of his shuriken, Sensei, how many ninja have you seen that use giant shuriken as their primary weapon? Frowning, Kakashi thought hard, actually I've only seen one chunin use such a method, so how would Naruto have become so proficient in such a rare fighting style? He thought before asking not many, why? Turning away from Kakashi, Naruto spun twice before throwing the star in a wide arc towards a collection of trees. At such a speed, it sliced through 14 of the enormous trees easily before curving back to Naruto where he caught it flawlessly, showing his control and power to Kakashi's wide eyes. Kakashi. Kakashi froze when he heard the way Naruto spoke his name, he glanced at Naruto to see a hard glare being directed at him. Can you imagine, what that one throw could have down to say, an army of enemy ninja? Naruto asked before sealing his shuriken away. Before Kakashi could reply, Naruto jumped down from the trees. Kakashi sat atop the tree Naruto left him at, thinking about what Naruto said, even though it's wrong for a child of his age to think like that, I can't dispute the logic. As a shinobi, he already seems to be around Chunin level, so it's logical that he has found a speciality. Even if I don't completely agree with it. He thought with a sigh. Kakashi thought back to Naruto's facial expression when he was imagining those trees to be enemy ninja, then again, he seemed to actually enjoy the thought of killing others. Is it an influence from the QB? Kakashi heard footsteps coming up the tree he was on. Looking down, he saw Sasuke panting heavily but focused on his goal. Sasuke could see the top of the tree now, almost there. I can't be left behind by those two. And with one last push and a boost of chakra, he landed on a branch just under Kakashi. With a sigh of satisfaction Sasuke lied back against his branch, looking up at the sky it's almost dusk? I must have been out here for hours. Hmm, at least I know I got this mastered. Then he noticed Kakashi's curious face staring down at him. Sasuke, I see you finally made it, he said with an eye smile. Sasuke just closed his eyes with a smirk, HN. Turning away from his student, Kakashi mumbled good to know one of my students haven't changed. This got Sasuke's attention, changed sensei? He asked as he pushed himself into a sitting position. Kakashi turned to Sasuke and sighed, Sasuke let me ask you something, what is your focus for becoming a ninja? Sasuke's look darkened, to hunt down the man who killed my clan. And how are you going to do that, hmm? Kakashi asked. Sasuke looked at Kakashi frustrated, I'll track him down. With a raised eyebrow, Kakashi asked the simplest question. How? Sasuke was about to retort before he stopped himself, how am I gonna do that? I have no skills in tracking. He thought as he searched his mind for a response. Kakashi interrupted Sasuke's little epiphany, every ninja picks a speciality that they will pursue as their main focus, most of the Uchiha clan chose to become combat specialists. But there are those that use their Sharingan to pick up on subtle changes in the environment to track where a person has been. So I will learn to do both, Sasuke spoke confidently. It took the average Uchiha near 15 years to master their tracking skills Kakashi informed, breaking Sasuke's confidence. Although every now and then, there are ninja that pop up once a generation that can be a jack of all trades. But usually a master of none, do you understand what I'm saying Sasuke? Kakashi asked. Sasuke frowned up at his sensei, you're saying if I'm going to be strong enough to beat him, I won't be able to find him. And if I can find him, he will slaughter me. Kakashi nodded, yes, that is why we put you on teams, Kakashi said, causing Sasuke's face to light up in realization. So you're saying with our team, we could get him? Sasuke said. Again, Kakashi nodded. It's definitely a possibility, now what would you say your specialty will be Sasuke? Sasuke thought hard, probably hunting, it'll complement Naruto's choice well and together we can fulfill my goal. Kakashi was startled, you know about Naruto's choice in specialty? He asked. Sasuke nodded with a HN. HMM it seems these two are closer than I realized, maybe I can use this. He thought as he formulated his next question, do you know why Naruto chose, assassination? With a shrug, Sasuke said yeah, he says it was the third Hokage's wish that Naruto be able to protect the village. Naruto thinks this path will help him do so to the best of his abilities. Now it was Kakashi's turn to have an epiphany, 
Maybe it wasn't darkness I heard in Naruto's voice before. Just cold hard determination. He thought, convincing himself that Naruto wasn't taking pleasure in the thought of killing. Standing up Kakashi turned back to Sasuke, well I guess as a sensei, it's my job to make you both well-rounded ninja and help you maximize your chosen specialty. We'll do so after we finish this mission. Sasuke got up as well, speaking of the mission Kakashi sensei, you haven't actually debriefed us on what it is we've been hired to do. Well then let's return to camp, I'll inform everyone at once. And with that the two ninja jumped down from the treetops. Naruto looked up from his spot next to Sakura's head, Ohio sensei, team. You up for some meat? Said Naruto gesturing to the roasted boar sitting over the fire. Looking at Sakura's head Sasuke asked, what did you do this time? Sakura glanced up at Naruto who was halfway through a stick of meat before looking back to Sasuke, I wanted to sleep next to you in the tent Sasuke-kun, but Naruto Baka put my stuff in a separate compartment in the tent. Kakashi looked at Sakura, he buried you for that? Kakashi asked. Naruto stopped chewing to reply, nah, I buried her for trying to steal a pair of Sasuke's underwear. Hey in my defense, I Jew MMMFF. I think she likes the taste of tape, guys, Naruto said with a cheeky grin. Kakashi raised a brow at Naruto, how's she gonna eat if her mouth is taped shut? Sasuke sat down on the other side of Sakura's head, we'll leave some for her sensei. With a sigh Kakashi took a seat opposite his team, alright, I guess now is the best time, he said, pulling out the mission scroll. Time for what sensei? Naruto asked. Sasuke leaned forward to explain, he said to me that he was finally going to give us the mission details, Sasuke said with an excited glint in his eyes. So if you wouldn't mind Naruto? Kakashi gestured to Sakura's head. Rolling his eyes and putting down his meat, he replied okay I got it. He then he dove underground, and resurfaced pulling Sakura up with him feet first. Done. Ripping the tape off of her mouth, she scowled at Naruto before smiling at Kakashi, thanks sensei, and for your information Naruto I hate your damn tape. Before he could reply Kakashi spoke, we don't need to hear about your weird fetishes Sakura, she flushed bright red while Naruto and Sasuke smirked at her from each of her sides. Now, as you know this is a C-rank mission. But what you don't know is that it is a clean-up mission. Sakura asked the obvious question, clean-up mission? Kakashi nodded, yes, you see there was an A-ranked mission to take out a rogue ninja that was leading a band of thugs across fire country robbing all the travelers they came across, and with that mission being successful. The leftover bandits and thugs split into two groups under the ninja's two apprentices. Now, there are two small thug and bandit camps around the last vicinity the ninja was seen. We, are to capture at least one leader of either small group and kill off the rest. Understood? Naruto smirked towards his sensei, I'm guessing we will take one camp at a time right? With us Genin taking out the weak-ass thugs while you handle the big boss men? Naruto asked. Kakashi nodded, precisely, but first. We will be heading to meet the mayor of the small town that hired us, they should only be an hour away if you can all use your recently learned skills so we can tree hop there. Think you can handle it? Team 7 smiled and saluted, hi sensei. Kakashi I smiled back, alright, off to bed then, we leave at dawn once more. Chapter 5, Mission, Bandit Camp Cleanup. From his vantage point behind the leader's tent, Kakashi could see the whole bandit camp. Are you guys in position? Kakashi asked over the communicators. Flower here, in position. Flame here, in position. Fox here, ditto. With a sigh Kakashi sent the three children to make their first kills, alright, begin stage one. Soon after sending the command, Kakashi saw a single giant shuriken get flung straight into the entrance of the camp and heard Naruto shout, Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu. One shuriken suddenly became 100, entering the left flank of the camp and shredding tents, people and weapons alike. Ah my arm. Help we're under at a hook. Hiboshi no. I'll kill whoever. Ah. Naruto's attack had been successful in killing a third of the bandits, while hurting the others to the right side of the camp. This was all part of the plan, Kakashi yelled into his mic, stage 2 now. From Kakashi's far right he heard Sasuke yell, fire style, fireball jutsu. He looked over to see a massive fireball burning through the right half of the thug camp, taking out half of the remaining bandits, killing some instantly and forcing others to suffer through the pain of being burned alive and forcing all the remainders into the center of the camp in front of the leader's tent. Stage 3 Go Throwing down a ton of explosive seal tags, 
Sakura dropped her hands from amongst the leftover bandits just as the leader stepped out of his tent, kunai drawn. All the bandits turned to her in shock as all the tags started to light up, Sakura just smiled, bye bye, and then she was pulled underground. Not a second later, the tags went off taking out the rest of the thugs in the camp and severely burning the leading ninja apprentice. With a sigh of relief, Kakashi lifted his hand to the receiver around his neck one last time, looks like you guys didn't need me after all, begin with the final stage. Turning off his communicator, Kakashi turned back to look at the damaged leader as he got to his knees, come out and face me cowards. The apprentice screamed. Only receiving silence in response. Too good to finish me off? I will kill all of you. He screamed with bloodshot eyes as he breathed deeply and looked around to find his attackers. The camp was silent for nearly a minute, then the ninja jumped when he heard a chuckle from behind him. He turned around just in time to see a giant shuriken speeding towards his head. Hash. Meeting up with Kakashi back at the rendezvous point, Naruto smiled at his teammates, first camp, done and dusted, he said with a thumbs up. Sasuke smirked and answered with a HN. Sakura on the other hand had a deep scowl on her face, seeing this Naruto turn to her, eh? Sakura what's wrong? Sakura grabbed her hair tips and showed them to Naruto, you didn't pull me down soon enough. That damn explosion burned some of my hair off. That's what's wrong. She screamed. Sasuke glanced at Sakura and looked at her new hairdo, I like it short Sakura, he said, not realizing his mistake. Instantly, Sakura looked at Sasuke with hearts in her eyes, really Sasuke-kun? Should I cut it more? Do you like the black? Cause I can dye it, how about I mmffff? Kakashi smiled at Naruto's handiwork, we have 12 hours to infiltrate the next camp, this time I don't want organized destruction. You are going to infiltrate the camp and take out as many thugs as you can before they notice and give me an opening to come into contact with the ninja, we have to capture this one, Kakashi said with an eye smile. Naruto frowned, but sensei I like the explosions. Naruto whined. Kakashi sighed, fine, while infiltrating set up key points and rig them with sensor explosive seals set for chakra reactors, make sure they're done by 6 o'clock. By this point you must all be with distance of a quick exit. But remember, we must get every single thug. If one escapes then we don't get paid. Sasuke stepped up next, I have a plan if you guys want to hear it, the group nodded to him. We each take out a man from near the entrance, the left flank and the right of the camp and transform into their appearance. Then using those disguises, we casually walk around the camp setting up the explosive seals. Now, assuming someone approaches us, just pretend you're feeling sick run to the nearest outhouse, take out someone there, and take their appearance. At 10 to 6 all three of us meet outside the entrance to the leader's tent. This is when Kakashi Sensei will casually walk in the front gate and using hand to hand only. Start taking out the thugs drawing as much attention as you can. Think you can handle it sensei? Sasuke asked. Kakashi just I smiled and said I am an elite jonin Sasuke, he said with a chuckle. Sasuke smirked in response, good, you will slowly fight your way towards the leader's tent. In the resulting confusion, Naruto, Sakura and I will sneak away into the tent and set the final explosive notes. Then at 6, boom. Up goes the camp in flames, the lead ninja panics. Kakashi focus on capturing him while we handle the remaining thugs. Naruto and Sakura just stared at Sasuke in shock. Hey, team I think that's the most you've ever said, Naruto said with chuckle. Sakura just thought through the amazing plan in awe of Sasuke, staring at him with love heart eyes. Smirking, Sasuke turned to Kakashi, sound good sensei? He asked. Kakashi nodded, I'm impressed Sasuke, it turns out you may be a natural tactician. This goes along well with being a hunter or tracker ninja. I'd just add one thing, every few steps, each of you must scratch your face or head, this will alert each other not to try and take you out. That would be a huge stuff up if two of you ended up attacking each other, Kakashi said with an eye smile. Hi sensei. A recently untapped Sakura said. HN. Sasuke grunted, apparently having spoken more than his quota today. Alright. We're gonna finish this mission for sure. Naruto cheered. Hash. Taking action, Sakura. At 5 p.m. sharp, Sakura appeared sneaking up to the leftmost tent in the clearing in the form of a field mouse, Sakura was quite lucky to find a thug who had just stepped out of view and was starting to take a piss. Sakura undid the transformation jutsu, and without making a sound stood behind the thug, kunai in hand, am I really ready for this? Killing a defenseless man in cold blood? 
Sakura thought to herself while her hands shook. Shanaro. It's for the good of the mission. Inner Sakura screamed, almost causing Sakura to jump. She nodded to herself and took a deep breath, all right geez. She thought before taking action. Sakura wrapped her arm around his head, covering his mouth. Then plunged the kunai through his back, straight into his heart. I'm sorry, Sakura whispered to him, and with a small gurgle the man went limp in Sakura's arms. Looking close to throwing up, Sakura quietly dumped the body in one of the nearby bushes, I hope no one finds him. She thought as she placed the bloody kunai back in her pouch. Sakura then used the transformation jutsu to take the guy's form and walked back into the camp. Looking around, Sakura casually walked to what she was told was the main storage tent, I sure hope the mayor's map was accurate, she thought. It was last time. Shanaro. Okay okay calm down. She thought with a sigh. Entering the tent without being disturbed, Sakura froze when she saw another thug squatting down next to a huge box of stolen money. Upon hearing her entrance, he jumped up and turned around shaking his hands nervously. Hey man, I swear this isn't what it looks like. I would never steal from the leader's portion of the loot, honest. Please don't tell him. Sakura raised a brow while looking at him, and replied smoothly, fine, I didn't see anything reaching up and scratching her face three times to make sure the thug saw it, just in case it was one of her teammates. She realized he wasn't when he just looked back at her with an untrusting gaze. And why should I trust what you say? The thug asked, clearly suspecting Sakura to turn him into the leader. Thinking quickly, Sakura's transformed face just smirked back at him and replied, cause it's the reason I'm here too. The thug's gullible smile was like a beacon of hope to Sakura, really? Sweet. Hey listen we can't take too much or it'll be obvious, but I've found a way to make it look like it's filled to the brim but it's actually empty starting about a half a meter from the top. In fact, I think someone else has tried this as well before us. The thug said as he turned back to grab more money. Sakura came up behind the man drawing her still bloody kunai again, hollow on the inside? How do we access it? She asked as she steeled her resolve to kill again. The thug grabbed some of the coins and shoved them in his pocket, this whole side just falls away, I only discovered it by accident. Hurry before someone ECK. And he fell to the ground with a kunai lodged in the base of his neck. Sakura found the opening in the box and stuffed the corpse inside in a hurry, I hope nobody comes in. She thought. Just before closing it up Sakura saw four small blocks of solid gold. Holy shit. They must be worth a fortune. Well, these thugs aren't gonna need it. So, Sakura grabbed the gold and sealed them inside a sealing capsule from Naruto's belt, thank the log Naruto gave Sasuke and I one of these for this mission. After placing down a few concealed explosive notes, Sakura made her way outside of the tent and moved on towards the next target on her list. Hash. Naruto. Stealthily coming up behind one of the four outer guards, Naruto threw a small stone at a rock on the other side of the entrance path. The four guards turned towards the sound with their guard up allowing Naruto to pull the guard at the back of the formation underground soundlessly, while snatching his sword. Quickly popping up in his place, Naruto activated the transformation jutsu, taking the form of the thug he just defeated. HMM now what would be the best way to get to the medical tent without being found out? Naruto thought looking at the guards returning to their calm states, he came up with a crazy idea. Naruto raised his head with a hidden smirk, Hey guys, I'm thinking of killing you all in this stupid leader, and then taking the winnings for myself. What do you think? The nearest guards looked at him incredulously, Yeah, I thought so, Naruto said with a smirk while whipping out the stolen sword. Naruto cut the throat of the two most nearby thugs before slashing the chest of the last one open and thrusting the sword up to the hilt through the guard. HMM, way too easy. Naruto thought letting out a dark chuckle. Making a thin cut on his own chest and editing his illusion to show a shallow wound there he yelled in two different voices, AHH traitor try IT then ha. Huh? A few seconds later two thugs came running out of a nearby tent, swords drawn. Just at that time, Naruto dropped his last kill to the ground and stumbled back holding his chest, Oi you too, a little help? This traitor just killed two men and almost took me with him. Hi Chojuro san thug one said putting his sword away and rushing to his aid, hey Mubi san, can you watch the entrance for me while I help Chojuro san to the medical tent? Thug one said to thug two. With a small nod and a grunt thug two, now called Mubi, took watch while kicking the corpses off the main path. Hurry up you two. Thug one started leading Naruto to the medical tent, everyone clearing the way to let them through, 
so focused on the huge gash running across Chojuro's chest, nobody noticed Naruto dropping rolled up explosive seals every now and then. Upon entering the medic tent, Thug One laid Naruto down on one of the cots. I know we don't have any doctors or nurses here, but I can grab some gauze for you if you want. But I ain't your babysitter, you can wrap your own wound. I'll go give the news to the leader, this is the third betrayal this week. Thug One turned to walk away, but found himself with a sword stabbed through his chest, ACK and a kunai through the neck. Dragging Thug One underground, Naruto changed his appearance to match the thug he killed. Once again, far too easy. Naruto thought as he spread a few explosive notes around the tent before heading on his way. Stepping out of the tent another thug approached him, Hey Higyur, what happened to Chojuro? Smirking are his new name, Naruto said I'm not sure man, he said there was a traitor and then started babbling about seeing his life flash before his eyes. I got annoyed so I just left. The new thug scoffed asked Naruto in a hushed voice, typical, you always were an asshole. Do you think it's because of the job he was sent to do yesterday? Thuggy asked. Naruto raised a brow, which job? He asked. Thuggy looked at Naruto incredulously, you know, the little girl from that bone clan? Leader has her chained up to a bed in his tent, says she'll bring about a new generation of super ninja. Naruto's face lit up in fake realization to hide his growing rage, oh yeah, how could I forget that? Thuggy patted Naruto's shoulder, it's alright, everyone has their moments. Hey you want me to come with you to report this? You seem a little shaken yourself. Naruto wanted to find out more about this bone girl, sure, let's go, he said with a nod. And with that Naruto followed the thug to the tent of the leader. Hash. Sasuke. Alright Sasuke, remember you don't have to infiltrate. Just take out all the thugs in the outermost tents, then move in. This will train your stealth, which is vital for a hunter ninja. Get it? Kakashi spoke quietly to his pupil from inside the first tent. Sasuke scowled at his sensei, yeah I know, it was my idea, he said. I smiling at Sasuke, Kakashi stood straight muttering, I was just making sure then poof. He was gone. Looking around the tent, Sasuke found something he could work with. A grappling hook on a long piece of rope. Lifting the flap of the tent to the side, Sasuke peered out to survey his surroundings. It appeared that there were six thugs constantly moving around this area in the worst guard formation Sasuke had ever seen. Also, there was a guard on three of the eight tents in the area, and an unknown amount in each tent. Just have to wait for the opportune moment. Sasuke thought looking at the thug closest to him, which was only in line of sight of one other thug guarding a tent. The second thug started to yawn and closed his eyes while stretching, now. Sasuke thought as he let the hook fly. It snagged the first thug around the neck and with a strong heave, the thug's neck snapped and he was flung towards Sasuke. Sasuke caught the flying corpse and threw him inside the tent. By the time the second thug stopped yawning and opened up his eyes, all he saw was Sasuke plunging a kunai into his throat. Quickly taking action, Sasuke kicked the now dead thug into the tent he was guarding and dove in behind him. Only to look up and see another thug halfway through a sandwich and staring at Sasuke in shock, he tried to call out, what the foo ACK? But his neck was snapped with the grappling hook. Smirking at the grappling hook, Sasuke thought, HMM I'm pretty good with this, maybe I should invest in training with a Kusarigama when I get back to the village. Cleaning off his kunai, Sasuke set some explosive notes in the tent before heading on to the next set of thugs. Hash. 30 minutes later, 5.45. Sakura. She finished up with her last target, the barracks now had 20 explosive seals spread throughout the sleeping bunks. Sakura made her way to the rendezvous point to meet up with what should be a disguised Naruto and Sasuke. Arriving at the chosen destination, she saw another thug walking up to the same spot from the other direction. She raised an eyebrow at him and scratched the top of her head, the agreed-upon signature for Sakura. The thug smiled and scratched the left side of his nose, meaning it was Sasuke. Standing next to each other for a few moments in silence, they both started to worry about the whereabouts of Naruto when a smaller-than-average, bug-eyed thug came running up to them. Eh? Makushi and Renmai? It's you too? Well okay. Then, the thug said as he reached into his pocket and pulled out a piece of paper. Higure told me to give this to the two people I found at this location so I guess that's you, he said it was a top secret mission straight from leader Sama. Raising a brow at the energetic, but seemingly crazy man, Sasuke took the note and opened it. Sasuke's eyes widened when he read the scrawl. Hey team and or Sakura. 
I've managed to fully infiltrate the leader's tent, I thought I heard something about a prisoner in here so I had to check it out. Start the final part of the setup without me, I'll meet up with you during Kakashi's distraction. You'll know it's me cause I'll be the thug with a backpack running from the east side of this huge ass tent. Let's get ready to fuck this shit up. Fox. Sasuke nodded, message received. We'll start this first thing in the morning. The crazy little messenger nodded, hmm, okay I gotta head off. There's a bunk with my name on at the barracks, later. Sakura nodded back, later. And off he went. Let's go Sakura it's almost time for Sensei's distraction, Sasuke said quietly. Hi Sasuke-kun she agreed, and off they went to surround the leader's tent with low-powered explosive notes. Hash. 555. Kakashi. Ready for his part of the plan Kakashi casually walked out of the woods, putting away his book and heading towards the main gate. The thug on guard, Mubi, yelled out halt stranger, drawing the attention of a few passing thugs. Kakashi just speed up slightly, now jogging while pulling out a kunai. A random thug yelled, shit. We have an attacking shinobi. Spread the word. Get back up quick. By this point Kakashi's jog had turned into a full-on sprint. Four minutes to go, Kakashi thought as he slashed the throats of three thugs within a second. Hash. Naruto. A man ran into the leader's private tent yelling sir. There is a ninja attacking our men in the courtyard. The leader jumped up, what? When did this start? He asked in confusion. Just a moment ago sir. The thug yelled. Thinking for a second, the leader said all men converge on the ninja, you will easily overwhelm him with your numbers, if it's not taken care of in five minutes I will handle it myself. He ordered seriously. Nodding quickly the thug yelled yes sir. Before running out of the tent with the leader's private guard behind him. Um leader Sama? Did you want me to fight too? A worn out Naruto spoke from his place next to the leader's chair. No, Higure san. I have one last question about what happened, then you can rest in my personal quarters with my prisoner while I handle the moronic shinobi that dares attack my camp. Higure raised a brow, and thought am I just that lucky? Or are all these thugs just that stupid? Hi leader Sama, what is it that you want to know? The leader turned to face Naruto, as you know, there has been two other traitors found this week. Both of them seem to be part of a larger plan. I think there is someone trying to overthrow me. Naruto put on a shocked expression. What makes you say that leader Sama? With a frown, he replied it was something they said before we killed them. What was your traitor's last words? Naruto put on an act of concentrating really hard. I think he said he was gonna kill us all, then you and take your cash and leg it. The leader blinked in shock. Oh, well that doesn't really fit with the others. Maybe this one just got greedy. Naruto nodded, that's what I was think. Leader Sama. He's killing all our men, said a man running into the tent. The leader sneered at the newcomer, fine I'll deal with him, but first let me grab my armor. Higure get some rest. Naruto, or Higure nodded. Hi leader Sama. And with that Naruto was left alone in the tent. Naruto turned to the private quarters of the leader and entered. He did not like what he saw. A young girl around 10 years of age was handcuffed to the bed. She was naked, showing her abused body making Naruto feel sick. She looked over at him with dead eyes, that's when he noticed she was also gagged. Running over quickly, he tore off the gag and dropped his transformation jutsu. Causing her eyes to sparkle in recognition. Ninja? She weakly asked. Naruto nodded with tears in his eyes, yeah don't worry, I'll get you out of here, he said trying to undo the handcuffs. She grabbed his wrist weakly with her own, please, kill, me, she whispered. Naruto looked down at her in shock, as she spoke I. Just wanted a happy life. To find my father. To own a pet, too. Live in a normal house. I wanted something, simple. But now, she took a deep shuddering breath, I know this world will only bring me pain so please. Just kill me. Looking into the poor girl's eyes, Naruto saw the reflection of himself. Is this what I would have turned out like after the all the beatings if Iruka sensei didn't accept me? Or if I never met the fox? Naruto met her gaze with his own determined one, I will save you, you won't be part of this world anymore but you will have all that you want, Naruto promised while weaving a few hand signs. Putting his hand on her forehead Naruto quietly stated, ninja art, soul drain and absorbed her body into his own. Clutching his head, Naruto forced down the second part of his jutsu with the help of the Kyubi. 
Hurry kid, you can come handle this when you fall asleep tonight. You must meet up with your teammates. Forcing himself up and reactivating his transformation, Naruto thought in reply, thanks for the help Fox, you're right. And with that, he grabbed a backpack full of stolen cash and trophies and cut his way out of the eastern side of the tent with the stolen sword. Hash. Sasuke and Sakura. Placing down an explosive tag on the east side of the tent, Sakura turned to Sasuke still in disguise. That's the last of them. At that moment a blade cut through the tent covering next to them and out popped a thug with a backpack on, uh oh, um please tell that you guys are you guys right? Team? Sakura? Sasuke sighed and dropped the technique, yeah Dobi it's us, what would you have done if it wasn't? Naruto turned to Sasuke and scratched the back of his head sheepishly, um fuck shit up? Sakura dropped her technique with a sigh, Naruto, Yubaka. We should move, now, Sasuke said seriously. Naruto raised a brow at his teammate, why team? Sasuke looked over towards the center of the camp, it's 6 o'clock. And that's when the first explosion went off. Hash hash. Kakashi. Kakashi ducked under a spear and guided it into the stomach of another thug. He then slipped between the strikes of two swords and impaled the users on them with a simple push. Kakashi sighed well at least I'm getting in some practice. He thought. At that moment a kunai hit the ground in front of Kakashi, causing the thugs to back up. The leading ninja stepped out of the crowd with an evil smirk, well well well, a lonely ninja has wandered into our camp. Tell me, why I shouldn't kill you right now? He said as he unsheathed a basic sword and took a fairly decent stance. Kakashi looked up at the nin, um maybe you should just turn yourself in? The leader and his band of thugs laughter bellowed into Kakashi's ears, making him realize he was now surrounded. I am a disciple of the great ninja Yajirobe Moku. What makes you think you can even stand up to someone of my level? The leader said with a smile. Kakashi just raised a brow, so you are a disciple of a chunin, making you what, around chunin level yourself at best. Correct? He asked. The leader sneered at Kakashi, scared now ninja? He said mockingly. Kakashi pulled out an explosive seal stealth fully as he began talking, not at all, at your age I was captain of the Anbu Black Ops in the Leaf Village. Although at the moment I'm only a lowly double A ranked elite Jonin. So sorry to disappoint, but I think you're a little out of your depth here, Kakashi said with an eye smile. The leader had gone pale at the Kakashi's statement, H ha ha ha. I can tell you're lying. Just trying to intimidate me? Hoping to catch me of guard right? He stated nervously. Kakashi shook his head, not at all, although I'm sure this'll catch you off guard. With chakra pushing out of his feet, Kakashi leapt high into the air while throwing down a single kunai with an explosive seal attached to it. Buo um. The explosion set of a chain reaction for all the other seals in the camp. They exploded, killing or injuring every thug in the camp and pushing Kakashi higher into the air. Looking down Kakashi could see the heavily burned ninja escape the worst of it with a late substitution jutsu. Shit, I thought he'd be flung this way so I could capture him. He's on the other side of the camp. Kakashi looked where the ninja was heading and saw his squad in the ninja's path. I hope they can handle him, cause I'm gonna have my hands full with over 50 ticked off thugs. Kakashi landed and sprinted back to the camp while dodging a large amount of thrown spears, many arrows and some kunai. Good luck guys. He thought to his team. Hash. Seeing the target fleeing from the fighting scene, Team 7 sprang into action immediately. As Naruto unsealed one of his shuriken, Sasuke and Sakura jumped behind him and into the smoke of the unsealing, completely out of view as Naruto charged at the ninja. Sasuke yelled to Naruto, remember we need to capture him alive Naruto. Naruto nodded, yeah I got it. Naruto jumped into the air and threw his shuriken straight at the ninja who only just saw them charging at him, shit. More leaf ninja, he yelled as he dove out of the way of Naruto's shuriken which stuck in a nearby tree. He looked up in shock as a shuriken that was in the shadow of the first tore his arm off, causing him to scream in pain. Falling through the air, Naruto yelled now Sakura. Hearing the call, Sakura focused the perfect amount of chakra into her feet and started skating across the ground going at an incredible speed. As she passed the ninja she stuck her arm out and clotheslined him with enough force to flip his body around twice, and land underneath the tree-embedded shuriken on his head with a painful crack. Turning around, she yelled your turn Sasuke. Then she looked up to see the first shuriken Naruto threw poof to reveal Sasuke right above the target. Gotcha, 
Sasuke yelled as he rammed four kunai into the man's shoulder and leg joints, pinning him to the ground and preventing his escape. The ninja screamed before Sasuke dropped a solid knee into the ninja's sternum, knocking him out instantly. Naruto landed from his leap and gave a thumbs up to the others, mission accomplished. Good work team, they turned around to see Kakashi walking over to them with blood on his sleeves and a good portion of his chest, luckily none of it was his, I must say that was one of the most stunning displays of teamwork I've ever seen. Sasuke smirked at their sensei, would you expect anything less, sensei? With an eye smile, Kakashi spoke all right team, let's head back into town to collect our payment and turn in this guy. Hi sensei. Hash. Waving goodbye to the chubby mayor of the small town, Team 7 was set on their way back to the Hidden Leaf Village, all right troops, we'll camp at the first grounds we find and tomorrow we'll do the full trip home. Spoke Kakashi with an eye smile. Hi sensei, the team responded tiredly. Considering it was 11 o'clock at night, Kakashi thought it understandable. Finding a little clearing and Naruto unsealing the team's tent, the wiped out team congratulated each other on a successful mission and fell asleep almost instantly. Excited for the journey home and the reports they had to give to the Sandaime. Chapter 6, Celebrations, Becoming a Family and Naomi Kaguya. Mindscape. Kit, the girl seemed very shaken when she arrived. But she seemed to calm down once she realized she could never be hurt like that again. The fox said to Naruto upon his entrance. Naruto looked at the still battered, bruised and undressed girl, curled up on the couch asleep. Well I guess it's time for me to finish my technique, otherwise she'll be overwhelmed by my consciousness. Quietly approaching the girl, Naruto finished his set of hand seals and pulled on her chakra. The end result, was her body falling off the couch as an empty shell while her consciousness stayed asleep on the couch, now looking much healthier without the injuries of a body. And Naruto absorbing the physical abilities of the girl. Naruto imagined a pale pink sundress on her small frame, and suddenly it was there. Picking her up, Naruto imagined a bed next to the couch, and so it appeared. Placing her down on the bed, Naruto and Mizuki had a long decent look at her. She lay on her back in a pale pink sundress, with shoulder-length white hair she appeared to be very young, age 8, maximum. Taking a look at her face Naruto noticed some strange birthmarks and pointed them out to Mizuki. Hey sensei, look at this. Mizuki looked towards her face and recognized the marks instantly, that's the birth marks of a Kaguya. Their warriors were legendary before they died out, indeed, there were two red dots on her forehead, and her eyelids were red as well. I wonder how she survived alone like this? She slowly woke up at Mizuki's loud statement. Seeing Naruto, she focused on him, Ninja-san? Why didn't you kill me? They'll just come back for me again. Startled that she awoke, he turned to her oh hey, I didn't expect you to be awake already. Kit, she's just a soul now, spirits don't need to sleep. Hearing the huge voice, the girl turned around to see the QB in all its fearsome glory. Is that a kitty? Can I have it? Mizuki barked out a laugh and fell on his back holding his stomach, and Naruto laughed to the sky with his hands on his hips. The QB bristled, standing on its haunches it stuck its snout through the bars and leaned over her, I am the almighty QB. Conqueror of lands, the nine-tailed demon fox. The girl smiled and patted the end of Kyuubi's snout, I'll call you Q-chan. This had Naruto and Mizuki falling onto the couch laughing so hard they were crying, ah ha 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 Q-chan. Ha 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 ha. Turning back to the laughing duo, she sees Mizuki for the first time. He has white hair like me, and hazel eyes so close to looking like my green ones. Walking over to a now, mostly calm Mizuki, she pulled on his shirt to get his attention. Hey mister? Mizuki looked down at her still smiling, yeah kiddo? Swallowing, she let out a quiet, R. Are you my dad? This made all of the laughing stop. Mizuki looked at the little girl in shock, uh, I'm sorry but no I'm just Mizuki. I haven't had a child. Hearing this, the girl looks down to the floor sadly, oh, I just thought, she sniffed a little trying to hold back tears, sorry, it doesn't matter. Mizuki looked at the sad little girl and pulled her into a hug thinking I don't know if I'm asking this because the QB took away all my dark emotions or if I really do care, but I can't just watch such a young child be miserable. Hey there, what's your name? With another sniffle, she spoke quietly I don't have one, but the people that have owned me called me different things. My favorite was Naomi. Smiling at Naomi, Mizuki asked. I know I'm not your biological dad, but if you want I can be your dad for as long as we're here together. Naomi's eyes lit up smiling at Mizuki, really? Mizuki picked her up in another hug, 
of course Naomi Chan. With happy tears in her eyes, she hugged him with all her strength, Otosan. Naruto looked at Kyuubi, well this is unexpected, indeed. You want to eat her body while she's distracted? Oh yes. I've been waiting for another meal. Stealthily grabbing the corpse, Naruto threw is between the bars where Kyuubi swallowed it whole to avoid making too much noise. Naruto approached the new family, so Naomi, you seem to recognize a ninja technique pretty quickly. Is it possible that you knew because you can do some yourself? Naomi turned in Mizuki's arms to face Naruto, yeah, but only the three things that my first owner taught me. The fox hummed in disappointment, it seems you will only be able to use her bloodline ability for what she was capable of when you did your jutsu kit. It is unfortunate that you won't be able to advance such an incredible bloodline further. Mizuki put Naomi down in front of him, so what can you do Naomi-chan? Fiddling nervously, Naomi pointed at the wall near Kyuubi's cage, bone bullet, she exclaimed shooting her finger bone at the wall at an incredible speed that Kyuubi was barely able to follow, making a large crack in the wall as the bone drilled into the wall. Naruto opened his eyes wide in shock, whoa, that was awesome. Mizuki smiled at his daughter with pride, that is amazing Naomi-chan. Smiling Naomi shouted, I can do more. Hidden bone. A sharp bone poked out of the underside of her wrist joint and extended forward about the length of a kunai. Getting Naruto's attention, Kyuubi said Kit, that skill would be perfect for up, close combat. And with the bone bullets as well, you'll never have to buy kunai again. Grinning at the information, Naruto said oh man, this is gonna be so sweet. I can do one more, but you can't see it, Naomi said to the three others. Mizuki blinked in shock, huh? Why not? Naomi grinned, because I'm doing it right now. The three just looked at her in confusion, doing what Naomi? Naruto asked. The armor of bone jutsu, it's a defensive technique that creates and moves plates of bone underneath the skin of the whole body to make an armor everywhere at once. When I was learning this technique, a stray kunai hit me right in the belly and bounced off, barely even leaving a small cut that didn't even bleed. It didn't hurt at all Naomi explained with an even bigger smile, if that was even possible anymore. Picking Naomi up and cheering, Naruto yelled Yada. No one will stop me now Naomi-chan. Thanks a ton. With these new skills, no enemy will stand in my way, putting Naomi down, Naruto turned to the other two the sun's coming up now, I'm gonna go practice before my team wakes up, see you next time I'm asleep. He then ran down the corridor and into his body, excited of the use of the new skills. Naomi pulled on Mizuki's arm again, hey Tausen? Um what is Ninja-san's name anyways? Mizuki smirked and sat on the couch with Naomi by his side, his name is Naruto Uzumaki, and at the rate he's growing, he will be Hokage one day. Getting up, Naruto looked around to see that Sasuke had left the tent. Probably more training, hey he does owe me a spar. Climbing out of the tent, Naruto saw Sasuke standing upside down on a tree branch doing crunches. Morning team Naruto said. Sasuke just grunted in reply before doing two more and dropping down in front of Naruto, Morning Dobi, did you realize you sometimes talk in your sleep? At that, Naruto looked at Sasuke thinking oh shit, what did I say? What did he hear? I'm so dead. What do you mean Sasuke? As I was walking out of the tent, I heard you mumble, with these new skills, no enemy will stand in my way did you uncover a secret technique or something on the mission? Sasuke asked point blank, forcing Naruto to give him a straight answer. Naruto started to panic, crap, crap, double crap crap on a stick. What do I tell him? Kit, just repeat after me okay? Turning to Sasuke, Naruto spoke well in all honesty Sasuke, I'm a little freaked out. You remember when I thought there was a prisoner in that ninja's tent? Sasuke nodded in confusion, well I was half right, when I entered to where the prisoner was, there was just a bleeding dead guy sitting there. But when I went to check his pulse, I slipped in his blood and some of it ended up getting into a cut I made on my chest earlier on in the thug camp. And well it hurt, a lot. Sasuke raised a brow and said, So? You think you may have contracted something you can use from his blood as a weapon? Scratching the back of his head, Naruto looked at Sasuke seriously. I don't think. I know. And in a dramatic movement, Naruto whipped out his new hidden bones and showed them to Sasuke. I did it by accident when I was in the tent grabbing the attention of a thug and on instinct, I leapt at him and the bones slid into his skin so easily. But he screamed, drawing the attention of the last thug in the tent. I turned and pointed at him, and suddenly, Naruto pointed to a nearby tree and shot off a bone bullet, that happened. 
Sasuke just looked between Naruto and his new weapons in shock, is that seriously your bones? Nodding, Naruto faked fear I don't know what to do Sasuke, what if my bones keep growing out of me? I mean, I've noticed they grow back almost instantly, but seriously. This sucks. Sasuke grabbed Naruto's shoulder and slapped him, keep it together Naruto, this team needs you. I don't care if you randomly shoot bones from your body and neither will Sakura. You're our teammate Naruto, and honestly, you're my brother now. I will always help you like you've done for me. Alright? Now pull yourself together. Naruto looked at Sasuke in real shock, you think of me as a brother? Scowling, Sasuke replied, yeah, I don't know when it happened but the fact remains that this team is the last thing I have left. I will protect the last of my new family with all that I am. Naruto sat in silence before hugging Sasuke with tears in his eyes, thanks, Aniki. I've never had a family. Looking up at Sasuke's face, Naruto realized Sasuke was glaring at him with red eyes. Just because you're my Atoto doesn't mean I won't hurt you. Get. Off. Now. Naruto jumped away just as Sakura and Kakashi jumped out of the tent because they heard Sasuke yelling, Naruto, Sasuke what happened? Why were you yelling? Kakashi asked, his eyes scanning the trees for any possible threat. Looking up at their sensei, Sasuke said nothing's wrong, Naruto just startled me. Sakura looked at Sasuke's eyes, Sasuke-kun, your eyes are red. That caught Kakashi's attention, causing him to look at Sasuke's eyes. What Kakashi saw shocked him, Sasuke, you've activated your Sharingan. Sasuke's eyes turned to Kakashi, really? I think I'd know if I activated my own bloodline sensei. Look at me Sasuke, I want you to watch this, Kakashi said running through hand signs, ninja art, chameleon jutsu, now Sasuke, walk over to where I'm pointing, Naruto, Sakura be quiet. Sasuke walked over to where Kakashi was pointing, how is this meant to prove I have my Sharingan? Kakashi nodded, the Sharingan automatically sees through Genjutsu, and you just saw through mine. Naruto, Sakura. I want you to walk over to where I'm pointing now. Naruto frowned while Sakura said, but sensei we can't see you, you disappeared once you used that Genjutsu. Undoing the Genjutsu, Kakashi turned back to Sasuke, now do you remember that Jutsu I just performed? Yeah I want you to tell me about it. Confused, Sasuke suddenly realized he knew how to do the jutsu flawlessly and all the details about the jutsu itself. The jutsu uses chakra to manipulate the signals between a target's senses and their brain to make it appear as if the user doesn't exist. How do I know that sensei? Kakashi I smiled, that's the power of the first stage Sharingan. Names and details? Kakashi Hitake and Team 7 returning from C-rank cleanup mission. Looking up from his clipboard, Izumo smiled at Kakashi, Welcome home you guys, and three days earlier than expected too. Nice work. Naruto smiled at the gate guard, thanks Izumo-san. Sasuke just grunted out his classic, HN. While Sakura's face lit up with happiness at being praised. Izumo smiled back to them, don't need to thank someone for telling the truth, the Hokage will be waiting for you. You know how he is. Thanks Izumo, said Kakashi, we'll be on our way, catch you later. Izumo nodded, MHMM, see ya. Taking the first few steps into the village, Kakashi turned to his team. Alright guys, we'll head to the Hokage Tower and report the full mission, then everyone go home and clean up. We'll have some light training this afternoon and then I'll buy dinner, consider it a reward for your first successful C rank. Hi sensei, the team chanted back, happy with the idea. Smiling at the others in her team, Sakura jumped onto a nearby rooftop race you there. And off she ran. Running after her, Naruto yelled hey you cheated. No head start. That's when Sasuke flew past him, Aniki wait up. Kakashi was shocked at how Naruto addressed Sasuke, and many nearby villagers threw insults at Naruto, saying things like, how dare that demon try to befriend our Uchiha. Yeah, trash shouldn't mix with treasure. Kakashi appeared behind the two gossiping villagers, excuse me what did you say about my students? He said casually with a kunai knife in hand. The villages turned scowling until they saw that they were talking to a Jonin, oh I'm nothing at all sir yeah we were talking about. The birds. Yes the birds. Kakashi just looked at them, that was the worst lie I have ever heard, and I lie at least twice a day. Usually about the reasons I'm late for things. Kakashi put away his knife as he trailed slowly behind his students. Sakura arrived at the door to the Hokaye's office and turned around to wait for the other two, 
They arrived 10 seconds later neck and neck. I totally won that one Aniki. Sasuke just smirked, in your dreams Atoto. Actually boys, I won, said Sakura with a curious grin, why are you guys calling each other brothers? To cover up his brother's bravado, Naruto stepped up with a huge grin, well Sakura, since I grew up without a family I started to see our team as a family. Sasuke finally accepted me and lets me refer to him as my older brother cause he understands the pain of not having a family member. Shocked at Naruto's confession Sakura just replied with a highly intelligent, oh. Trying to defuse the awkward silence, Sasuke started so, where do you think Kakashi sensei is? At that moment the door to the Hokaye's office opened and Kakashi stuck his head into the hallway, ah there you are, I was wondering when you three would get here. Come in quickly, you've kept Hokage-sama waiting long enough. Pointing at Kakashi in shock, Naruto attempted to speak, wah? How did you? But we were? What the? With the help of Sakura, Sasuke managed to pull Naruto into the office and sit him between them on the long chair against the wall, I think you broke him sensei. Kakashi smiled at Sasuke and said, good. That way he won't interrupt my report. The Hokage watched on in amusement. It's hard to believe this team has only been together for such a short amount of time. Clearing his throat, Sarutobi returned everyone's attention to him. Right Team 7, what is the status of your mission? Kakashi I smiled, completely successful, with a large bonus. Congratulations are in order then I suppose. Kakashi, I think this report would be better if you filled it properly instead of just telling me your interpretation. Here is some paper, get cracking. Kakashi just looked at the paper with unblinking eyes, um are you sure Hokage-sama? I could just tell you what happened. With a wizened smile, the Hokage waved of Kakashi. Sighing in defeat, Kakashi turned to his team alright guys, meet up at our training grounds in two hours. Until then you're free, ciao. And Kakashi disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto turned to the Hokage, hey Gigi, can we talk to you for a second? Raising an eyebrow in curiosity, Sarutobi replied sure guys, what's wrong? Naruto and Sakura both looked at Sasuke. With a sigh, Sasuke looked at the Hokage and sent chakra to his eyes. The Sharingan? Sarutobi asked quite stunned. I must say Sasuke, it's quite amazing for you to have activated it at such an age. But I guess it's time now, said Sarutobi, while reaching into one of the many drawers in his desk. Sasuke frowned in confusion, time for what Hokage-sama? With an aged smile, the Hokage pulled out a scroll with the Uchiha symbol on it. After the incident involving your clan, the council and I decided that throughout the stages in your life you will receive one of the scrolls left by your clan. This one teaches about the visual genjutsu used by your clan. Once you master these genjutsu, your Sharingan should have increased into the second stage. At that time I will give you the advanced fire jutsus of your clan and the second stage sword scrolls. Looking at the scroll in shock, Sasuke thought hard thank you Hokage-sama, but when it comes to the sword style could I swap it for the scrolls on tracking? The Hokage looked at Sasuke in shock, tracking? I didn't know that was where your interest lies Sasuke-kun. Alright that's acceptable, master those visual jutsu and I'll have the next scrolls ready for you. With a smirk Sasuke bowed to Sarutobi, Domo Arigato Hokage-sama. Sarutobi smiled back, it's the least I can do for the shinobi of my village. Is there anything else you need Team 7? Naruto looked up, um Gigi? I got a question about a couple of jutsu I recently, um stumbled across, said Naruto seriously. Sarutobi's eyes widened in recognition, of course Naruto-kun, we can discuss that now if you want? Privately? He said pointedly, looking at Sasuke and Sakura. Sasuke got the message, alright Atoto, we'll get out of your way. Come on Sakura. Hi Sasuke-kun, so long, she hesitated looking hopefully at Naruto, Nisan? Naruto froze in shock before smiling widely and hugging Sakura. He whispered see you later, one chan Stepping away from the hug with a smile, Sakura bowed to the Hokage and grabbed Sasuke's hand and ran out of the office waving to Naruto. Sarutobi watched the scene with a happy smile, it seems your little family is starting to grow Naruto-kun. Turning back to the old cage, Naruto replied, yeah Gigi, they're finally accepting me for who I am. I'm happy for you Naruto, do you remember the promise you made me when you became a Genin? Sarutobi asked his smile slowly becoming a frown. Tilting his head to the side, Naruto asked yeah Gigi, how could I forget? I took those words as my nindo, I will protect the village and the will of fire no matter what, and I know my team will help me. 
And what if a member of your team tries to extinguish the village's fire Naruto? That question froze him, what do you mean old man? They'd never do that, I know they wouldn't. But what would you do? Naruto stared at the desk in front of the Hokage, stuck in his thoughts. How could I choose between my family and my village? QB I need some help. Just answer me this kid, would you want someone in the next generation to live like you have? Alone? Hearing the QB's question, the answer to Sarutobi's became clear. Making eye contact with the Hokage, Naruto answered seriously. I'll do whatever it takes to ensure the will of fire lives on into the next generation. I will burn through all forces that try to extinguish the fire. And I will rise on top. Sarutobi leant back in his chair, good Naruto. Now what abilities did you gain from this absorption? Naruto raised his arm and out came the hidden bone. I have three prize techniques from the deceased Kaguya clan, wielders of the dead bone pulse bloodline. Sarutobi's eyes widened in shock, that will help you immensely on your path as a shinobi assassin Naruto-kun, thank you for making our village stronger. Do you know if it'll pass on through your genetics? Sarutobi's mind raced with the possibility of restarting the legendary Kaguya clan in Konoha. Naruto nodded, qb san seems to think so, but my descendants will start with this level of control and it'll be extremely hard for them to advance any farther. Heck I can't at all. Good work Naruto, whatever cover story you come up with, I will back it up. Now, you are dismissed. Tell Kakashi at training tonight to come back tomorrow if he wants another C rank. Sarutobi spoke. Bowing, Naruto finished with Hi Hokage Gigi, see you tomorrow. Before diving through the floor of the Hokage's office with his jutsu. Locking the door of his apartment, Naruto starts walking to the designated meeting spot for the team only an hour late. Arriving at the scene, Naruto looks up to see Sasuke already waiting. Naruto raises his hand and is about to yell a greeting, when a pink blur speeds past Sasuke and tackles Naruto to the ground in a massive hug. Wow Nei chan are you getting faster? Naruto asked taking deep breaths from the painful glomp. He looked down and saw Sakura's taped mouth and puffy eyes, she'd been crying recently. Nei chan Sasuke was the one to answer him, I told her about your, condition, yeah no, with the bones. Looking at Naruto's face, she asked MMFMHMMHMFF? Helping Sakura back up onto her feet, Naruto taped her mouth shut. Yeah it hurts a little, but I'm getting used to it, and besides it's nowhere near as painful as Iruka sensei's history lectures, even with the tape on, the boys could see Sakura's smile reach her eyes. MMFMMHM? Yes really, actually I wanted to tell you guys about the Hokaye's theory on how this happened, said Naruto, remembering the story he and Kyuubi fabricated during the small break. Appearing in a puff of smoke, Kakashi started, that sounds like it would be a good idea Naruto. In fact, we will go around the group and discuss how you each think the second part of the mission went starting with you Naruto. Hi sensei, Naruto said with a nod. Well my part in the mission went pretty much exactly as I planned up until I replaced someone who held some power inside the group, then it got pretty interesting. Naruto thought back to the mission and recalled his cover-up version. The big bad leader ninja asked to see me to discuss the betrayal of the man I originally posed as, and he just asked me these really random questions until Kakashi sensei's distraction started. Which the leader ninja forgot about me and rushed out to the battle. So I snuck around placing explosive seals under all the important looking stuff, I was doing well until I came to the private quarters of the ninja. There was a dead guy just dumped in the corner of the room, I didn't realize he was dead at first but well. Naruto trailed off, forgetting where his story went after that. Fortunately, Sasuke thought that Naruto was just having difficulty retelling the traumatizing event. It's okay Atoto, I'll tell him the rest. Naruto just nodded. Turning to their sensei, Sasuke told Kakashi what he was told by Naruto. Naruto slipped in the blood and some of it entered a cut on his chest, Naruto said it was extremely painful for some reason. After dropping a few more explosive seals, he fought off two thugs that attacked him with some new abilities of his then cut his way through the tent till he found us. Kakashi raised a brow at Naruto, new abilities? Naruto whipped his hand to the side and shot two bone bullets through a nearby tree. I have three abilities from the Kaguya clan. The Hokage said that the dead guy must have been a Kaguya, and his blood entering my body awakened some latent DNA in me and activated a watered-down version of their bloodline. Kakashi just stared at Naruto in shock, well, that's certainly not something you see every day. Turning to the Kunoichi of the team, your turn I guess Sakura, she nodded as she finally pulled the tape from her face. Hi sensei, well practically speaking. 
my part of the plan was executed flawlessly. With only one small change, which only affects our bank accounts, Sakura stated with a smirk. Raising an eyebrow, Kakashi asked what do you mean Sakura? Whipping out the sealing capsule Naruto had let her use on the mission, Sakura unsealed four full bars of gold. Giggling at the boy's shocked faces she said, I reckon one each? Kakashi stared at the gold bar Sakura just handed to him, Sakura, just one of these bars would be enough to buy a whole clan compound and renovate the whole thing. Sakura stuck her tongue out jokingly, well I guess we won't be doing missions for the pay for a long time, nay? Sasuke looked at his bar and whispered, maybe I can afford it after all, but Naruto heard him. Afford what Aniki? Sasuke looked up and realized everyone's attention was on him. With a sigh he started, well I guess it's time for my report right sensei? At Kakashi's nod, Sasuke began. My part of the plan went perfectly. Exactly as planned, I also found a certain weapon I may have a calling for. What do you mean Sasuke-kun? Asked Sakura. I found a grappling hook and used it for over three quarters of my kills, using it to grab, ensure and kill thugs left and right. The only actual weapon I've seen that may work the way I use the hook is a kusaragama, that's what I was hoping on buying and learning to use. Sasuke turned to their sensei, is there anyone you know that may be able to help me learn sensei? Scratching the back of his head, Kakashi was ashamed to admit sorry Sasuke, I really have no idea about a weapon like that. Naruto looked up excitedly, I may know someone who could help, his name is Dan Higurashi. He owns a weapon store around here. Kakashi looked at his students, hmm, maybe instead of training Naruto could take us to this weapon store and we can hopefully help out Sasuke. And maybe even find a weapon for Sakura. Sasuke's eyes sparkled in excitement, let's go, lead the way Atoto. Jumping to his feet, Naruto was about to run to the Higurashi ninja store when Kakashi grabbed his shoulder. Maybe we should cash these in first, Kakashi said holding up his gold bar. ding Hearing the door to his shop open, Dan Higurashi started his sales pitch. Good afternoon and welcome to the Higurashi ninja store, we have all your, oh. Hello Naruto. How are you? Smiling at Naruto and his team from behind the counter, Dan noticed Kakashi standing at the back of the group. Hey there Kashi, how long's it been since I saw you? Scratching the back of his head sheepishly Kakashi chuckled, he he um let's see, must have been the last time I was dragged into a council meeting. Dan rolled his eyes, you weren't dragged in. You were late for a mission, causing it to be failed. And you couldn't give a good reason for doing so. Looking up in thought, oh yeah that's right. Interrupting the adult's conversation, Naruto yelled hey Dan. My teammates need help finding a weapon to specialize in, think you can help? Dan took stock of the two genin, of course I can, and since they're your teammates I think I can give you a discount. What do you kids need? Sasuke stepped up first, my name is Sasuke Uchiha, not kid. Dan brow raised, the last Uchiha? You've come to the right place, seeing Sasuke's confused place, Dan explained, when you clan was, um shall he say, reduced in number. Yeah well, many of their kata scrolls become public domain. This seemed like a prize for your average non-clan ninja but the problem was that no one could use them efficiently without the Sharingan, so people started selling them. And well, I'm a bit of a collector. He gestured to the large rack on his left and waved Sasuke over. Sasuke was in awe at how many of the scrolls had the Uchiha clan fan on them. These were all, from my family? Grinning down at Sasuke, Dan said yeah, I was actually a close friend of your uncle's. He was an odd one, but he wrote most of these scrolls. You see he was a ninja tool specialist. Sasuke looked up at Dan in shock, Uncle Shozatsu was a ninja tool specialist? Sure was, Sasuke tried to remember his deceased uncle, but other than the fact he was a very serious man, Sasuke couldn't recall that much. Seeing the look of loss on Sasuke's face, Dan patted his shoulder to get Sasuke's attention. You know, if you ever want to hear about him, feel free to come by. I'll be glad to share some of my memories with you. Sasuke suddenly felt a small weight float off of his shoulders, Arigato Higurashi-san. Letting out a boom of a laugh, Dan exclaimed Higurashi-san? Ha ha you sound just like your uncle as well. Please just call me Dan. Sasuke shook his head smirking, nah, I think I'll follow in my uncle's footsteps Higurashi-san. Smiling down at Sasuke he asked, so what weapon do you need Sasuke-kun? A lot of the Uchiha were versed in swordplay, will you be choosing that as well? Smirking, Sasuke replied no thanks Higurashi-san, I'll leave the cleaving and cutting to Naruto. 
I was wondering, do you sell any kusaragama? Dan's face lit up in happiness, now that's a rare request, I have exactly what you need Sasuke. It was actually wielded by your uncle. Let me grab it for you, while you wait look at these two scrolls. The first is the Leaf Village's style of using it, and the second is the scroll made by your uncle. Including his special fire jutsu and techniques that work with the kusaragama. Dan grabbed two scrolls from the shelf and gave them to Sasuke before walking over to Sakura who was looking over tools on the wall in curiosity. See anything that catches your eye? Dan asked. Sakura frowned, not really Dan-san. I don't really know what I'm looking for. Dan thought for a second, say, why don't you come with me out the back while I grab Sasuke's weapon? I got a huge display of every possible weapon you could think of. Sakura smiled looking hopeful at Dan, that would be great. Thanks. Heading into the back, Sakura looked around in awe at all the weapons. Each weapon laid on one of the seven shelves, with a picture of them in action underneath them, leading all the way around the massive room. Only stopping for two other doors. Just have a look around and if you see something you like, tell me and we can test it out for you, said Dan as he picked up a small case from inside one of the other rooms. I've got to give this to Sasuke. And with that Dan walked back out the front to where Sasuke was leaning against the counter with his uncle's scroll in hand. This is it Sasuke, Dan said getting the attention of the three people in the room. While sliding the case across the counter. Reaching out to the case, Sasuke popped it open and pulled out a chain from the inside. Sasuke looked at either end of the chain and noticed two seals on each of the last links. This was my uncle's? Nodding proudly, Dan said do you want to test it out or? I'll buy it now. Alrighty. Handing over a large wad of cash to Dan, he asked I assume the seals are storing either end of the weapon? Dan winked while handing Sasuke his change and a piece of paper, you got it, here's some notes show hat on the seals used on this baby. Trust me, it can do much more than you think. Reading the piece of paper, Sasuke grabbed one end of the chain and pressed it to his chest. Glowing for a second with chakra, the chain suddenly wrapped itself around Sasuke's torso over his left shoulder and around to his right hip. Picking up his scrolls, Sasuke bowed deeply to Dan. Arigato Higurashi-san. Dan was about to replying when they all heard Sakura's yell of, these are perfect. They turned to see Sakura running out of the room with new red bracelets on her forearms and on her biceps. On each of her pointer fingers was a little red ring. Dan-san can I purchase these? Smiling at the girl's excitement, Dan said of course Sakura-chan, but don't you want to show your teammates what they are first? Nodding quickly, Sakura held her arms out to the side and sent Chakra into the each new accessory. A seal on each band glowed for a second before Sakura's arms disappeared in a rainbow glow, when she swung them out of the glow Sakura showed her new weapons to her teammates. On each arm, a long red and black painted steel bracer followed from her wrist to halfway up her biceps. On her hands, she had completely steel gloves which somehow didn't restrict her movement at all. They ended in sharp claws that extended about an inch past her fingers. Dan asked Sakura, did you grab the information sheet sitting under the weapon? Nodding, Sakura pulled out the sheet, it says these arm braces are chakra conductive, meaning if I send plain chakra through them they'll get much stronger, and if I sent my elemental chakra through them, they'll gain a special property depending on which type it is. Looking back at the sheet again, Sakura read they also carry a paralyzing agent in the claws, so I'll have to buy a few bottles of that agent in case the claws empty out, but they only release the agent when I want them to. Kakashi nodded appreciatively as Sakura deactivated the braces, returning them to being red bands on her arms and fingers. Great choice Sakura. Dan looked on a little worried, but Sakura did you see the price tag? It may be a bit more than, Sakura pulled out four wads of cash and put them on the shop counter, would you like a second pair? Dan said as his eyes lit up with dollar signs. Laughing at Dan, Sakura grabbed a set off chakra weights from a shelf near the counter I don't think that'll be necessary, but these weights would be useful, do I need to pay more or is that still enough? The dollar signs gleamed in the light, it's still more than enough walking bank, I mean Sakura-chan, Dan said grinning oddly at her. Backing away slightly, Sakura said, um, keep the change then. Laughing at Sakura and Dan's interaction, the boys of Team 7 started dragging their sensei out the door, thanks a lot Dan. We'll come back again soon okay? Maybe I'll bring more friends next time. The dollar signs grew larger, great idea Naruto. Bring all your rich friends here. Sakura followed the boys out closing the door behind her, Arigato Dan San, we'll see you later. And off they went. Sitting down and staring at the four huge wads of cash in front of him, 
Dan grabbed the top one and starting flicking through counting out the cash with a huge grin on his face. Thank the log for little ninjas and their growing need for weapons. Alright guys, did you want to stay in the village for a while and do D ranks? Or ask Hokage-sama for a C rank? Sasuke just looked at their sensei, no D ranks. Never again. Naruto and Sakura nodded in agreement. Sweat dropping at his students, Kakashi said um, okay, well we could grab one tomorrow morning. That way we can go over the mission setup, plan for what's gonna happen, and leave in the afternoon. Naruto smiled up at Kakashi, or you could go grab the mission straight from the Hokage himself right now, and meet up with us for dinner at Ichiraku's. Sakura thumped Naruto on the head, Nibaka. We're not going to Ichiraku's again. Sasuke looked up at his sensei, but Atoto has a good idea about the mission. We'll wait here for you sensei, go grab one. Quick. Kakashi sighed, you all want a mission so soon? They nodded. Alright fine, I'll meet you guys in, the falling leaf? It's just a few blocks over and it's a pretty decent place. Also, I think it is ramen. To the falling leaf, Naruto yelled and ran down the street. Sakura yelled to the distant Naruto, you're going the wrong way. Damn he didn't hear me. Kakashi sensei go get the mission, Sasuke kun go get us a table, and I'll go get our Naruto. K? Sasuke just grunted out a HN while walking away, and Kakashi managed to chow. And poofed into smoke. Smiling at the situation, Sakura sent Chakra to her feet and skated at an incredible speed after Naruto. With Kakashi. Appearing at the mission hall in his signature puff of smoke, Kakashi realized the active missions were closed for the day and everyone was packing up. Ah Kakashi, what brings you here so late? Turning, Kakashi saw the Hokage who was getting ready to leave for his office. Ah Hokage-sama, my team wanted me to grab tomorrow's mission tonight so that we can discuss plans and tactics before heading out tomorrow. Gesturing to a stack of scrolls, the Hokage stated unfortunately, you were late. Again. So all the missions are packed up. The Hokage was interrupted by a knock at the door and a semi-nervous old drunk guy poked his head though the opening, um excuse me, I was told I could find the leader of this super village here? With a grin, the Hokage tilted his hat to the man, I thank you for referring to my village as super I am the Hokage. How may I help you? Stumbling in shock the man stood up straight, oh sorry, I was hoping I could apply for a C rank escort mission? That's the cheapest you've got right? The Hokage nodded to Kakashi, I think you've found your mission Kakashi, turning back to Tazuna he said, this is one of my Jonin Kakashi, he leads the best team of Genin we currently have, would that be enough protection mister? Smiling, the man said Tazuna, Tazuna the bridge builder. And I think a Jonin and his squad would be super. I smiling to Tazuna, Kakashi said well Tazuna-san, tell me where we're going and when you want to go and we'll be ready to head off. Grinning at the thought of a full squad of battle-hardened ninja, Tazuna said first thing in the morning would be super. We'll be heading to the land of waves so I can build my bridge. Can you look after me until I'm done? Nodding, Kakashi answered of course Tazuna-san. We will see you at the main gate at 7 am. Not a moment later. The Hokage turned to Kakashi, and if anyone is late, I'll see to it that their favorite book is set on fire. Right Kakashi? Gulping, Kakashi replied. Oh of course Hokage-sama, seems fair. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a team to track down and inform them of the mission tomorrow. Ja. And off he puffed. With Sasuke. Wailing up to the mater of the falling leaf, Sasuke asked. A table for me and my team? Recognizing Sasuke as the last Uchiha, the man nodded straight away with a smile on his face. Of course Sasuke-sama, right this way. Rolling his eyes at the Sama Sasuke followed the man to booth next to a window facing the Hokage monument. Thanks. A waiter approached the table, can I get you something to drink while you wait for these teammates of yours Sasuke-sama? Just some water will do for now, with the order placed. The waiter and the maitre bowed and walked away. Without the distraction, Sasuke looked out the window in thought. I know I vowed to avenge my clan, but the only way to do so without my team would be to steal other strengths with my Sharingan, I won't do that. I won't steal from my comrades. Having a small epiphany, Sasuke thought I wonder when my teammates became special to me? I used to just think of them as tools to help with my cause but now, I can't imagine my life without them. They're my new family. At his Sasuke let a real smile appear on his face. Making a decision, Sasuke vowed. Screw Itachi, I have a new Nindo. I will protect my family, I will help them progress through life. 
hopefully they will return the favor when it comes to Itachi, but they are the most important thing. I will never risk their safety. Sasuke's thought was interrupted by a ruckus at the entrance to the establishment. Turning to see what was going on, Sasuke turned livid. With Sakura and Naruto. The house is full, we don't serve demons. The maitred said scowling at Naruto. Sakura was about to punch the guy in the face when Naruto stopped her, shaking his head, sorry, I'll be going then. Sakura ne chan, go and sit with Aniki. I'll just go home, I got some food there. Sakura looked at Naruto in shock, while the maitred sneered at him. That's right demon. Get out of here. The man suddenly fell forward, with Sasuke standing with a foot on his back. Everyone in the restaurant stopped what they were doing and stared in shock at him. Sasuke's waiter ran over to him, Sasuke-sama what are you doing? Sasuke ignored the waiter and looked at Naruto's shocked but scared face. I will protect my family, even I don't know why he's treated like this, I will protect him from the pain. I want everyone to listen to me, now. The staff, customers and even some people outside looked on in shock at the quiet Sasuke raising his voice. Sasuke stepped off of the maitre and walked to stand in front of Naruto. Placing his hand on Naruto's shoulder, Sasuke looked around the establishment. My name is Sasuke Uchiha, you treat my teammate like scum for some unknown reason. Well I've had enough. The nearby staff stepped away in shock, I don't care what the reason is, I don't care what he's done or what you believe him to be. If you dare treat Naruto Uzumaki, my Atoto, the way you have been. You will find yourself buried in so much shit you won't be able to breathe. Sasuke's waiter stuttered, but he's the demon. Wham! Sasuke appeared in front of the waiter with his fist buried in the dry wall next to the waiter's head. Care to repeat that? The man dropped the water he had been holding for Sasuke in fear. Sakura walked up to Sasuke, who was crying in rage, glaring at the man in front of him. Come on Sasuke-kun, let's go, she said pulling Sasuke's bleeding fist and leading him over to a crying Naruto. She lead the two out of the restaurant before turning back to all the people staring at her. With a dark sneer Sakura looked at all of them. What he said, she paused activating her right arm gauntlet causing everyone nearby to step back in fear, goes double for me. And with that Sakura turned and walked out while punching the door off of its hinges. Back with Kakashi. Kakashi appeared in his classic poof of smoke and was about to walk into the falling leaf when the door suddenly flew off its hinges and down the street. He watched on in shock as Sakura stormed off down the street, deactivating one of her gauntlets. Oh my, that can't be good. Kakashi looked at where Sakura was heading to see a crying Naruto with Sasuke patting on the back while glaring at everyone that looked at them. Holy log, what happened? Kakashi puffed next to Naruto and Sasuke just as Sakura arrived next to them. What happened guys? Sasuke looked at Kakashi and said, let's just go to Ichiraku's. I'm not a fan of that place. Me neither, Sakura nodded in agreement with Sasuke. It was cramping my style. Looking at Naruto's face, Kakashi figured out what had happened, shit, they must have refused Naruto's entry. I hope Sakura and Sasuke's actions didn't escalate to bad. Standing up straight, Kakashi said Ma, I guess you two are right, that places ramen pales in comparison to Tuchi's anyway. Let's go. Sasuke pulled Naruto to his feet and let him stand on his own, you all right Atoto? Naruto smiled sadly at Sasuke first, then the others. Yeah I'm good, thank you guys. I'm sorry that happened. Kakashi patted Naruto on the shoulder, you can apologize later. My offer to pay for your dinner runs out at midnight so let's hurry along nay? Smiling, Sakura grabbed Naruto's hand and pulled him along, let's get going then. Last one there is a rotten egg. Naruto smiled happily this time and said, yeah, last one there has to buy next time. And with that Naruto ran off after the quickly escaping Sakura. Sasuke turned to Kakashi. You're just gonna poof there once I leave aren't you? Kakashi looked down at Sasuke, poof? I don't poof anywhere, it's called a shunshine and it goes like this. Kakashi disappeared in a, poof of smoke. Damn it, Sasuke yelled and started sprinting at full speed towards Ichiraku's. At least I know I made the right choice. I will protect my family. Chapter 7, Wave Mission Part 1. Arriving at the gate, Sakura looked up to see her team waiting for her. Morning, how'd you sleep? Kakashi looked up from his book and nodded to Sakura, perfectly adequate, thank you for asking Sakura. Sasuke just grunted with a smirk towards her. While Naruto jumped up full of energy as usual, fantastic. 
I dreamed I was going to become a swords master and completed my goal of becoming Konoha's top assassin. A shrimp like you? An assassin? I think you're in a little over your head blondie, said Tazana, walking up to the group. Looking over at Kakashi, Tazana asked. Hey Kakashi-san, where is your team of Super Genin? Glaring at Tazana, Naruto shouted that's US old man. Tazana looked at the Genin in shock, these kids are the ninja supposed to guard me? Oh no, what have I done? Noticing the tension of Tazana's shoulders, Kakashi stated to suspect something. Tazana was fine when he thought a team of super ninja was guarding him. But now that he's seen their age he underestimates them, which shows his fear of inadequate protection. Now, why would that be since he knows I will be guarding as well? Maybe he suspects more than thugs are going to be after him? Turning to his team, Kakashi said all right guys remember what we discussed last night, Formation 1. The Genin's faces turned serious, hi sensei. And stood in a reverse pyramid formation around Tazana with Kakashi crouching in front of Tazana, Sasuke to the left, Naruto front right and Sakura behind. All right, move out. Kakashi ordered. Sakura stepped up behind Tazana. Tazana yelped as Sakura pushed him onto Kakashi's back. And off we go, she said with a smirk. With Tazana piggybacking Kakashi, the team jumped into the trees. Tazana screamed out what the hell? I didn't sign up for th five fiveies. Landing in a clearing the team set about scanning the vicinity for threats. Kakashi set Tazana down on the ground. I hope we didn't scare you too much Tazana-san, it's just that traveling at this speed. We should be near your home by midday tomorrow if nothing impedes our progress. Sitting down on a nearby log, a pale Tazana mumbled out. You ninja are crazy, if I hadn't fainted every time I woke up until like, half an hour ago. I'd have been super freaked out the whole way here. I smiling at Tazana. Just take deep breaths Tazana-san. We'll set up an early dinner, so why don't you relax? Walking back into the clearing Naruto said, clear. Sasuke and Sakura entered from their points at the same time, clear over here as well sensei. Sasuke just grunted a confirmation. Alright, Sakura could you get started on boiling some water? Sasuke, help with the fire and set up what Sakura tells you too. She knows what she's doing and after the last time you or Naruto cooked, well let's just say I don't like food poisoning. Blushing at the praise from her sensei, Sakura let out a high sensei, Sasuke could you grab some wood? Sasuke grunted again and starting towards a tree. Tazana watched Sasuke as he approached the tree, what's that kid doing? How's he gonna cut off a few branches without a ladder or axe? Tazana gasped in shock when Sasuke started to walk up the tree, how's he doing that? Some kind of trick? Kakashi sat next to him, not just a basic chakra control exercise, a basic ninja skill. Tazana still looked on in awe until Sasuke disappeared into the branches above. He was then distracted by what Kakashi said next, Hey Naruto, can you go get us one of those wild boars we passed earlier? With a quick nod, Naruto replied hi sensei, and started taking off his travel gear. Tazana turned to Naruto, Oi kid, how are you gonna manage to take down a wild boar? They're super dangerous. Naruto looked at Tazana and extended out the hidden bone in his left arm, I got my ways old man. And he leapt into the trees heading back the way they came. At that moment, Tazana decided that the boys on this squad were crazy. At least the girl seemed rather normal, turning back to Sakura to try and get some normalcy he was shocked when he saw her cutting vegetables with the sharp claws of a blood red and jet black gauntlet. I give up, all ninja are crazy. Maybe a little, but we get the job done, Kakashi said to Tazana with an eye smile. Not two minutes later, the two heard a loud crack and looked up. Falling through the trees was three small branches about the size of a fully grown person. They landed in a perfect pile next to Sakura, who didn't even flinch. Bout time Sasuke-kun, I need that fire going now. Landing opposite Sakura, Sasuke said sorry for the delay, I had to find the perfect branches, otherwise I'll need to create a full fire pit, and we just don't have the time for that. Sasuke picked a branch and threw it into the air above Sakura, catch. Sakura just smirked and disappeared in a red blur that flew past the log four times in a second before sitting back where she was and started to fill a pot that she recently unsealed with water from her canteen. Smirking at Sakura's nonchalant attitude, Sasuke ran through a set of hand signs. Fire style, ember. He muttered and spat a small fireball at the pile of logs the branch had become, setting them ablaze in seconds. After that, Sasuke unsealed a metal grate on three legs and set it over the fire, it's ready Sakura. 
Sakura nodded while throwing the chopped veggies in the now filled pot and set it above the fire to cook. Now we just need Naruto to come back with that boar, Sakura said to Sasuke with a smile. Sasuke couldn't help it, he smirked back to her watching her face glow in the firelight. She really is quite beautiful. His thoughts were interrupted by a grunt of effort. The four in the clearing looked over to Naruto as he entered with a boar that was twice the size of him over his shoulders. This enough sensei? He grunted as he dropped it in front of Sakura. Kakashi sighed at Naruto while Tazuna stared wide-eyed at the boar. Naruto will only be here for two meals, we didn't need such a large kill. Naruto shrugged, big deal, Sakura can seal the meat in that time lock seal she bought from Dan San. Sakura leant over the boar, and using her claws she cut off each of its four legs and set them over the fire to burn off all the fur and cook them. I'm gonna clean this up before I seal it, don't want it to pop out all bloody and furry when I use the rest, said Sakura as she turned her attention to the corpse. Tazuna just blinked twice, looked at each of the calm ninja and said one thing. You're super insane, all of you. Before passing out from the shock. At this time, Naruto heard a twig snap from behind him. He turned around and scanned the area near the edge of the forest noticing nothing out of the ordinary, just some bushes, a squirrel darting up a tree, a puddle, wait a second, a puddle? It hasn't rained in weeks. Turning towards Sasuke, he started tapping his knee with his ring finger Hey Sasuke, can you pass the water? I got something in my eye, I wanna wash them out just to make sure. Sasuke recognized the tapping for their code of we are being watched and knowing that Naruto and Sakura were the ones that carried water on these missions while he lugged around the cooking utensils and the chakra handcuffs along with the food, Sasuke deduced that Naruto mentioned water for a reason. Realization hit Sasuke when he realized Naruto was telling him to activate his Sharingan, why else would he start mentioning his eye? Sure Naruto, where about did you leave it? Hearing Sasuke call Naruto by his name instead of a Toto or Dobi, Kakashi and Sakura tuned into the conversation and started to assess the threat. Um I think I left my bag behind the fire? To your left? Naruto asked while slowly extending his hidden bone in front of him. Looking behind Naruto's left and noticing the puddle, Sasuke activated his Sharingan and saw through the Genjutsu easily. Yeah Naruto, you're right. There's two bottles right next to each other, what do you want? Smiling at his team Naruto stood up, I want the one on the left. Sakura backed up to Tazuna standing up as a guard while Naruto and Sasuke suddenly charged at the puddle. Naruto flung out his arm sending a barrage on bone bullets at the ninjas in disguise, who dropped the genjutsu and dodged to the sides while the chain connecting their wrists was destroyed by the projectiles. Shit what now Maizu? The one on the left asked. What do you think Gozu we attack? The one on the right yelled while diving at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked and using his Sharingan he dodged the lunge easily while unleashing his Kusarigama. At one end a foot-long scythe blade appeared from its seal while on the end at Sasuke's feet, a ball weight appeared. Spinning the chain expertly, Sasuke threw the scythe at Gozu stabbing him through the shoulder. Screaming in pain Gozu made a lunge at Sakura and Tazuna. But before he could get close, Sasuke pulled back on the chain, wrenching Gozu from the ground and was wrapped up in the chain. Gozu looked up groggily just in time to see the iron ball flying at his face. Crunch. The ball crushed Gozu's nose and teeth while knocking him out painfully. Bringing the battle to an end. When Maizu charged at Naruto, he pulled his arm back aiming for a stab at Naruto's chest believing himself to be faster than a mere genin. Unfortunately, he was wrong. Naruto barely slid under the strike with his bone blade flashing upwards past Maizu. In the one step between Maizu's strike and Naruto's slide, Naruto had slashed at Maizu. Maizu stopped his charge in shock, and fell to the ground in two pieces, his head completely detached from his body thanks to Naruto's speedy swipe. Lowering his guard, Kakashi walked over to the two genin. I must say you two fought exceptionally. Sasuke, you managed to capture your ninja just like a hunter nin would, and Naruto you finished it in one move like a true assassin. You did amazing, now leave the interrogation to me. Naruto make the corpse disappear. Picking up the unconscious captive. Kakashi stepped into the woods, out of sight of the group. Leaving the others with the corpse. Sasuke looked at Naruto who raised an eyebrow back at him. Yeah yeah I know, Naruto said before holding up a hand sign and diving underground, bringing Maizu's body with him. At this moment Tazuna decided to wake up, uck I don't feel too oh my god that's ahead. Sakura and Sasuke looked over to where Tazuna was pointing and realized that Naruto forgot to drag the head under as well. Nudging Sakura with his arm, 
Sasuke asked do you think these two would have had a price in the bingo book? Sakura smiled before taking a bingo book out of her pouch. Here Sasuke-kun, once you said you'd become a hunter and tracking nin, I thought having one of these would help. Smirking at Sakura's ingenuity, Sasuke took the book from Sakura's hand and starting looking through it. Sakura turned back to the food, seeing that the veggie soup was done. She grabbed a smaller pot of water and poured some rice in. Tazana-san, would you like your soup now? Or would you rather wait till we have the meat and rice done? After a few moments of silence, Sakura thought he hadn't heard her. She turned to him to ask again when she realized he was still staring at the head, starting to look a bit green. Um Sasuke-kun, could you please move the head away from Tazana-san? He doesn't look too comfortable. Looking up from his book, Sasuke nodded at Sakura and let out a HN. He casually strolled over to the head and picked it up by the hair and walked around the other side of the camp and put it behind one of the branches he cut down earlier. Naruto popped up next to Sasuke, taken care of guys, now where's the grub I'm starving? Sakura frowned at Naruto, Naruto ni, we should at least wait for Kakashi sensei. Besides Tazana san doesn't seem to feel like eating yet anyway. Naruto was about to retort when Kakashi walked into the clearing pulling his headband down over his left eye, well I got what I need, tell me Tazana san Who is Gato, and why does he want you dead? That one simple question made Tazana nervous, I'm sorry don't know him, ask later. Closing the bingo book, Sasuke stood up and grabbed the head, if he's no one, then why did he send the demon brothers after you? They are high C rank Chunin from the Hidden Mist, known for being ruthless and their use of highly effective poisons. Tazana was beginning to sweat now, um maybe it's someone I owe some money to? Sure it was an overreaction sending ninja after me but still, I'm sure it's nothing. Glaring at Tazana, Naruto grabbed the head from Sasuke, so you just made me take someone's life over a lost bet? He shoved the head into Tazana's face, you think this is worth a few bucks? Look what you've done. Tazana cringed away from the head, its dead eyes facing Tazana. Kakashi grabbed Naruto's shoulder and pulled him back, Naruto, that's enough. I'm sure Tazana-san will tell us why he lied, right Tazana-san? All right fine, Tazana said looking away in shame. Smirking at his victory, Naruto sealed the head into one of the capsules on his belt and passed it Sasuke. Come on then, why were you so stingy? What didn't want to pay for a higher mission? Are you that selfish? Something snapped in Tazana and he glared heatedly at Naruto, never. The future of my village is on the line. I would never put in less than my all for this cause. Stepping back in shock at Tazana's outburst, the Genin were at a loss of what to say. Seeing that Tazana's situation was direr than he wanted to lead on, Kakashi waved the Genin towards the logs around the fire and sat down next to Tazana. Tazana-san, if you tell us what is wrong then we can better prepare for what we have to face. Please tell me, who is Gato and why does he want you dead? Sighing in defeat, Tazana looked up at the Jonin. Gato, he is the owner of Gato Industries. Kakashi's eye widened, that Gato? One of the richest men in the world Gato? Why does he want you dead? I thought you were just a bridge builder? Tazana nodded in response, I am. You see, Wave Country is completely isolated from other countries because we're surrounded by water. Seeing the opportunity before him, Gato seized power over Wave by buying all the shipping docks and hiring thugs to destroy the ones he couldn't buy from people. Gato's a monster, and has been sucking the land dry of crops, wildlife, money and people. He'd sell the crops and wildlife through his industry to make a huge profit while keeping the money for himself and he'd sell the people into slavery in the black market. He's not the great leader of a visionary company, he's a ruthless monster bent on owning the world. Unfortunately, he chose to start with my village. Sasuke raised a brow, I still don't see why he'd hire ninja to kill you Tazana-san, why are you so important? Tazana looked up with a sad smile, I am the most super bridge builder in the whole of water country. My bridge will connect the land of waves to the mainland, destroying Gato's monopoly of our land. Tazana stared into the fire with a tortured expression. With me gone, so is the bridge. So is the last hope of wave. A silence fell onto the camp for a few moments as Team 7 absorbed the information told to them. The silence was interrupted as Kakashi spoke, Well team, looks like we got our work cut out for us and no way we can do this job on an empty stomach. Sakura, is the food almost done? I'm positively famished. Looking at her sensei she gave a smile, it's ready now, help me dish it up and we can dig in. Kakashi nodded and stood to help Sakura while Tazana looked on in shock, you're still going to help me? Even with the danger I put you in? From behind Tazana, 
Sasuke patted him on the shoulder. As if we're gonna leave now, what kind of hunter would I be if I couldn't stand up to such interesting prey? Naruto, standing up from his place near the fire said yeah Tazuna-san, you can't get rid of us that easily. I'm gonna set up our tents, so pass me your stuff. Sasuke passed their bags to Naruto and walked over to help with the food. While Naruto took a few steps away and threw a ceiling capsule to the ground, making the tent appear in a poof of smoke. Tazuna looked at the ninjas with tears pouring from his eyes, thank you, thank you so much. Kakashi turned back to Tazuna, as if we could anything less Tazuna-san, here's your food now chow down so you can get some rest. We're heading off at dawn. You get that team? Tazuna nodded towards Kakashi with a smile on with teary face while the team shouted a high sensei. Tazuna-san how much longer will we be? Naruto asked with an impatient expression. As the team flew through the trees. Holding his hat with one hand, Tazuna faced Naruto from his place on Kakashi's back, at this speed we could be there in 10 minutes. This is super cool. Hearing this Kakashi slowed down, um Tazuna-san, didn't you say our lift across to the village's island won't be there until 2 p.m.? Tazuna said back, yeah, so what if we're a little early? Kakashi replied, nothing is wrong with that, it's just that I don't feel like wasting energy. Why don't we walk from here? We'll still be there over an hour early. Sasuke grunted in agreement while Sakura nodded appreciatively, sounds good to me sensei. Coming to a halt, Kakashi jumped down to the ground placing Tazuna back on his wobbly feet. Wow that was a rush. Naruto landed next to him, at least we get a bit of a rest now. Looking around the area for any threats, as he'd been doing every five minutes for a minute at a time, Sasuke noticed a chakra signature in the mist ahead of them. Stepping up next to his sensei, Sasuke whispered there is a man in this mist, his chakra signature is larger than yours sensei. He can't see us yet as far as I can tell, but he seems to be waiting for us. Frowning in thought, Kakashi turned to his team. Alright guys, emergency protection pattern beta 3. Hi sensei they replied in confidence. Naruto grabbed Tazuna's arm while Kakashi created two shadow clones. Naruto smirked at Tazuna's confused face, take a deep breath and close your eyes. Zabuza looked down from his vantage point among the trees, HMM, a squad of Genin? This shouldn't be too hard, then again the Jonin looks familiar. Zabuza let the Konoha team walk right by underneath him and walk about 20 meters ahead before he jumped down from his perch, time to get started. He thought pulling the huge blade off of his back. Be on guard guys, and follow any order I give you straight away. Hi Sensei Sasuke and Sakura said to Kakashi while Kakashi's two shadow clones, that had transformed into Naruto and Tazuna lookalikes, just continued onwards without reacting. Kakashi closed his eyes and listened for movement, after a few seconds he heard a quiet grunt and then something flying through the air towards them. Get down! The team dove to the ground barely avoiding the massive blade that flew over their heads, it slammed into a tree where moments before Zabuza appeared standing on the handle of the blade. Kakashi squinted his eye as he looked at Zabuza, shit that's Zabuza Momochi, I may not be able to come out of this one unscathed. Hello Zabuza, I'm guessing Gato sent you to delay us? He said while grasping the left side of his headband. Seeing the Jonin's movement, Zabuza recognized who he was Kakashi Hatake, high A rank shinobi, known as the copy ninja. This'll be fun, Zabuza said while turning to face the team, still standing on his sword. Kakashi smirked, though you couldn't see it behind his mask. Actually I think you're in for a bit more than you bargained for. Just as Kakashi finished his sentence, a four bone bullets was shot straight through Zabuza's right thigh, causing him to fall from his sword into the ground. Ah shit. Zabuza said looking behind him to see an orange and black clad Naruto sticking halfway out of the ground with his fingers pointing at him. Nice shot Naruto, with less mobility I can take him down much easier, Kakashi said pulling up his headband revealing a full matured Sharingan. Zabuza scowled from behind his bandages. Turning, he launched a kick at Naruto. Who only got a glancing blow to the top of his head because he sunk back into the ground. Pissed off at being caught off guard by a Genin, Zabuza turned to look back at the full team. As he watched, Kakashi's shadow clone that was disguised as Naruto disappeared into smoke. Fuck, I can't believe this turned bad so quickly. Kakashi, seeing his opportunity to end the battle quickly dashed at Zabuza as Zabuza began hand signs while jumping onto his good leg. Seeing with his Sharingan, Kakashi easily saw that Zabuza was planning to summon water clones to aid him so Kakashi prepared a counter. Zabuza glared at Kakashi, water style. Water clone jutsu he yelled summoning two clones to intercept Kakashi while he grabbed his sword. 
To his shock, the first clone disappeared seconds after it was summoned due to a bone bullet through its head and the second clone didn't last long against Kakashi. Zabuza tried to lure Kakashi into a trap by jumping onto the nearby lake, come on then leave scum, he said glaring at Kakashi. Being overconfident in both himself and his students, Kakashi leapt onto the water in front of Zabuza and pulled a kunai. Let's finish this Zabuza. With that said, Kakashi lunged at Zabuza and Zabuza swing his sword downward to intercept Kakashi's lunge. The sword was blocked by Kakashi, but the force of the swing pushed him underwater. Gotcha, Zabuza yelled while reaching into the water with his free hand, water style, water prison jutsu. Kakashi was suddenly unable to move in the water that pressurized around him. Shit, I'm caught. What should I do? Zabuza smirked, before glaring at the Genin and Tazana. What are you gonna do now? Your sensei's done and your client is gonna be next. Then I'm coming after you, he said adding killing intent to his glare. Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura shook in fear at the killing intent. But realizing that their next actions as a team could save their sensei's life, Naruto forced through the fear and yelled those that abandon the mission are trash, but those that abandon their comrades are worse than trash. Right guys? Sakura and Sasuke steeled their fear and replied an affirmative. Naruto summoned two giant shuriken and flung them at Zabuza while charging with the other two on his flanks. Zabuza swung his sword and battered the two blades aside, is that all you got? Water clone jutsu he summoned a water clone and gave it his blade, deal with the brats. The clone ran forward to meet the team's charge when Sakura yelled pattern delta strike. Sasuke and Naruto smirked up to the side leaving Sakura charging at the clone alone. The clone smirked, overconfident don't you think little girl? He yelled swinging Kubi Kiribocho at Sakura, only for her to disappear in a burst of speed. What? Sakura appeared behind Zabuza's clone with her gauntlets activated, she stabbed at his back at the same time he jumped forward, nice try, he said swinging at a now off-balance Sakura. That was when Sakura smirked and was pulled underground as a fireball appeared where she was. The clone's eyes widened in shock, what the he and it evaporated instantly, dropped the blade as it stabbed into the ground. Seeing his clone get destroyed so quickly, Zabuza made the three hand signs needed as two more clones appeared on either side of him. Kill them and bring me my blade. He ordered and the clones charged towards Sasuke, and the discarded sword respectively. Sasuke turned, his Sharingan now having two Tomoe and glared at the water clone that was charging him, bring it, he said and whipped out the blade of his Kusaragama. The clone dodged the strikes easily and tried making his way to Sasuke to attack him, but using his Sharingan and the Kusa, Sasuke kept the clone at a distance without a challenge. I thought you were gonna kill me Zabuza? I'm still breathing. The clone got pissed off and recklessly dove under a strike to get in Sasuke's guard. A big mistake it realized as it looked up to attack. Zabuza watched as Sasuke's Sharingan span rapidly and suddenly, he disappeared. The clone stood up in shock, what? Where'd he go? He managed to get out before his head splashed into water as the weight of Sasuke's weapon slammed into him. The second clone had just wrapped his hand around Kubikiri Bocho when a pink blur appeared in his line of sight, on instinct it jumped back as Sakura's claw slammed into where he was a moment before. The clone scowled and swung the sword at Sakura, who dodged by using her flexibility and leaning backwards. Hold still brat. It snarled as it swung again. Sakura didn't have time to dodge, so she raised her gauntlets into a block hoping that they hold out. Slam! Zabuza's blade impacted and sent Sakura flying, the clone smirked in victory and turned around to give the blade back to the original only to see another giant shuriken inches from his face. Shit had thought in the millisecond before it was cut through. Naruto appeared from the ground and picked up his shuriken and Zabuza sword. Holy shit this thing is heavy he thought as Sasuke and Sakura appeared next to him. Plan Sasuke? Sakura asked glancing at him. Sasuke frowned in concentration thinking through the different tactics they've learned together as a team. Radical takedown, he said confidently. Naruto turned to him in shock, but we've only practiced that twice. It's our best shot to save Sensei, now let's go, Sasuke said forming hand signs and disappearing into his chameleon genjutsu. Sakura nodded at Naruto, you heard him, let's get started, Sakura said. Naruto nodded, unsealing another shuriken. Roger, he yelled as he flung them at the unprotected Zabuza. Zabuza watched the shuriken fly at him, you think that'll work? He said, catching it in front of him with ease. Zabuza smirked and pulled the shuriken aside, ready to throw it back when he notices pink at the base of his vision. 
he looks down to see Sakura, who had ran fast enough to stay out of sight underneath the flying shuriken. Shanaro, she yelled and unleashed an uppercut into Zabuza's jaw sending him through the air, forcing him away from the now failing water jutsu. Hit it Sasuke, Naruto yelled. Appearing out of his genjutsu, Sasuke was leaping over Zabuza unleashing his new jutsu. Weapon style, flaming arc, he yelled swinging the scythe of his weapon on Zabuza's airborne form. Fire leapt from a seal on Sasuke's chain of his weapon and set it ablaze, as Sasuke swung it, the flames flew of in a red-hot arc while maintaining the sharpness of the scythe, aiming to cleave Zabuza in half. Zabuza didn't see the arc of fire until last moment, due to the blinding pain of Sakura's punch. Opening his eyes as the fire started to burn his chest Zabuza made a split-second substitution only getting second-degree burn and a large gash. Zabuza fell to solid ground in pain, screaming ah fucking brats. I swear I'll key ACK. He suddenly went limp when two needles flew out of nowhere and pierced his neck. Kakashi approached Zabuza and checked his pulse. There was none. A hunter nin landed next to Kakashi and grabbed his arm. I want to thank your team for weakening him, but this is my kill. I will take it in my leave now. The hunter nin pushed Kakashi away and put his hand on Zabuza's chest. They disappeared in a shunshine. Kakashi turned to Tazana as it puffed into smoke. Good work team, Naruto where did you leave the real Tazana? Naruto took a few steps towards his right and pushed his hand through the ground next to a green colored straw. A few seconds later, Tazana was pulled out covered in dirt with the straw sticking out of his mouth. Spitting it out, he asked is it over? Kakashi pulled his headband down over his Sharingan and spoke, yep, before collapsing in near chakra exhaustion. Can we, get some rest? At your house? Tazana-san? Kakashi blinked once, then fell over unconscious. Kakashi regained consciousness to find himself surrounded by his team. Morning guys, what's up? He slurred. His team turned to him as he sat up, he looked around to find himself in a house on a couch in the lounge room. Sensei you're alive, Naruto yelled in excitement. Tazana sat opposite him on a chair, super. Now that you're awake, what happened out there? Other than being a little wet, you seemed perfectly fine. No injuries or anything. Sakura sighed, we've already explained, he was extremely low on oxygen and almost had chakra exhaustion. It was perfectly normal that he fell unconscious for a while. Kakashi nodded, what she said. He spoke before rolling on his side and waving them off, wake me up in the morning, we may as well get some training done while Tazana-san builds his bridge. Sasuke poked Kakashi's head, Sensei, I think Zabuza is still alive. This bought a look of shock to everyone's face, Naruto asked the obvious question, um why? That hunter nin took away his corpse Aniki, he ain't immortal. Sasuke nodded, exactly, hunter nins just take the head as evidence and destroy the body, right sensei? He said looking at Kakashi for confirmation. Mulling it over for a few seconds, Kakashi sighed and sat up Sasuke's right, man I should have noticed that straight away. I guess Zabuza is still around, and even worse. He has a partner that is Hunter Nin level. After a moment of silence, a young woman walked into the room, excuse me everyone, dinner is ready. Thank you once again for all the pork, we won't have to head to the market for a while. Sakura smiled at her, it's the least we could do for you Tsunami. You are letting us stay here. The now named Tsunami nodded with a smile, please be quick, I don't want you to have to eat cold food, she said while turning back to the kitchen slash dining room. Sitting down at the round table, the team began to dig in while talking animatedly. Tsunami called out Inari, dinner is ready. A few moments later, a depressed looking boy walked down the stairs and took a seat between Naruto and Sakura. He looked at all the food in shock, Ka-san, how did we get so much food? Tsunami looked at Inari, these ninja caught the meat for us, I just cooked it with a couple of herbs. Eat up Inari. Inari looked up at the smiling ninja, seeing their happiness over such a small accomplishment, this kid has obviously gone head to head with a rabid wild boar before, he scowled and took his plate of food back up to his room, thanks Kasan, I'll be going to bed after this. Good night grandpa. The group watched as Inari left, sorry about him, he's just not very happy with our current situation. Everyone wants Gato gone, Tazana said quietly. Taking an obnoxiously loud bite out of the meat provided, Naruto said it's fine Tazana-san, the kid will be happy when we're done here so that's all that matters. Pass the sauce Nei chan Sakura passed the sauce to Naruto, you really have no finesse at all do you? Tazana outright laughed while Tsunami and Kakashi chuckled. 
Sasuke just let out a smirk you got that right Sakura-chan. A Toto has the manners of a drunken chicken. Sakura blinked at Sasuke in shock, did he just call me Chan? Naruto scowled over the table at Sasuke, at least my hair doesn't look like a chicken's ass. Everyone looked at Sasuke's hair for a second as if noticing it for the first time. ha <laughs> The whole table broke out into intense laughter while Sasuke sat fuming. IT does not look like a Kakashi shoved a mirror into Sasuke's hand, AAA. Why didn't anyone tell me my head looked like poultry? At this everyone burst into laughter again, some giggling could even be heard upstairs. Naruto yelled, ha ha maybe it's some kind of jutsu to summon birds? Fly us in some chicken aniki. Ha 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 ha. Sasuke scowled at everyone, then at their food here's a jutsu for you, may all your bacon burn he said before taking an over-exaggerated bite into his food angrily. Naruto yawned, sensei what are we doing down here so early? Kakashi turned to face the team while sitting on the end of the wharf, did you three see how Zabuza and I stood on top of the water? That was an extension to the tree climbing technique. We're here so that you guys can learn that, then hopefully if you finish it within the next few days, I can start you on something a little more. Advanced, Kakashi said with an eye smile. Naruto thought to Kyuubi, hey Fox, can you ask Mizuki if he knew how to do this? Sure kid, after a few seconds of silence, he continued. Mizuki says it's the same as tree walking, except instead of holding the chakra, you have to push it out evenly from your whole foot. Sounds lame, why don't you just blow up the river? Naruto sighed to himself, cause you're an oversized, violent carpet. Naruto cut the connection before Kyuubi could respond. Though Naruto could still feel the growl being directed at him. Kakashi's voice snapped Naruto out of his concentration. Do you have another random piece of information on chakra control Naruto? Or was it a one-time fluke? Kakashi thought, he he I'm so funny, or is that the lack of chakra to my brain talking? Naruto smirked and said, water walking is the same as tree walking, except instead of holding the chakra, you have to push it out evenly from your whole foot to maintain balance. That about right sensei? The other two genin looked at Naruto before glancing at their stunned sensei, um yes actually, exactly that. Well you heard him, get on with it, Kakashi said while staring at Naruto. Naruto walked towards the river and applied the chakra, when he thought he had it he stepped onto the water. Once he got to the center of the river, he turned and smiled, hey guys. This ain't hard at all. That was the moment when Naruto lost concentration and fell in. Holy log that's cold. He screamed as he shot out of the water and landed on the shoreline again. Naruto pulled off his wet clothes standing only in his boxers. I'll get it this time for sure. Sakura smacked Naruto over the back of his head, Nibaka. Put your clothes back on. Hearing clothing being removed behind her, Sakura turned around and saw Sasuke taking off his shirt. S Sasuke-kun? What well, what are you doing? Sasuke, standing only in his shorts now after taking off his equipment and his shirt said, a Toto does have a point. If we keep screwing up our clothes will get soaked. I don't want to deal with the extra weight. Kakashi patted Sakura on the shoulder, if you want to strip as well, I'm sure the boys won't mind. But I'm going back to the house before Tazuna wakes up. He leaned down and whispered in her ear, if the reason you choose not to is insecurity, you should know that neither of the boys would judge you for anything you think you may or may not have. I mean, you're still young so, yeah. Sakura blushed at the implications of what Kakashi said, even though she couldn't completely deny what he was implying. SH shut up sensei. Sakura stepped to the water's edge where Naruto was standing wobbly while Sasuke was placing one foot on the surface trying to balance the right amount of flowing chakra. Smiling at Sakura's bravery, Kakashi turned and began to walk back to the house since his chakra system wasn't healed enough for him to poof there. Sakura unzipped the back of her dress and pulled it over her head, it'll be fine, they're my teammates. They won't care. Sakura focused the necessary chakra to her feet and tried walking onto the water. In only two steps Sakura found the perfect amount of chakra and focused on maintaining that level. Perfect, now let's show these boys how it's done. Sakura jumped off the water and stepped off Naruto's shoulders to land in the center of the lake. Hey, this isn't hard at all, she said turning back to her team, the water splashing around her. Naruto looked up at the underwear-clad Sakura, not even phased at the lack of clothing, and said, how do you keep getting these things down straight away Nei-chan? Sakura put on a lecture voice, elementary dear Nibaka, I am just smarter than you. She finished with a grin. Hearing a splash, 
they turned to look at Sasuke who was unconscious face down in the water. Aniki. What's wrong? Naruto said as he pulled Sasuke above water. Sakura came over to check on him when she saw he had fainted from a nosebleed, does Sasuke find me attractive? Sakura thought with a blush. Noticing the blood himself, Naruto slapped Sasuke back to consciousness, Aniki. Stop being a pervert. That brought Sasuke back fully, I'm an Uchiha. I'm not a pervert, he said blushing. Blushing herself, Sakura leaned forward in a teasing pose, all like what you see Sasuke-kun? She said as a joke. Without thinking, Sasuke replied yeah. Naruto whacked Sasuke over the head, pervert. Rubbing his head, Sasuke scowled at Naruto shut up baka. Sakura was about to break up the fight when she noticed something on Naruto's stomach. Hey Naruto ni, what's that on your stomach? Naruto, who was still focusing chakra for the water walking technique looked down to see the fox's seal showing in black ink. Naruto panicked and cut the chakra off, falling into the knee deep water near the bank. It's nothing, don't ask about it, he said in fear sitting against one of the posts of the wharf. Sasuke immediately calmed down, worried about Naruto's outburst. Atoto, was that a seal? What's it doing on your stomach? Naruto didn't look up to his teammates, QB, what do I do? If they find out about you they'll hate me. I can't go back to being alone again. It hurts too much, I I, what do I do? The QB let out a huge sigh, look Kit, I think they will see the difference between us. And don't take this the wrong way, I'm still a fucking tough demon, but if they can't see the good in you then they're not really worth it. Even if you do lose them, I can't believe I'm saying this, you still have us inside you. We won't leave you. And I don't think they will either. Feeling a hand on his shoulder, Naruto looked up and saw Sasuke and Sakura looking at him in concern. Sasuke gasped at the pained look on his face and the tears in his eyes. Being the smart person she is, Sakura asked, has it got something to do with why the villages hate you? Catching on to Sakura's train of thought Sasuke wrapped Naruto in brotherly hug, no matter what it is, we won't hate you. Even if the seal is holding something we would hate, you are not the seal. Atoto, tell me what's wrong. Sakura stood in silence listening to the raw emotion in Sasuke's voice and watching the trembling form of Naruto. Naruto ni? Naruto's tears slowed as he glanced between his teammates and the river, I think you're right QB, they'll accept me. I'm gonna tell them good luck kid. Naruto stood up out of the river and channeled some chakra so that the seal appeared, you guys know my birthday right? Recognize anything weird that happened on the same day? Sasuke raised a brow at Naruto in confusion while Sakura thought on Naruto's meaning HMM I'm pretty sure it's on October 10th, the QB festival is held then so maybe Naruto pulled a prank at one of those and now wears a seal as punishment. I mean, he was only a baby at the time, so he couldn't have had anything to do with the actual QB attack, right? Sakura turned to the nervous Naruto, the QB festival has been on every year since you're. Naruto shook his head furiously and interrupted no I mean on my actual day of birth. Sakura then asked the QB attack? What does that have to do with you? Sasuke stared into Naruto's eyes and remembered all he could about the story of the QB attack, the fourth Hokage defeated the QB by sealing the QB away. We were told it was into a fish that's now kept in the pond at the Hokage Tower. We were lied to weren't we Naruto? Naruto nodded, there's no way in hell a fish would be able to contain the power of a Baijuu. You see only a human's chakra system would be able to handle the strain of any demonic chakra. But the QB isn't just any Baijuu, it's the strongest of the nine, so an adult's body wouldn't have the time to adjust to accommodate all the extra chakra. So, the fourth sealed it into, a baby, Naruto said hoping they would get it without him having to say the words. Sakura and Sasuke's eyes widened, Naruto? Were you that child? Sakura asked, halfway between fear and anger. Seeing Sakura's reaction, Naruto assumed she hated him now that she found out his secret. Yes, he whispered so quiet they barely heard it. The river was quiet after Naruto's affirmation, as if the world itself was waiting for the team's reaction. Naruto heard the splashing movement of someone moving close, he braced himself to be hit and rejected. Instead he felt arms wrap around him and another arm be put across his shoulders in a comforting gesture. Naruto opened his eyes to see a crying Sakura hugging his chest and a determined looking Sasuke patting his shoulder comfortingly. Guys? He asked in awe. Sakura sniffled, holding back a few tears I can't believe it, both of you have had to deal with so much in your lives and my only worry has been about my looks. She let out a small sob as Naruto hugged her back. 
Atoto. Naruto looked at Sasuke's determined face. The villagers, they only see you as the fox don't they? Naruto nodded biting his lower lip, yeah, he burst into tears holding his family tightly. Sasuke stood up, pulling Naruto with him. We'll show them Naruto, you're a hero. When our dreams are achieved, you will be who we thank. We'll show them you're not some demon. Turning to Naruto who was looking up at him hopefully, they will see the truth Naruto. Get up. We need to get stronger and this is the first step. Sakura stood up next to Sasuke nodding, come on Nisan, she said with a smile. They reached their hands down towards him while he stared at them in awe. Naruto wiped his tears away and took their outstretched hands. With them standing together in the shallow water, the group hugged for a few moments. After a few minutes, Naruto felt a little awkward so mumbled the first thing that came to mind to diffuse the seriousness of the situation. So Aniki, does your perverseness for Sakura and Nichin mean you two are finally gonna be together? Sasuke tensed for a moment before stepping away from the hug, his eyebrow twitching in irritation at Toto, shut up or I'll burn you. Naruto giggled nervously, he he seriously? A fireball hit his closed shirt that was thrown on the shoreline. Okay. I'm sorry Aniki. Sakura put a hand on the angered Sasuke and the slightly scared Naruto. Guys, we really should get back to training. At the mention of training, Naruto jumped on top of the water in excitement. Yeah. If we finish this then Sensei's gonna teach you as something awesome, Naruto yelled pointing at the sky for some reason. Sakura stepped onto the water next to him, Naruto, you do realize you're standing on the water right now don't you? Naruto looked down at his feet and realized him and Sakura were standing on the water, not in it. Yada, he yelled in excitement. Sakura giggled at his antics and looked over to Sasuke, who was standing on the water, but kept wobbling on his unsteady feet. Sasuke-kun, do you need some help? Sasuke looked up at her and Naruto with a bit of embarrassment, that would be appreciated Sakura-chan, for a prodigy I sure seemed to have abysmal chakra control, he said focusing on his chakra output. Sakura stood next to Sasuke and held his hand to steady him, better? She asked with a blush. Sasuke nodded, yeah, I just can't seem to be able to spread the chakra properly. Sakura frowned in thought, how can we help him with this? I got it. Hey Sasuke-kun, just use your Sharingan to see how we do it and copy the flow. Sasuke shook his head, no, I swore I wouldn't steal techniques from my comrades, he said trying to find the right flow of chakra. Sakura yelled to Naruto, hey Naruto, do you mind helping Sasuke-kun perfect the water walk? Naruto jumped over, landing with a splash, of course not, what do you need me to do Ne-chan? Sakura answered, do you mind if he watches your chakra with his Sharingan so he can copy the regulation? Naruto smiled at them both, not at all. Go ahead Aniki. Sasuke smiled back at Naruto, well I guess if they say it's alright. Okay, go for a run Atoto. Sasuke focused the necessary chakra to his eyes, Sharingan. Chapter 8, Wave Mission Part 2. Up you get. Z z z z z z z z z z z z z z z One more chance Naruto. Z, z z z z z z z z Time's up, Kakashi said while grabbing the side of Naruto's bedroll and throwing him from its warmth. Ah. Smack. Naruto pulled his face from the wall to see Kakashi standing next to where his bedroll was. Sensei what was that for? Naruto asked while rubbing his sore face. Kakashi I smiled, you didn't hear me the first time, so I woke you up, he said walking from the room. Pausing at the door, Kakashi turned to Naruto Sasuke said that the three of you have something to show me, I'm guessing one of you has finished the water walk? That's outstanding for a fresh genin to grasp the concept let alone do it, it was probably Sakura, he mumbled before leaving. Smirking, Naruto pulled on his clothes and jumped out the window. Landing right in front of Kakashi who didn't even flinch and Tazana who screamed in shock. Don't scare the client Naruto, Kakashi scolded as he walked towards the river the Genin had trained at the day before. Naruto, who was still smirking, ran past his sensei to meet up with the others before Kakashi got there. Kakashi closed his eye and chuckled at Naruto's enthusiasm, maybe they all made some progress? Although that is unlikely, I took me two days just to be able to walk on a still lake. I doubt they could balance properly on a flowing river. He thought as Tazana and himself stepped around a boat shed to the wharf that blocked part of the river from sight. Whoa, that must be harder than walking right Kakashi-san? They make it look super easy, Tazana said grabbing Kakashi's attention. Kakashi looked up expectantly and switched to being bug-eyed instantly. 
Sasuke lay casually on top of the water, perfectly dry and chewing on a blade of grass while watching the clouds. Sakura lay on her stomach, looking down at the fish swimming below them. And Naruto, who only just reached his friends, sat down between them guys, Kakashi sensei is here, he wanted to know what we had to show him. Sasuke glanced over at Kakashi and waved, what's next? He asked while Sakura and Naruto grinned at him. Kakashi stood in silence for a moment, staring at his team. What the hell? I could understand Sakura understanding the walking part already, but the other two? How? And how are they doing it so naturally? Finally snapping out of his daze, Kakashi asked how? Sakura tilted her head as if acting innocent, it's not that hard sensei, we had the walking part down in a few minutes. We spent the rest of the day talking and sparring on the water to increase our control. Not hard at all, she said with a prideful grin. Naruto cheered, we're just that good sensei, now what's this new special training you picked out for us? Kakashi just stood there quietly for a while, um I think we broke him, Naruto said after a full minute of silence. Tazuna stepped up, sorry guys but I was hoping someone came with me while I worked on my super bridge? You know, the whole reason I hired you? Hearing that snapped Kakashi out of his days, right, I'll come with you Tazuna. These three are gonna train on something a little special, usually senior Chunin or beginning Jonin start this training but I think you guys can handle it, he said creating a shadow clone and passing it a small pile of papers from his pouch. This handsome fellow will take care of explanations Kakashi said gesturing to his clone, which replied. Why, thank you, you're not hard on the eyes either. Kakashi nodded to the team and turned to Tazuna, let's get going, the faster you finish the bridge the faster we can go home. Tazuna nodded and walked off with Kakashi behind him, leaving the clone to its devices. It turned to the team and asked, what do you guys know about chakra elements? Sakura was about to answer when the clone interrupted, wrong, all of you. Sakura scowled at the clone, if you were gonna say that then why did you ask? She queried. The clone I smiled, I like the sound of my voice. Now, a chakra element is which element of the world a person's chakra is naturally more suited to use. It is easy to learn more than one element's jutsu, but you won't be able to master that other element unless you develop a secondary affinity for it. Got me so far? The clone asked. The team nodded and Sasuke said, so it's likely that if my affinity isn't fire, I have may have a secondary for it already? Just like Naruto and his earth jutsu? Clone nodded, exactly right. The clone held out the slips of paper to the genin, this paper can determine what type you guys are, let me show you. Clone sent a small amount of its chakra into the paper, it immediately crumbled and a corner burned away while another turned to dust. This means my main affinity is lightning, and I have a small secondary affinity for fire and earth. This is natural for Jonin to have at least two, sometimes three and extremely rare. 4. Your turn Sasuke. Sasuke channeled a small amount of chakra into the paper, half crumbled, while the other half burst into flames. So I got the same as you sensei? Sasuke asked. The clone shook its head, it seems that lightning was your natural affinity, but you've increased your fire affinity to match that of the lightning. It's not unheard of, but it is rare for someone your age. It turned to Sakura. Your go, Sakura. Sakura nodded and channeled chakra into her paper, it burst into flames but the very edge turned to dust before they set a light fire, right sensei? Clone I smiled, yep, you have a fire affinity, this is the most common in the land of fire, it also appears you naturally have an earth secondary, that's quite rare. Naruto, you're up next. Naruto nodded and sent his chakra into the paper, it was a shocking outcome. The paper split in half and one side turned to dust and the other got wet. Um sensei? Naruto asked. Clone stared in shock, that can't be right, this implies you have wind as a main affinity. Which is extremely rare itself, and a secondary for both water and earth they all seem to be pretty even as well. I could understand where the earth came from given you efficiency with the headhunter, but water? It gave Naruto another piece of paper, try again. Naruto channeled chakra again, only to receive the same result. Well I guess it's true. You're still the most unpredictable ninja, the two of the least common chakra type in fire country and a powerful earth. I wonder how. Naruto appeared a little anxious, that's when the Kyubi shared its opinion. Maybe the earth is from Mizuki, and the water is from Naomi? She does originate from water country. Naruto thought back, that must be it. Wow I get their affinities as well? Sweet. He was brought out of his thoughts when Sakura said, I wonder if the Kyubi has a different elemental affinity entirely? or if it's the cause for the other affinities? 
Clone turned to Sakura in shock, why would you ask about the QB Sakura? It's long gone. Naruto spoke quietly, I kinda told them yesterday sensei, I'm not in any trouble am I? Clone stared at Naruto shocked, before glancing at the unsurprised looks of the other two. No Naruto, you'll be fine. Me on the other hand, well I'm sure the Hokage will scold me for letting you just blab an S-class secret to anyone. They're not just anyone sensei, they're my team. Sakura interrupted them at this point, can we test if the QB gave Naruto more affinities? She asked. Naruto turned to Sakura, I've never channeled its chakra before, I'm not sure I could do it. Sasuke put his hand on Naruto's shoulder, didn't you say you could talk to it? If you ask permission I'm sure it won't mind. Before Naruto could reply, the QB spoke to him through their link sure kit, I'll give you a tiny amount. I'll pull it back once some has gone into the paper. And so it began. His whisker marks became much more pronounced on his face, and his teeth poked out from his mouth. The last change was his pupils becoming slit, but staying blue. The clone, seeing the changes, gave Naruto a piece of paper. Naruto quickly pushed some chakra into the paper. What happened was, well weird. Everyone watched as the paper disintegrated, and in its place a visible piece of red chakra remained in the shape of the paper. Clone hummed getting the team's attention, seems the fox doesn't have a specific affinity. But it does seem to have control over pure chakra manipulation. That would come in handy with non-element attacks. It explains why you grasp chakra control exercise quickly after understanding what you needed to do. Naruto looked on in shock as the chakra dissipated. Cool. He summed up simply. The clone I smiled at the team which was looking at him curiously. I'll show you each the first step in training needed to awaken your affinity to its maximum from our village. Everyone, grab a leaf. This is how I erred. Naruto complained dropping the leaf he was trying to cut in half with only his chakra. Sakura wiped the sweat from her head, I know Naruni, you've said that every two minutes for the last hour, she said as her leaf dried out, yes finally something, she yelled in triumph. Naruto looked over to Sasuke who was trying to electrocute his leaf with only his chakra. You got anything Iniki? HN. That's what I thought. Sakura looked between the boys and sighed, this is gonna take longer than the water walking. It had been a week since Team 7 arrived at Tazana's house and the Genin had spent every day trying to make progress with the elemental training. Sasuke made an amazing breakthrough on the second day of elemental training, the fourth day spent at Tazana's. He managed to electrocute the leaf out of existence when he rubbed the chakra together and used the friction for the first spark of electricity. He fed it more and suddenly, the leaf was nothing but a black patch on the grass. Kakashi then gave Sasuke the second exercise, to char a branch by launching a lightning arrow from his fingers from five feet away. He's having some difficulty making the electricity last after leaving his hand. Sakura swapped to earth chakra training since she found fire much too difficult, she managed to grind the leaf into dust with only her chakra on the third day of training. Having seen this, Kakashi set her on the second task. Sakura had to channel her chakra through the ground and crush a stone five meters away. She was now able to grind it down to half its size, but couldn't seem to crush it. Naruto had barely managed a cut in the leaf by this time, and he only just managed to cut the leaf all the way through half of the time by the time the week was over. Kakashi woke up with a jolt, every night he had sent a shadow clone to spy on the bridge until he got there. It was just dispelled by Kubi Kiri Bocho. Shit, he yelled as he jumped out of his bed roll. He quickly yelled, Team. Emergency protocol too. The team, who were asleep throughout the house all heard his yell and jumped awake. Sakura ran to Tsunami's room to check on her while Naruto ran to Inari's, Sasuke activated his Sharingan and scanned around the house for any chakra signals while Kakashi ran to check on Tazana. Kakashi opened the bedroom door only to find it empty, double shit. Naruto and Sakura ran towards Kakashi's position. Inari and Tsunami are safe, still in their rooms. Sensei. Tazana is outside. Walking towards the bridge, but there are two samurai coming up behind him, Sasuke yelled from downstairs. Kakashi's eye widened and jumped through a second story window in Tazana's direction. Seeing the two samurai about to kill Tazana, Kakashi sent Chakra to his feet and pushed the full distance in less than a second. Being unable to effectively take out both samurai at this speed, Kakashi focused on Tazana. He leapt between the two samurai just as one swung for Tazana. This is gonna hurt, he thought as he pushed Tazana forward earning a large but shallow slash across his back. Gah, he shouted in pain. The samurai looked shocked at the appearance of Kakashi, 
but quickly took action and tried to kill him. Quick! Kill the ninja and grab the bridge builder. One samurai said. The other samurai was about to answer when Sasuke's blade plunged through his neck, killing him instantly. Hearing the now dead samurai fall to the ground, the first samurai turned around. Only to come face to face with a set of claws that plunged into his neck and ripped out his jugular. Kakashi got up nursing his wound, this isn't good. Sakura, take Tazana back to his house and hide the family in the shelter. It will hold up against any half-rate samurai or thug. Go now. And hurry back to the bridge, we may need the backup. Naruto, Sasuke, with me. Kakashi ordered before turning and running towards the bridge at a quick pace. Sakura pulled Tazana to his feet, let's hurry Tazana-san, she said pulling him back to his house. Tazana blinked in shock at what just happened, uck all right, I think I'm gonna blow super chunks. They disappeared into the distance as the boy sprinted towards the bridge. Arriving at the bridge, Kakashi saw exactly what he was hoping to avoid. All the workers were either unconscious or dead, and an overly thick mist covered the bridge. Triple shit, Zabuza's back, just as he said this, the three of them had to jump to the side as I Shuriken flew through the area they were inhabiting moments before, and he brought back up. Zabuza and the fake hunter nin stepped out of the mist, hello Kakashi, brats. Bout time you showed up, Zabuza said with a sneer. Kakashi took a fighting stance, Naruto, Sasuke. I have to trust you two can take down Zabuza's sidekick. Can you do it? Naruto nodded with a grin while Sasuke just grunted an affirmative. They're all yours Haku, Zabuza said with a grin. The now dubbed Haku ran off to the right side of the bridge, the boys follow after him. Now Kakashi, let's get started, Zabuza yelled while drawing his blade, and disappearing into the mist. TCH, no choice then, mumbled Kakashi as he got into a defensive position, the mist shrouding around him. Please surrender, it does not please me to kill, Haku said from behind his mask. Sasuke smirked and activated his Sharingan, just try it, no way are we giving up, he said settling into an offensive taijutsu stance. Haku sighed and closed his eyes, I guess I have no say in the matter. It's what Zabuza-sama wants so I will do it. Hearing movement, Haku opened his eyes and jumped back to dodge Sasuke's punch. He looked over to where Naruto was only to see him gone. Basic tactic, now the other will attack from behind me. Haku turned expecting to see Naruto mid-attack, he wasn't there. Got you. Haku turned back to see the ball of Sasuke's weapon flying at his midsection. Haku moved to jump out of the way when he felt hands grasp his ankle. Looking down he saw Naruto sticking halfway out of the ground with a smirk on his face. Slam! The ball crunched into Haku's stomach, knocking the wind out of him and launching him from Naruto's grasp. Naruto popped up next to Sasuke, this isn't as hard as we thought it would be Ayaniki? Sasuke pulled his weapon back to him and started twirling the blade over his head, I think we're only just getting started. As Sasuke said this, Haku rose back up onto his feet holding his ribcage. If I didn't reinforce my body with chakra, that blow would have done more than break two of my ribs. No more games. Haku began running through hand signs. Seeing this, Naruto ran forward while shooting bone bullets at him, trying to stop the jutsu. Haku stopped his hand signs and jumped up over the attack, he spun in mid-air and threw a hand full of senbone at Naruto's head. Naruto looked up to see the weapons about to impale him. At that moment, Sasuke's blade flew over Naruto's head knocking away all the senbone. Haku looked at Sasuke in irritation as he landed between Naruto and Sasuke. You two are very talented. Unfortunately, I have to end this now. Haku made six hand signs before the boys could stop him, hidden jutsu, demonic ice mirrors, he exclaimed, trapping them in a prison made of ice mirrors. Naruto and Sasuke moved back to back, what now Aniki? Naruto asked. Sasuke analyzed the situation, if he's just gonna start chucking senbone at us, we're in luck. Naruto raised a brow, how is that lucky in any way? Sasuke twitched in irritation, just activate your bone armor. With my Sharingan I should be able to dodge his attacks. Haku stepped into one mirror and appeared in all of them, Sasuke twitched again as Naruto asked, still reckon you can dodge? Haku started showering the boys with senbone, Naruto just stood still letting the senbone pierce his clothing and skin before bouncing harmlessly from the bone underneath. Sasuke, using his Sharingan was able to keep track of Haku's movements and was dodging almost all of his strikes. Haku stopped his first wave of attack in shock, how are these Genin able to withstand my attacks? It's impossible. 
Naruto smirked, Hey Sasuke, I got a way to break out of this jutsu. Sasuke looked at Naruto, with only three sendens sticking out of his body, stop talking and start doing then. Naruto flew through hand signs. Seeing this, Haku threw Senbone hoping to stop the jutsu before it could begin. They just bounced off of the armor again. Shit. Haku thought in frustration. Naruto finished his hand signs and spat a glob of mud under his and Sasuke's feet, earth style, mud wall. An absolutely huge wall rose out of the ground, lifting Naruto and Sasuke towards the mirror at the top of the dome at impossible speeds. Sasuke passed the weight of his weapon to Naruto and they both jumped off opposite ends of the rising wall, the chain was grasped by the wall and pulled the two up alongside it as it broke through the ice jutsu. Shatter. The mirror shattered under the tremendous force and the wall kept growing, carrying Naruto and Sasuke out of the death trap. They flipped back to their starting position between Haku, and Kakashi and Zabuza's battle. Haku's jutsu collapsed and he appeared stumbling out of it holding his ribs and breathing heavily. Using his Sharingan, Sasuke could see the amount of chakra in Haku's body was nearing its minimum. Only a little longer till we outlast him Atoto. Naruto saw a flash of pink in the mist behind Haku's form. He smirked at Sasuke, I don't think we need to try and outlast him. Haku looked behind the boys and saw something that scared him. Zabuza was trapped in place by a pack of dogs and Kakashi taunting Zabuza. No. I can't let Zabuza be killed. Haku was about to charge past the overconfident looking boys when he felt something sharp carve through his back, ripping out his spine. With his last bit of strength, Haku turned in shock to see Sakura swinging her sharp claws towards his head. Zabuza. He wheezed with his last breath. Do you give in Zabuza? Kakashi said. Not by a long shot, Zabuza said as a water clone appeared from the mist and kicked the dogs away. Damn it, Kakashi said as he charged to confront Zabuza in combat again. The water clone charged Kakashi in a kamikaze attack, as Zabuza disappeared into the mist again. It collapsed into water as a blade connected to a chain busted through its chest. You alright sensei? Sakura asked as she and Sasuke landed beside him. Kakashi nodded, good work you too, where's Naruto? Sasuke smirked and pointed down, where do you think? A yell of pain was heard from the mist as it started to lift, Zabuza stumbled into sight with his right arm now a bloody stump, ending above the elbow. Naruto appeared out of the ground, holding one of his shuriken, one of its blades covered in blood. The team was about to move in for the kill when clapping was heard, the mist finished lifting and suddenly a full battalion of thugs were visible. Gato stepped out of the crowd and looked at the ninja, HMM, he may be lacking in limbs at the moment but he is still an A-rank ninja. Better play it safe Zabuza, I've got your backup. Get them boys, he yelled causing the thugs to charge forward at the ninja. Kakashi stood in front of his squad, Naruto, can you finish off Zabuza? His main sword arm is gone, thanks to you, and because of me he has no chakra. So personally, I think you could. Do you think you can? Naruto nodded with a confident smirk, sweet, if I defeat him I can absorb him. That sword would be a great addition to my skills. Sure thing sensei, can I keep the sword? Kakashi I smiled at him, as long as you take care of him, do what you want, Sasuke lead us off. Sakura, with me. He spoke. Making hand signs Sasuke spat a fireball at the oncoming thugs, burning about half of them to death in the one attack. Let's go, Sakura yelled as the three ran at the remaining thugs. Naruto turned to Zabuza as the mist ninja was just climbing to his feet, holding his sword in his left arm. I'm gonna kill you brat, he yelled, charging in a blind fury. Naruto waited till the last moment and sunk underground, dodging the attack. Zabuza's sword got stuck in the ground. Naruto popped up behind Zabuza and stabbed his shuriken into Zabuza's left shoulder. Eh he screamed in rage, turning to kick Naruto in the head, Naruto barely ducked in time to dodge while weaving a few hand signs. Naruto leapt at Zabuza and grasped his head, soul drain, he said calmly staring into the stunned Zabuza's eyes. Zabuza screamed in pain as his body was sucked into Naruto through his palm. Dot. Dot. Dot Naruto rose to his feet, suppressing the second part of the jutsu. I did it, I have an A-rank shinobi at my disposal. Naruto looked over to the other battle to see Sakura slashing through the last thug and Kakashi stabbing Gato in the neck. Guess that's it. Naruto kicked Zabuza's clothing over the edge of the bridge and stumbled over to Zabuza's sword and picked it up with some difficulty, it being much heavier and larger than he was. Sasuke, 
Sakura and Kakashi walked over to Naruto and picked him up. You get him? Kakashi asked. Naruto smirked, yep, one bone bullet through the skull and he fell off the bridge. He's not coming back this time, he said as Sasuke picked up Zabuza's discarded headband. Sakura smiled, so, mission success? She asked Kakashi. He turned and smiled back, yep, once the bridge is done we can go home. The team grinned widely and headed back to Tazana's house to dress their wounds after the long harsh battle. The team sat around the dinner table with Tazana and his family. Even though Sasuke and Kakashi had bandages on, the whole table seemed to be a buzz of life. Then, I grabbed the sword as my own. I think I deserve this prize, after all he was a jonin, Naruto said finishing his retelling of the fight from his point of view. Inari looked on in awe at the ninja, did you guys really do all that? Is Gato really gone? He asked with hope in his voice for the first time the ninja had heard. Kakashi turned to the boy, got rid of him myself kid. Inari's eyes suddenly teared up and his face broke out into a huge smile. We're free. Grandpa. Mom. It's over, he yelled in excitement, laughing. Tsunami smiled and hugged her cheering son. Tazana soon joined in the family hug. It was a beautiful moment. Can we eat now? Naruto asked completely shattering the mood. Tsunami stood up in shock, oh yes of course, feel free to dig in. Taking the invitation, Team 7 ate a more than modest amount of food. Inari stepped away from his grandpa's arms and over to the table, thank you all so much. You guys really saved the whole village. Sasuke smirked and said, it's nothing, we were just doing our job. Tazana walked up and put his hands on Sasuke's shoulders, it doesn't matter. You guys stepped beyond what I had asked you to do, thank you for everything, he said with a deep bow towards the ninja. Kakashi laughed and placed a comforting hand on Tazana's shoulder, we thank you for letting us stay with you, and we accept your thanks as well. Please, let's sit down and finish dinner? He asked politely. Tazana sat next to him, sounds super. Tsunami, pass the meat. Everyone laughed loudly at Tazana's exuberance, the happy celebrations lasted late into the night. You really have to go so soon? A teary Inari asked the Genin of Team 7, along with a group of kids from the town. Sakura smiled and bent down to Inari's height, sorry Inari-kun, but as ninja we have to return to our village. Sasuke nodded and patted a nearby child on the head, next time we get a mission in the land of water we'll visit again okay? Now stop crying, it's your turn to protect the village. This made a lot of the boys in the group stand up tall grinning at the group. A little girl pulled on the leg of Naruto's pants as he looked over the edge of the bridge, his new sword sitting across his back. Naruto-kun, I'll miss you, she said sadly. Naruto turned to the girl and picked her up, don't be sad. You'll see us again, I promise, he said while spinning her in the air. The girl was giggling as she spun around, Naruto put her down and she smiled up at him. Thanks Naruto-kun, we'll see you later. Remember you promised. Naruto grabbed Sasuke's arm and Sakura's hand. I won't forget, come on guys we need to go, Kakashi already left, he said gesturing to the disappearing form of Kakashi. The three turned and starting running together to meet up with their sensei while waving to the people of Wave. What should we name the bridge father? Tsunami asked standing next to Tazana behind the group. Tazana smiled and said, the great bridge of hope, and we'll mark Team 7's names into the tower Naruto made for us he said gesturing to a large wall sticking up halfway across the bridge. The children broke out into cheers, and the people of Wave walked back to their village with smiles on their faces. The team caught up to Kakashi, Sensei. Let's get moving, Naruto yelled. Kakashi looked to his left to see his team jumping into the trees and speeding past him. Kakashi I smiled, a race is it? He thought before sending Chakra to his feet and pushed off to catch up to his team. I hope they don't think they can outrun me they'll be in for a disappointing surprise. He thought as he sped past his team. Come on guys, keep up, he said while looking over his shoulder. The Genin smiled and sent Chakra to their feet as well, pushing to meet with their sensei and towards their home. Chapter 9, Return Home, Serious Training, New Techniques and Interesting Meetings. Mission Complete Hokage-sama, although there were some, complications. Saluted Kakashi upon their entrance to the Hokage's office. Sarutobi raised his head and looked at the team, he was happy to see their smiling faces. But the small amount of bandages did cause a little concern for him. Sarutobi looked to Kakashi, who was I smiling at him. What were these complications Kakashi-kun? He said tiredly. Kakashi scratched the back of his head, oh, 
Nothing much, just a fight with a rank missing Nin Zabuza Momochi and a high Chunin level ice wielder by the name of Haku. Not to mention the Demon Brothers, he said trailing off. Sarutobi stared at Kakashi in shock before glancing at the team again and noticing Kubikiri Bocho across Naruto's back and three scrolls in Sasuke's possession. What? His yell reverberated through the office and out into the village, shaking windows. Naruto picked at his ear, it's cool Gigi, Sasuke and I dealt with the demon brothers, Sakura took out the ice nin, and the whole team took out Zabuza. Plus, Sasuke and I took major steps into following our dreams. Sarutobi stared at the Genin in shock before taking action. Kakashi. I want a full report on the mission starting from the moment you left the gate. Every last detail, okay? Kakashi just nodded, Team 7, you won't be having another C rank for a long while. I want you each to have a week of from mission detail, you can start with a couple of Ds next week before moving back on to C ranks. Any questions? Kakashi grasped the Hokaye's attention, um yeah, we'll take the break in the few D ranks. But I can honestly say these kids are prepared for the Chunin exams. So can they enroll in the next exams? He asked. Sarutobi was about to deny the request when he thought about what the kids just accomplished, they did manage to take out two C-rank missing ninjas, what sounds like a B-rank ninja, and one of the legendary swordsmen of the mist, though mentally they may not be ready for the actual promotion, they could easily survive the exams. Maybe they'll surprise me. Sarutobi looked over the team and said, request accepted, I'll give you the forms when you hand in your report. Go and rest you three, it's late. Hi Hokage-sama slash Gigi the team said before walking out the office. As the team got to the bottom of the stairs, Kakashi turned to them. Alright guys, we'll have tomorrow morning off. But I want you guys at our training field at 2 o'clock, I will have some surprises waiting for you, Kakashi said looking up at the rising moon, it's late. Go home and get some rest, see you later. And with poof of smoke Kakashi was gone. Sasuke turned and started walking towards the back of the Hokage tower, I'm gonna turn in these bodies in Zabuza's headband. See what I get for them. See ya tomorrow, he said holding up three scrolls and a headband as he left. Sakura turned to Naruto, good night Naruto ni kun, see ya tomorrow, she said before sending Chakra to her feet and skated down the street in a pink and red blur. Naruto sighed to himself then smiled, guess I'm off to bed, then I can fully absorb Zabuza and learn his moves and stuff. I wonder if Kyuubi san will eat his negative emotions like he did Mizuki's. With that thought in mind, Naruto jumped across the rooftops to his house. Landing at his front door, Naruto saw his door graffitied again. Die demon, burn in hell, monster. He read sadly. With a deep sigh, Naruto unlocked his door and entered his home. First thing he noticed was that his window had been smashed, thanks to the brick now sitting in the center of his room, the glass lay all over his room shard stabbing into furniture or just lying on the ground. Naruto just looked at the damage sadly before turning and walking out of his apartment. I'll deal with it tomorrow, for now I guess I'll just sleep in the park like I used to. With that sad thought, Naruto started walking towards the park near the Hokage Tower. Sasuke just exited the bounty hall holding a new briefcase which was filled with cash. I think I made the right choice with this. Now I can refurnish my family's house, he thought walking into the moonlight and heading on his way home. Just as he left the Hokage's compound, he saw Naruto walking towards the park around the corner. A Toto? I thought you'd be in bed by now. Sasuke watched curiously as Naruto stepped onto the footpath that winded through the park. Sasuke jogged over to Naruto, A Toto, why are you out here? He asked when he got close enough. His eyes widened in shock when he saw Naruto's saddened face, A Toto? He asked. Naruto sadly smiled at Sasuke, Hey Aniki, I just felt like sleeping at the park tonight. My house isn't exactly, inviting, at the moment, Naruto said looking down at his feet. Sasuke could feel the sadness pouring off of Naruto, he grabbed Naruto's arm and pulled him as he turned and started walking back towards the buildings of the village. Naruto looked at Sasuke curiously, where are we going Aniki? He asked sadly. Sasuke kept walking and didn't look back, all he did say was, home. Naruto just followed behind in confusion, letting Sasuke lead the way. The two arrived at Sasuke's house, he still lived in the Uchiha district but not in his family's old home. He lived near the Nakano shrine at the back of the district, Naruto, he said turning to him, you won't be alone anymore. The villagers wouldn't dare enter my district, so you will stay here with me. Okay? Naruto looked at Sasuke in shock, you'd let me stay with you Sasuke? He asked. 
Sasuke nodded and mumbled, I won't let my brother suffer alone. He pulled Naruto through the front door and they took off their shoes. I have the bedroom upstairs on the north side. There are three more you can choose from, I'm using the master bedroom as a storage room for my ninja tools and scrolls. We can move your things in tomorrow before sensei's meeting. Naruto nodded while tears started to pour from his eyes, thanks Aniki, he whispered quietly. Sasuke led Naruto upstairs where Naruto picked the room facing south, towards the Hokage monument. Can I have this one? He asked. Sasuke nodded, of course, there are bed sheets in the cupboard. Do you want help or? I got it Aniki, Naruto spoke walking towards the cupboard. Sasuke patted Naruto's shoulder and walked to his bedroom, if you need me, I'm right here okay? Yeah. Naruto stepped into his new room and looked around, it wasn't too large but it was definitely roomy, almost as big as his whole apartment. He walked towards the cupboard and pulled out a set of bed sheets. After setting the bed, Naruto lay looking out the window at the Hokage monument, thanks Aniki, he thought before falling asleep. Mindscape. Naruto walked into the cell room of his mindscape and waved to Naomi and Mizuki who were sitting on the roof of the small building. Mizuki pointed towards the Kyuubi's cage when Naomi wasn't looking. Naruto looked over to the cage to see an unconscious Zabuza lying under the Kyuubi's claw. He was a tad scared when he arrived here. Naturally he tried to cause some havoc, so I stopped him. Not so tough without that sword of his. Naruto walked over to Zabuza's form as Kyuubi lifted its claw up. Hey Q, can you eat his negative emotions like you did Mizuki? That way he'll be happy that someone like me is giving his sword a good name. Well, hopefully at least. He asked. Kyuubi's maw opened in an evil grin, of course kid. Thanks for the delicious meal. Naruto smiled back, while bending down to Zabuza molding the last hand sign. Ha, he yelled as he pulled Zabuza's essence out of his body, half of it forming his soul and the other half flowing into Naruto. He cut off the last of the jutsu to leave the negative emotions in the body. Here Kyuubi, he yelled as he kicked Zabuza's corpse into the air inside the cage. Kyuubi snapped its jaws shut on Zabuza and swished him around in its mouth before crunching down and then swallowing, sweet god, that man was filled with more hatred than most lower level demons. It's so delicious, Kyuubi said as it rolled onto its back and sighed in joy. Naruto laughed at Kyuubi's actions, gaining the attention of Mizuki again. You done Naruto? He asked. Naruto turned to Mizuki and gave him a thumbs up, yep all finished, he yelled. Mizuki smiled and let go of little Naomi's arm who had her eyes closed. She opened them and ran over to Naruto, embracing him in a hug. Are you okay? We watched what you did while you were awake on the screen. It was so dangerous, she said looking up to him. Naruto smiled down at her, it's my job Naomi-chan, I know what I'm doing while I'm out there. How are you finding it in here with your new dad? He asked with a smile. She grinned and ran back to Mizuki, jumping on the couch next to him. It's great. Towson and I spend all day watching the screen, playing and talking to Q-chan. I'm not a Chan. I'm a fucking demon. He says that a lot, she said giggling. Naruto was about to reply when he heard a groan, Uck, what the hell happened to me? The three turned on the couch to look at Zabuza's soul, which was just sitting up and looking around. Hey, Zabuza-san, Naruto said cheerily trying to make a connection with Zabuza. Zabuza turned and saw the kid that killed him and jumped to his feet about to attack in rage. When he realized he wasn't actually angry. I ask again, what happened? He said trying to be harsh to Naruto, but he just couldn't find it in him to do so. I absorbed you Zabuza-san, if I hadn't you would have died from either blood loss or one of my other teammates' hands, Naruto said matter-of-factly. Zabuza looked at Naruto as if he was frustrated, but unsure how to show it. Zabuza sighed and dropped his glare, and just asked Naruto plainly. So now what brat? Naruto smiled at Zabuza and waved him over to the couch, Zabuza walked over and sat down, looking curiously at Mizuki and Naomi. So Zabuza, Naruto said gaining Zabuza's attention. What do you remember since I absorbed you? Naruto's question baffled Zabuza, nothing kid, I only just woke up. Actually I seem to recall a fox or something, I dunno. You mean me, demon of the mist? Zabuza turned around to see the QB glaring down at him. Zabuza swallowed deeply, um yep. I guess that was you. Zabuza turned back to Naruto then glanced at the two on the couch, then back at Kyuubi, then Naruto again. Kid, what the hell are you? Naruto smirked, I am Genin, 
Naruto Uzumaki, Konoha's best assassin, Jinchuriki of the QB and only user of the soul drain technique. Nice to meet you, welcome to my mind. Zabuza stared at Naruto for a few moments, I need a drink. Mizuki laughed, yeah I feel like that every day since becoming a part of this kid, he said pointing to Naruto with his thumb. Naruto raised a brow, and focused. Suddenly a table appeared with a bottle and two saucers on it, I don't really know what alcohol tastes like, so it'll taste like whatever you imagine it to be. Zabuza stood up and poured some for himself, taking the whole saucer in one go Zabuza sighed in relief. That hits the spot. So brat, what happened to my sword? It is legendary for a reason you know. Naruto smiled and said, I'm gonna start training with it tomorrow, I'll receive your muscle memories when I wake up, giving me as much knowledge about how to use the blade as you had. Zabuza hummed, and sat back on the couch, you better become famous and represent my blade with pride. When you wake up, channel a decent chunk of chakra into through the handle. You'll be in for a big surprise, Zabuza said with a chuckle. Kit, it's morning Sasuke just knocked on your door. The QB said interrupting the conversation. Naruto looked back at the screen and saw the sunlight on the back of his eyelids and heard the knocking through the speakers. Okay, guess I'm off. See you guys later, Mizuki'll give you a small bit of control. You should be able to make any drink appear, and form some things, Naruto said, jumping from the roof and running down the hallway out of his mind. Atoto, are you up? Sasuke said pushing the door open just as Naruto sat up. Yeah Aniki, he shouted with a smile. Sasuke looked at Naruto and saw his smile, it was contagious. Sasuke entered and sat on the end of the bed, I was thinking, Sakura-chan said she was trying to find a place to move out to right? Well we have two extra rooms here, what do you think? He said while Naruto got up and grabbed his new sword. Naruto turned to Sasuke and smiled, I think we have a three-step plan for the day. He replied. Sasuke raised a brow at Naruto's strange phrase. What do you mean? He asked. Naruto stretched as the two boys walked out of the room, Step 1, breakfast at Ichiraku's. Step 2, get all my stuff. Step 3, go to training and ask Nei-chan about it then. Sound good? Naruto asked as they reached the bottom of the stairs. Naruto turned to Sasuke, I mean, if you still want me here at least. Sasuke thunked Naruto on the head, stop going all emo, that's my thing. Let's hurry up, we got a lot to do today. The two boys headed outside as Sasuke wrapped his kuza around his chest and Naruto was looking at the blade he still had to use two hands to use. What's up? Sasuke asked looking between Naruto and the sword. Naruto glanced at Sasuke and remembered Zabuza's words. I got this feeling, that the sword wants some of my chakra. Sasuke raised a brow at Naruto, did I hit you too hard? You talk to swords now? Naruto scowled at Sasuke and focused back on the sword, Sasuke sighed. Fine, channel your chakra and let's get going. Naruto nodded and channeled some chakra into the sword, what happened amazed both of the boys. The sword, which used to have a 10 foot tall blade and be 3 feet wide suddenly changed. It maintained its shape but became thinner, only about 1 foot wide now. The blade increased its length to 12 feet, and now the backside had 5 small spikes pointing out of it. Though the mass didn't seem to change at all. Whoa, Naruto said in shock. Sasuke activated his Sharingan to analyze the blade, it looks like the blade took your chakra to change its shape to suit your fighting style more. Guess it thinks you're much taller. Naruto frowned in thought, it must be because my fighting style is Zabuza's when it comes to sword fighting. But it made itself more speed capable because of my practice with the speed of a shuriken. Are the spikes from Naomi-chan? Naruto grinned hugely at the concept. Sasuke shook Naruto out of his daze, that was pretty awesome but maybe we should edit your three-step day plan a little bit. Naruto turned to Sasuke and raised a brow, what for? He asked as they began to walk out of the Uchiha compound. Sasuke gestured to the blade hanging across his shoulders. We should drop by Higurashi-san's shop and see if he can make a holster for that monster after breakfast, he said. Naruto smiled, that's a great idea Niki. Let's go, he yelled as he started running towards Ichiraku's ramen shop. Hey old man. One of everything. I skipped dinner and haven't had brekkie so let's start, Naruto said jumping onto a stool at the end of the bar and leaning his sword against the wall. Tuchi Ichiraku turned and welcomed his favorite customer, hello Naruto, how are, you? Is that a sword? He asked looking at Kubi Kiribocho. Sasuke sat on the stool next to Naruto, 
Yeah, it's from our latest mission right Aniki? Naruto said turning to Sasuke. He smiled at Naruto, then nodded at Tuchi. HN. He grunted. Hearing Naruto refer to Sasuke as his older brother, Tuchi's smile lit up his whole face. I see you found some more family Naruto? Naruto nodded, then the first rounds on the house, Tuchi said with a smile. Ayame walked out from the back and saw Naruto, Naruto-kun. Have you been? She said leaning over the counter and kissing his forehead. Naruto grinned up at her, Hey Nei chan I've been great. You want to meet my brother? This is Sasuke. Ayame looked at Sasuke and felt a blush travel over her face, Wow, he's certainly a cutie it's nice to meet you Sasuke-kun, what'll you two be having? She asked trying to hide her blush what am I thinking he's three years younger than me. Sasuke looked over the menu and decided on an order, large shrimp, thanks, he said looking into her eyes, is she blushing? He thought. Four large pork. And maybe you should get started on two bowls of miso for my desert, I'm starving, Naruto yelled interrupting the stare between Sasuke and Ayame. Ayame stood up straight and turned to her dad, one large shrimp and Naruto's usual, starting with pork today. Got it dad? She asked. Tuchi smiled widely, got it honey, now let's get cooking, he said throwing ingredients into the broth pot and stretching out the last of the noodles. Naruto nudged Sasuke, so what's going on between you and Sakura Nei-chan? He asked gaining the attention of Ayame, who was pretending she wasn't listening. Sasuke sighed, do we have to talk about this now? I don't even have a clue. I can't think about that yet, he said in frustration. Naruto raised a brow, why not Aniki? Sasuke glanced at Naruto from the corner of his eye then leaned closer, fine, I'll tell you. But you can't mention it to anyone. Okay? He whispered. Naruto picked up on the seriousness of Sasuke, and ducked closer yeah okay I promise, what's the problem? He loudly whispered back. Ayame wandered closer and began to pour some glasses of water to keep up the pretense of work. Sasuke sighed again, the council have declared that the clan restoration act be activated concerning the Uchiha clan, he said, causing Ayame to blush at the thought. Naruto sat up scratching his head, what's that Aniki? Sasuke frowned at Naruto, didn't you pay any attention at all in the academy? Naruto was about to respond when Sasuke cut him off. Never mind. Stupid question. This caused Naruto to frown, Mini. But seriously what is it? Sasuke sat up, feeling the seriousness dissipating. Letting Ayame hear much better. The CRA takes action when a clan with special jutsu or a bloodline is reduced to less than 10 people. The males of the clan may take up to four wives, and each wife must have at least two children. And at least one of them must be male. This continues until there are at least 12 males capable of having children. He explained. Naruto raised an eyebrow, so basically you need to find four girls that are willing to be with you and share you? Usually I'd say how ridiculous that is, but considering your hundreds of fangirls, they'll do anything you ask so why not some of them? He asked while Sasuke deadpanned at him. Atoto, I would rather die than let a fangirl be part of my family, Sasuke said completely serious. Naruto blinked in shock, that's a little harsh, why? Sasuke sighed and took a sip from his glass of water, the fangirls see me as Uchiha-sama. Why would I want a girl that doesn't even see me as Sasuke? He said staring into his water. Naruto patted him on the back, wanna make a list of possible girls? He said with a joking smile. The suggestion brought a smirk to Sasuke's lips, sure, you make one for me and I'll cross out those I'm completely against? See if we can find anyone, he said. Tuchi yelled, order up. Taking the attention of Ayame, who listened in on the whole conversation between Naruto and Sasuke. Not five seconds later, Ayame placed the boys' orders in front of them. Anything I can get you to? She asked glancing at Sasuke with a light blush on her face. Naruto, who was already a quarter of the way through his first bowl, said you got some paper and a pen Ayame ne chan. Ayame nodded and realized he was gonna write the list right now. She ripped a piece of paper from her receipt booklet and reached to grab a pen. Before giving it to Naruto, she quickly scrawled her own name about halfway down the page. Here you go Naruto-kun, she said. Naruto stopped eating for a moment and grabbed the offered items, he noticed Ayame's name on the list and looked up at her. She smiled to him with a blush and glanced at Sasuke, who was enraptured with the food. Naruto's grin lit up his face while he nodded, alright Aniki, I'll start your list right now, 
he said writing a few names on the paper around hers. Sasuke turned to Naruto, a noodle hanging out of the corner of his mouth. Hmm? He murmured before swallowing. Now? He asked with the noodle still hanging from his mouth without his knowledge. Naruto smiled and inhaled half of the food in his bowl before replying, Yeah now, don't you worry about it okay? It'll be ready before the end of this training break, he said putting it into his pocket. Um Sasuke-kun? He turned to look at Ayame, who was leaning over the counter. You've got um, she said looking at Sasuke's eyes then the noodle on his face. I've got it, she reached over and scooped the noodle off of his face and put it into her mouth with one finger while looking at him. Mmm, she hummed, overacting the deliciousness of the noodle before she swallowed. Sasuke stared into her eyes, his face holding a red hue. Delicious, she said returning the stare succeeding in looking seductive, before turning and walking to another customer who just sat down. Sasuke's gaze followed her movement, um Naruto? She's on the list. Thanks. That was delicious, Naruto yelled as they exited at Chiraku's. Sasuke looked back to see Ayame waving to him, come back soon, she said loudly. Sasuke smirked and nodded back to her before following Naruto down the road. Hey Atoto, he said grasping Naruto's attention. I know how much you like ramen, so how about we have breakfast there every morning? He finished. Naruto smiled hugely while chuckling, hey, Shuraniki. That way you can see Ayame Ne Chan every morning right? HN. Sasuke grunted out, irritated in Naruto's keen eye. How come you notice when other people are interested in each other but you can't see it when someone likes you? Sasuke mumbled in irritation. Naruto stumbled as the two were turning a corner, eh? Who likes me? He asked in shock. Sasuke raised a brow at Naruto, you seriously haven't noticed? Dear log you're thick, he said partway between amused and skeptical. Naruto jumped in front of Sasuke halting his progress, what do you mean Aniki? He whined. Sasuke smirked, tell you what, if your little stunt with this list is successful I'll give you a clue as to who it is. Naruto's eyes suddenly lit up in excitement, yeah. I'll find the best bachelorettes in town, he yelled a little too loud as many people started to look at the two as if they were crazy. Sasuke whacked Naruto on the head, Dobi. Don't yell out things like that. He walked past Naruto's and turned down the street towards Dan's ninja store. Naruto ran up next to him and rested his blade against his shoulder with one hand while rubbing his head with the other, that hurt Aniki. He whined. Naruto looked around and realized a lot of villagers were staring at him in fear instead of the usual hate-filled glares and a lot of ninja were staring at him either in awe or confusion and awe. Ni, Aniki? Why are people staring at us? Sasuke looked around and noticed the stares, he followed their gazes and realized everyone was staring at the sword. Oh right, every ninja would know about Zabuza's reputation with Kubikiri Bocho. Although I'm guessing the higher-up ninjas are noticing the differences between the two blades. I think the villagers are scared because the demon is in possession of such a massive weapon. How did we not notice this until now? They're looking at your new sword Atoto. It does stand out quite a bit, he said. Naruto looked at the blade slung over his shoulder, oh yeah, I think you're right about needing to get a holster or something Sasuke. People will notice this way too quickly. That's not a good thing for Konoha's number one assassin, he said with a smirk. Sasuke grunted as they arrived at Higurashi's ninja store. Let's see what we can do then, Sasuke said opening the door. Hearing the bell on the door ring, Dan turned towards the door seeing Naruto and Sasuke. Hey boys, back from your mission? So, what? Is that the Kubikiri Bocho? Wielded be Zabuza Momochi of the legendary Seven Swordsmen of the Mist? How the hell did you get it? He yelled in excitement leaping over the counter and staring at the blade. Naruto and Sasuke smirked at the weapons dealer, we killed him and split the winnings. Naruto answered nonchalantly. Dan stared at the two in awe, if you didn't currently have the blade in your possession I would never believe that but, here it is, he said in awe. Naruto looked up at Dan, actually I need your help with this, I was wondering if there was a way to seal it away while having it still easily drawn and keeping its weight so I can get used to it. He asked. Dan looked up, holding his chin in thought. Hmm, not that I know of. But I may have two or three things that will end up with the same result, follow me, Dan said walking back to the counter and returning behind it. The two boys followed him and listened for his explanation. Well, I could give you a partial sealing sheath for the sword. Though I'll need to get it modified to fit something to large. Usually they only hold a katana or something of the like, 
Dan said drawing his idea on a piece of paper for the boys, it'll look like about two feet long, and one foot wide. And when your sword is partially sealed in it, the handle will stick out, along with the start of the blade. I hope. He drew a small black rectangle with Kubikiri's handle sticking out the top, it'll absorb all the weight though, only weighing as much as about a couple of kunai. But I got a solution for that problem, Dan said as he stood up and walked over to a rack of bracelets. He picked up two from the top row and showed them to the boys, these are top class chakra weights, the first one you wrap around your wrists and the other goes around your ankles. They'll increase in your sleep if your body seems to have gotten used to the weight they are currently set as during the day. That way you won't be caught off guard during battle or something by the weights increasing. Dan put them on the counter so Naruto could pick them up and look at them. Dan continued, the only problem is that these seals malfunction if they come into contact with other seals, so we would have to move around your current sealing bracelets that hold your shuriken. Dan finished with a frown. Having a curious moment, Sasuke activated his Sharingan and looked over the seals in concentration. Whoa, he said quietly. He could see every individual stroke that was taken to draw the seal where the chakra was pushed into, he could see all the trigger points and in a second, his Sharingan had copied the seal flawlessly. Sasuke blinked and looked away, deactivating his Sharingan. Are you alright Sasuke? Dan asked. Sasuke nodded and asked, after Naruto's deal, can I buy any book you have on sealing? Especially if they have an image of the seal? Dan raised a brow, interested in seal's eye? Alright I'll set that up for you once we figure this out, he said gesturing to Naruto and his sword. Sasuke nodded, and while the other two were in a discussion on how to fix the problem. Sasuke activated his Sharingan and copied all the seals that were visible to him, his Sharingan recording and informing him. Explosive seal, chakra seal, chakra weight seal, partial storage seal, full storage seal, blood accessing seal, gravity seal, element seals, expansion seal, disintegration seal. A A A. Sasuke clutched his head and closed his eyes, deactivating his Sharingan. Naruto turned to Sasuke in shock, Aniki? He yelled in worry and grabbed Sasuke's hands Aniki. What happened? He asked as Sasuke stopped screaming. Sasuke took a few deep breaths and looked up at Naruto, I think I just discovered something, he said panting. Dan pulled the boys to their feet, are you alright? He asked in worry. Sasuke nodded, yeah, I think I owe you some money Higurashi-san. Considering I've purchased about 10 of your seals on accident, he said smirking a little at his new understanding of the intricate art of seals. Dan raised a brow, um these aren't my seals, I have no idea how to read or write seals. I just sell the stock. What are you talking about Sasuke? He asked. Sasuke stood on his own now, leaning against the counter. My Sharingan just copied a lot of seals, but copying all that so quickly, will it hurt for a moment, Sasuke said. Naruto stood in awe, the Sharingan can copy seals? He asked. Dan nodded in thought, well it can see chakra flow and perfectly memorize whatever it sees, so it makes sense I guess. Although I never heard of an Uchiha that used seals, he said, well I tell you what Sasuke, I'll just charge you for a standard ninja pack with a booster and sealing. Sound good? Sasuke nodded. I'm gonna have to send Jiraiya-sama a message about this when I send out the next order. Dan finished in thought. Naruto spoke up, oi, that's awesome and all but what are we gonna do about my weapon seals clashing with the weight seals? Naruto asked. Dan and Sasuke brought their attention back to Naruto's problem, I really don't know what to do Naruto, it's a hard one for sure, Dan said. Sasuke activated his Sharingan and analyzed the seals Naruto was fussing over, it seems that even though the weight seal can't be near the storage seal, the same doesn't apply to the two different storage seals. Why don't you place the seals that contain Naruto's shuriken on the actual holster that his sword will be partially sealed in? Sasuke finished, deactivating his Sharingan. Dan looked at Sasuke in shock, that could definitely work if what you said about the seals are true. Are you sure Sasuke? Dan asked. Sasuke smirked, I'm positive Higurashi-san, he said confidently. Higurashi smiled at Naruto and Sasuke, it seems like we have a solution, eh boys? He said. Naruto cheered, yada. Thanks Aniki, he said, his smile threatening to split his face. Alright, I'll make the sheath and apply the partial seal to it. Sasuke will you be able to create and write the storage seal to it for Naruto Shuriken? Dan asked while picking up Naruto's massive sword with a grunt. Sasuke nodded, easily Higurashi-san. Dan nodded after placing the sword on the counter, 
which only half of it even fit on. All right, I'll have this ready by tomorrow. Naruto you can buy the weights now and I'll hold on to your weapons if you'd like? Dan said. Naruto nodded still smiling, sounds great. This enough? Naruto said placing two full wads of cash on the counter. Dan's grin sparkled while he took the money, I guess you're paying for Sasuke as well today then? Um, sure I guess. This makes us even for when you draw my storage seal on the sheath right Sasuke? Naruto asked. Sasuke nodded, grabbing some ink, a brush and small notepad about the size of his palm. In that case, I'll take this as well. Dan nodded and said go ahead, remember to come back tomorrow for your sheath Naruto. Sasuke grabbed his new book and sealing utensils and then the boys ran out of the shop waving goodbye. Outside of the shop Naruto clasped his new weights on his wrists and ankles, huh? I don't feel any heavier, maybe these are faulty? He asked Sasuke. Sasuke activated his Sharingan and analyzed how the seals worked, you have to put chakra into them so they can analyze your body and set their weight according to what they find. A second burst of chakra and the weights lose all their weight. By the looks of things, the first time they increase will feel huge, but after that you'll barely notice the increase, he said, still feeling odd that he could tell all of that from just a glance. Naruto nodded in understanding, thanks for the info Aniki, he said and channeled chakra into the weights. Bam! And subsequently falling to his hands and knees, smacking his limbs solidly onto the ground. Ow! He simply stated while slowly climbing to his feet, shit, these are much heavier than my sword, uck this is gonna be hard he said slowly walking to keep up with Sasuke on their way to the training grounds. Sasuke walked slower to accommodate Naruto, you good? He asked. Grunting with every step, Naruto answered I guess so, although we can't take any pit stops on the way to training at this speed. Sasuke nodded, that's alright, when we make to the bridge I'll buy some food from one of the stalls. Don't worry I can catch up to you quite easily slowpoke, he said with a smirk. Let's get going then, Naruto shouted and tried to run, he didn't succeed, but at least he was moving at almost a normal walking pace now. Sweet, log, this, is, tiring. Naruto panted, now trying to jog and almost succeeding. Sasuke walked alongside now at a brisk walking pace, at least we finally caught up to that snail, he murmured, smirking at Naruto's expense as they walked onto the training field. Hearing them arrive, Sakura got up from where she was sitting and walked over to meet them. Hey guys, Naruni what's wrong? she asked seeing Naruto struggle to walk. Naruto smiled, just some new training weights Sakura ne. Sensei here yet? He asked. She looked at him as if he had grown a second head, is Sensei ever here on time when it's not a mission? She rhetorically replied. Sasuke nodded, maybe we should practice with our elemental manipulation till he gets here? He said. Naruto cheered while trying, and failing, to jump into the air. Yeah. That's a great idea he said. They each grabbed what they needed from around the training field and was about to get started when he had a thought, hey guys, why don't we check on our secondary elements? He asked distracting Sasuke and Sakura. Sasuke raised a brow at Naruto, why would we do that? It's meant to be harder than learning our main element, he said. Naruto nodded, his thought turning into a plan. Well I already know how molded earth chakra feels cause of my earth jutsus, so if I taught Sakura Ne a few of them it might help her grasp the last part of the second stage. Sakura smiled, that's a great plan Naruto, thanks, she said smiling. Sasuke picked up on what Naruto was thinking, and put it into a sufficient explanation so you think since I already know how fire chakra feels because of my jutsu, I should be able to mast it quicker? Naruto nodded energetically, yeah. That's it, he yelled in excitement. So the team started their new training, of Naruto teaching Sakura the proper hand signs needed for his jutsu, and Sasuke burning through a leaf with just his chakra. Kakashi arrive in a puff of smoke, just in time to be thrown into the air by an earth wall. What the f you? Smack! He was interrupted when he flew straight into the trunk of a nearby tree. Naruto and Sakura were too busy cheering at her success of the jutsu to notice Kakashi's appearance, but Sasuke did, so he jumped over to grate their sensei. Good afternoon sensei. You alright? He asked as he landed. Kakashi rolled onto his feet and nodded to Sasuke, yeah I'm good. I see you three are training pretty hard? Sasuke nodded and smirked at his sensei while picking up a leaf. It incinerated in his hand. It does seem that way sensei, what's next? He asked watching his teacher's stunned eye. 
Kakashi and Sasuke walked over to the tired-looking Sakura and slouched over Naruto. Well, 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 you two have really been going at it, eh? Kakashi said watching them. Yeah, Sensei, I can do both of Naruto's earth jutsu now. And I just managed the earth wall without hand signs. Sakura cheered while Kakashi's eye widened in shock. But how? You could only have done that if you mastered your element with the second step or had been doing the jutsu non-stop for months? Kakashi asked unbelievingly. Naruto explained, well after I taught Sakura Chan the earth wall, she knew how earth chakra felt. So it made it much easier for her, and now, he said gesturing to Sakura. She understood what he wanted and looked at the earth wall, channeling earth chakra to her foot. She stomped the ground and focused chakra towards the wall, which crushed in on itself as her chakra impacted it. Kakashi stared on in shock while thinking, Anko can't even crush a piece of earth that large with her earth chakra. This girl has some monstrous control. Sakura smiled at Kakashi, what now sensei? Kakashi snapped out of his funk and pulled out three scrolls, I got a two jutsu scrolls for each of you. Sasuke. Your first scroll has three fire jutsu, they are each a C rank, B rank and an A rank. Your second scroll contains a new genjutsu for you, and two lightning jutsu, one of which is of my own creation. Sakura. For you I have a scroll that holds a completely speed-based taijutsu style, and two ninjutsu that go with it. Your second scroll has three earth-style jutsu, a C rank and two A ranks. These will be chakra taxing, but with your control it wouldn't amaze me if you had them completely mastered by the end of the week. Naruto. We're gonna let Sakura focus on the earth-style techniques, I got you a water-style scroll and a wind-style. The water scroll has a C rank jutsu and two A ranks, but you have to finish water manipulation before you get that one. Unfortunately, Konoha doesn't often have wind jutsu users so there wasn't many I could choose from. But I still managed to get you three jutsu, the first two are C rank while the third is A rank. I can do all of these ninjutsu so feel free to ask me any questions alright? Kakashi finished with an eye smile. Naruto jumped to his feet, actually make it up finally being used to his weights, yada. This is gonna be the best training ever, he yelled while Sasuke smirked from beside him and Sakura grinned. Alright, let's begin. You only have just over a week till the exam so hurry it up, Kakashi said happily. The team began their training, confident in their success at the Chunin exams. Naruto's progress dramatically increased over the next week. Naruto did all the water manipulation techniques extremely quick, thanks to the instincts given to him by Zabuza. Two of the jutsu on the scroll were the water style, water clone jutsu and water style, water dragon jutsu, both of which Naruto had mastered thanks to Zabuza's memories. Naruto managed to learn the last jutsu water style, water wall in less than a day and mastered on the morning of the next day. Zabuza's memories also gave Naruto access to the hidden mist jutsu. Which only needed one hand sign anyway. His wind style jutsu took much longer to learn, with Naruto only managing to master one. The first C rank jutsu wind style, great breakthrough. The other two Naruto was able to do, but he still needed a one-handed hand sign for the other C rank wind style, upgrade blade and needed four hand signs for the wind style, vacuum sphere. Naruto picked up Zabuza's sword style immediately. When he got it back from Dan, he immediately loved the new setup and Sasuke's modifications. The sheath covered his back acting as a type of rear defense. It was a black rectangle with the handle of Kubikiri Bocho sticking out the top. The storage seal for his shuriken was in white and was large enough to cover the whole sheath, meaning it could hold much, much more. It currently was stocked with 40 giant shuriken and a bag that contained more sealing equipment for Sasuke, stocked with soldier pills in the team's tent. Sasuke learned every fire jutsu he was given and near mastered them. The C rank fire jutsu fire style, Spitfire was pure fire manipulation, and thus needed no hand signs. The other two fire style, Flame Beast and Fire style, Dragon Flame Bomb, he still needed hand signs for but he could do so extremely fluently. His genjutsu was ninja art, crucifixion. This genjutsu was disguised as an earth jutsu and made the target feel as though they were pinned to a crucifix that sprouted from the ground. His lightning jutsu were still at a basic level. He could activate the lightning armor just by channeling the chakra across his skin but he could only focus it on individual parts, and Sasuke could perform the chidori, but hasn't been able to hold its form while moving yet. Sasuke's sealing techniques had increased rapidly, he could now write any of the seals he knew in less than 20 seconds. And he had knowledge of every basic seal and many advanced seals, though he didn't know any great seals or master seals. Looking at the fox's seal still baffled him, 
and gave him a headache when looking with his Sharangan. Sakura's results were astounding, she seemed to be a natural with earth jutsu, the earth style, mud flow river was used to slow down the opponent while speed up the user's head on charge. Sakura mastered the earth style, essence of stone, and in conjunction with her chakra skating technique Sakura completely nullified the weaknesses of the jutsu. Her last elemental jutsu, the earth style, earth spears technique was her last resort jutsu and she still needed six hand seals of the original 14 to use it. Sakura's new taijutsu style was basically, incredible. It focused on closing in on an opponent and releasing numerous high-impact blows in seconds. This combined with Sakura's other techniques made her a juggernaut in taijutsu. Sakura's two non-element jutsu were the shunshine, which further increased her speed and acted as a near-instant movement technique, and the ninja art, mystic palm which was a medical jutsu that can heal basic cuts, bruises and numb pain. She also visited Dan's shop and with his help, made some modifications to her gauntlets, which she hasn't shown her teammates. The only noticeable difference about the bracelets was that she now had more on her shoulders, ankles and lower thighs. It was at this stage Kakashi decided the team was ready to take on missions again. Next mission. Genin Team 7 reporting for mission Hokage-sama. Requesting local C rank or multiple D ranks. The Hokage looked up from the paperwork in front of him to see Team 7 looking excited and battle ready, they each wore new outfits to help their fighting style. Scanning over the team he appraised their new threads. Naruto now wore a no-sleeve full body suit much like Zabuza's but fully black. He still wore his orange arm sleeves, but now his chakra weights were on the bottom instead of his shuriken seal bracelets. He wore his headband like Mizuki used too, unfolded covering the top of his head. His signature weapons holster slung onto his back, the white seal visible against the black coloring of the sheath. His lower face was wrapped in an orange mask, similar to Kakashi's. Sasuke's outfit was a dark blue long sleeve shirt that held the Uchiha fan on his back. His kuza wrapped around his chest with seals visible on almost every chain link. He wore pants that was white at the top and slowly faded into red, his sandals being a blood red color themselves. He had a sealer's pouch on both thighs and the emblem for beginner sealers on his left shoulder. Sakura now wore a shirt which was similar to the top half of her old dress. The bottom half of her body was covered with black tights that had a red stripe running down the side, her pink hair was cut to shoulder length and pulled up into a hightail. She now wore her headband across her forehead, signifying her confidence as a kunoichi. Although she appeared to be completely unarmed, she actually had two seals stitched into her pants fabric on each leg, containing the essentials of a ninja's weapons pouch. Her weapon bands and bracelets gleamed in the light. The Hokage smiled, well you three certainly look the part, I'm guessing your training went well? The three genin nodded in response with a chant of hi Hokage sama slash gg, they said in unison. Sarutobi chuckled, well I guess if Kakashi says you're ready again. Although I think you should stick with a few D ranks, considering how close the Chunin exams are, he said with a smile. Kakashi's eye widened in shock, oh yeah, how much longer till they start Hokage-sama? He asked curiously. The Hokage looked at Kakashi as if to say, bitch is you crazy? But in the end he answered. It's tomorrow Kakashi, starting at 9 at the academy. Eh? He said shocked that it was almost time already. Um I don't suppose we can retract the mission request Hokage-sama? He asked sheepishly. Sarutobi smiled, sure Kakashi, make sure your students are ready all right? He said. Kakashi nodded and turned to his team, guys, take the day off and remember to be at the academy at 9am tomorrow for the first exam. Ciao. And off Kakashi poofed. Sasuke sighed as Naruto jumped out the window, race you guys to Ichiraku's, he said as he flew out the gap in the glass. Sakura smirked to Sasuke and said, better catch up Sasuke-kun, she said and disappeared in a super-fast sunshine. Sasuke sighed again and mumbled I always get left behind, maybe I could invent some kind of teleportation seal? He calmly walked out the door, in no rush. Sarutobi chuckled at their exit, HMHMHM, these kids are certainly something else. Next mission request. Naruto arrived at Ichiraku's with a cheer, I win. About time you got here, Naruto looked to his left to see Sakura sitting down, Ayame placing the team's usual order on the bench top. Naruto sighed as he sat down, it's no fair, you're probably the fastest Genin now, he mumbled as he started to inhale his first bowl. Sakura and Ayame laughed together at Naruto's expense. This was the scene that Sasuke walked in on, what did you this time Atoto? He asked as he grabbed his bowl of shrimp ramen and leaned against the wall from his stool, since it was the last in the row. 
Ayame glanced at Sasuke, the usual blush covering her features he was complaining about Sakura-chan's speed again, she said smiling sisterly at Sakura. Naruto finished his first bowl and started on his second, barely getting out Aniki, I finally finished your list. With a smirk between mouthfuls. Ayame blushed even more and let out a small cough, gaining Sakura's attention she leant over and whispered. That's the list I was telling you about. Sakura's eyes widened in realization. Over the week, Sakura and Ayame had grown very close. Sakura took Ayame out when she needed a new outfit and since the little shopping spree, the two gladly jousted to everyone that they were best friends. On one of their hangouts, Ayame told Sakura about Sasuke's wife list as she called it. They made an agreement that they could share with each other, but they weren't fond of the idea of too many wives. The girls giggled, causing Sasuke to look up at them. What is it? He asked. The girls looked at him and giggled again before saying in unison, nothing Sasuke-kun. The two boys were a little creeped out at the action. Naruto inhaled the last part of his second bowl of ramen before whispering to Sasuke, PSST. I got the list at home, I'll show you when we get there okay? So who is it that likes me? Do I know her well? He asked. Sasuke looked at Naruto, clearly irritated and confused with the girl's behavior. Yeah you do, in fact she was in our class, he said. Naruto's eyes widened in shock, really? Who is it? He yelled, gaining the attention of the two girls. Sasuke smirked, I said I'd give you a clue Atoto, I never said I'd tell, he said before eating his ramen. Sakura turned to Sasuke, who are you asking about Naruto ni? She inquired. Ah I doubt you'd know, it's a very secretive subject. It's about the girl that likes Naruto. Shut up Aniki. Sakura raised her brow at the two, wait, you don't know Naruto ni? It's kinda obvious. She trailed off thinking of all the times the girl had blushed redder than a tomato whenever Naruto was mentioned. Naruto looked at her in shock, what? You know who it is too? He asked. Tuchi leaned over the counter and took Naruto's two empty bowls and Sakura's empty bowl before placing Naruto's third bowl in front of him. You mean the little one I see following Naruto around here sometimes? I miss her, she always picked up the bill when you would run away due to the ninja discovering your pranks back at the academy, he said with a smile. Naruto's head turned so quick his neck cracked, you know? He yelled in shock before burying his sorrows in his last bowl of ramen. Sasuke patted him on the back, everyone does but you Atoto. If we run into her I'll invite her over our house for dinner, that way you'll know who we're talking about, he said. This caused Sakura to stare at them, wait, what did you mean by our house? You two live together now? She asked, completely shocked. Naruto suddenly froze before chugging down his ramen broth hiding inside the bowl of voluptuous noodles. Sasuke sighed, shit, how can I get out of this without her hitting us? I got it. Guess there's no point in hiding it, I want our squad to live together. Will you move in with us Sakura-chan? He said hoping she'll like the idea and accept. Sakura was caught off guard, me? Move in with you too? Aye. That's great. I'd love to, she said unsure at first before lighting up the place with her grin. Naruto placed his now empty bowl down, awesome. Let's go get your stuff now and we can move it in, he said, excited that more of his family was coming together. Sasuke smiled and placed his bowl down, now finished. Let's get going guys, we'll see you tomorrow Ayame-chan, we said, waving and walking. Naruto and Sakura hopped off their stools, getting ready to follow after Sasuke. Catch you later ayame ne chan Old man Ichiraku. Be back tomorrow Aya-chan. Tuchi-san, they said as they ran to catch up to Sasuke. Tuchi smiled after the kids before turning back to his work. Ayame sighed while waving to the retreating backs of Team 7. As she started cleaning up their bowls, she found a note sitting amongst the bowls. Dear Ayame-chan. I would be honored if you would come over to our house for dinner sometime. When are you free next? Sincerely, Sasuke Uchiha. She blushed red when she saw Sasuke's signature. She placed the note in her pocket and got back to work, he wants me to come to his house. I'm so happy. She thought with a huge smile. Uchiha-sama wants you to move in with him. Yes. We can finally marry into that clan. Sakura's mother said running upstairs to grab a suitcase for her daughter. Sakami Haruno was a representative on the civilian council, she had been trying for years to find a way to join one of the major clans in Konoha. Her original plan was for Sakura to seduce the Hyuga clan heir 
but she turned out to be a female so the plan was botched. The Uchiha was a perfect substitute. Do you want to do this Sakura-chan? I don't care about clan status, do you trust this boy? Her father, Mayoshi Haruno asked from his place in a wheelchair. Mayoshi ran the Shinobi library during the week and was in charge of keeping track of which ninja learned from which jutsu scroll and gave weekly reports to the Hokage. He was a well-respected jonin before he had to retire due to internal injuries to his spine, he can barely move his right arm and leg as it was. Sakura smiled at her father, yeah dad, I have to be honest with you though, I'm moving in with both of my teammates, she said. Mayoshi nodded, as long as you trust them, I have no reason not to. Just promise me something, if either of those boys do anything that crosses the line. Tell me straight away. Alright? He said seriously while holding a caring smile on his face. Sakura got up and walked to her dad, thanks dad, I promise. Please look after mum for me? I know she's a little crazy but she means well. Although maybe you shouldn't tell her about Naruto, she said as she hugged him. He hugged her back with his good arm, I know honey, take care alright? And remember we're here if you need us, he said with a tear in his eye. Sakura, nodded and stepped away from her father. Hi daddy, she said quietly. Her mum ran back downstairs with a suitcase, what do you want to bring to Uchiha-sama's house? Sakura sighed and walked to the front door, it's cool mum, my teammate sent a battalion to help me move. I'm here to tell them what to grab and Sasuke-kun is at the new house, he's going to instruct them on where I want everything. Sakumi frowned at Sakura, you mean the demon is going to be in my house? No. I won't allow it, she said furiously. Sakura spun around and glared at her mother, don't call him that, she yelled at her mother. Sakumi's face turned red in anger, but held it in seeing the look on her husband's face. Fine. Make it fast, she said as she stormed into the kitchen. Sakura smiled in victory and ran over to the door, opening it, she looked over the group of 60 water clones. All right boys, remember your jobs? They all nodded with a smile. Get going them. As soon as she said this, they ran past her through to Sakura's room and soon started climbing out her window with everything she needed to bring. It was a very quick job, and Sakura found it hilarious, a bunch of cheering Naruto's running through her house and jumping out the window carrying furniture. Sakura let the last three Naruto's through the front door and closed it behind them. The Naruto's ran upstairs while another came down them, all the things in your room are on their way to Sasuke's house, you wanna check? It asked Sakura. She nodded, yeah I'll go now, I gotta get my things from the bathroom as well, she said as she walked up the stairs. The clone, making sure the coast was clear, approached Mayoshi who was looking out the window at the army of Naruto's. Haruno-san, boss gave me a message to deliver to you, it said as it passed him an envelope. Mayoshi nodded to the clone, thank you Naruto-san. The clone smiled and ran up the stairs to help Sakura with the last few items. Mayoshi opened the letter and read it. His stern face slowly turned into a smile, I guess I could, alright I don't see why not. He spoke to himself before turning back to the window. Seeing his little girl waved to him as she disappeared in a burst of speed. She's all grown up now, he said with a tear falling from his eye. Sakura arrived ahead of most of the Naruto clones, she came in the back door at the same time the first items were being put down. Wow Sakura-chan, you're getting really good at that shunshine knee? Naruto said as he was catching the dispelling water clones in a bucket and throwing the water out the window into the river. Sakura jumped onto her bed grinning as it was carried into her room by a smiling troop of Naruto's, that was pure speed Naruto ni, I've almost mastered my chakra skating technique so I'm uncatchable, she said, disappearing up the stairs towards her room. She rolled over on her bed as it was being put down in her room, seeing Sasuke sitting upside down on the roof to stay out of the way of clones she said hey Sasuke-kun, how's it going? He looked at her and smiled, holding up the list she wrote for him exactly how you planned Sakura-chan, even your entrance was impeccably timed, he said. Reading beautiful woman enters on her bed. Sakura laughed cheerily, are you calling me beautiful Sasuke-kun? She said with a smirk. He returned the look and shrugged, I guess you're alright, he said jokingly, before pushing off the roof and out of the room to avoid the flurry of junk Sakura threw at him. Atoto wanted to go to the shinobi library before dinner, so if you hurry we might be back before nightfall, he shouted over his shoulder for her to hear. Sakura frowned and looked at the closest Naruto, which was placing down the last piece of furniture before the material things came in, do you think I'm beautiful? She asked with puppy eyes. The clone raised a brow, I'm just a clone, I don't think, 
it said before walking out and yelling down the stairs, Oi boss! Do we think Sakura-chan is beautiful? Did she ask you that? Naruto yelled back. Yeah the clone replied, in that case say yes really meaningfully and get back to work, it should be sufficient enough. Sakura frowned and buried her head under a pillow when she felt a hand on her shoulder, looking up she saw a different Naruto that was hanging her posters up. I think you're beautiful Sakura-chan, just ignore the other clones, they're messing with you, it said as it got back to work. Sakura smiled and said, thanks Naruni. As she ran out the door and towards the two male genin. Another clone nudged the one that cheered up Sakura, nice save, I thought she was gonna mope all day, it said. Ha ha ha, thanks. The other said back. Ready, Sakura said as she leapt out of the front door and landed in front of her teammates. Naruto smiled to her, finally, let's head off, he said and the three started walking towards the shinobi library. Sakura realized she didn't know what they were looking for, so she asked what are we looking for when we get there? Sasuke smirked at her, Naruto wants to learn that miss jutsu that Zabuza used on us. I'm thinking we all should get an area effect jutsu, they are handy in ambush situations and as a distraction. What do you think? He said. Naruto was about to say something when he heard a loud gasp then a small squeal. He looked down the alleyway they were passing and saw a guy in a black full body suit harassing a blue haired girl. He was about to ask the man to step away when he realized the girl the cat suited man was about to force himself onto was Hinata, his rage spiraled. Oi step away from Hinata. He ordered gripping the guy's wrist tight enough for them to hear a small crack. The guy pushed Naruto off him saying, buzz off kid, I want something sweet before the chunin exams and this Hayuga is looking awfully tasty, he said, his disgusting grin showing off the war paint on his face. Naruto grabbed the guy's shoulder and slammed him into the opposite wall of the alleyway, unsealing one of his shuriken and slamming it into the wall around his neck. Back. Off. Now, Naruto said with a snarl. Naruto suddenly heard something rushing at him from down the alleyway, he turned to see a wind wall flying at him. Naruto smirked and made a single one-handed sign before blowing the wind wall back with his wind style, great breakthrough. He heard a girl shout in shock, then suddenly she was slammed into the wall next to Naruto's captive. Sakura's hand around her neck, gauntlet partially activated only covering her hand. Sasuke stepped up behind his teammates and pulled Hinata to her feet, are you okay Hinata-san? He asked, his eyes scanning for any other possible threats. Why yeah Sasuke-san, she stuttered staring at the three in shock. H he grabbed m my arm, and h he pulled me and he here. I I was s scared. Sasuke nodded in response. Sakura noticed the two ninjas headbands, San Village Ninja? I'm guessing you're here for the Chunin exams then? She asked. Sakura loosened her grip on the girl's neck so she could answer, yeah we are, I didn't mean to attack you, I thought you were attacking my brother so I wanted to defend him. After hearing the girl's explanation, Sakura dropped her to the floor. She got to her knees gasping, seriously Konkuro? You tried to force yourself onto a Hayuga? Are you insane? She asked. Konkuro was too afraid to move, he was stuck in a death glare from Naruto. Whose eyes were slitted and flickered between red and blue. PP please, let me G go. I swear I'll leave just don't kill me, he cried out as Naruto's killing intent washed over him with the combined power of Naruto's hatred and Zabuza's bloodlust. Sasuke pulled Naruto off Konkuro and spun Naruto towards him, Naruto. Stop this now, he said staring into Naruto's eyes with his Sharingan, trying to calm him with hypnotism. It wasn't working. Sakura placed her hand on Naruto's arm, his head whipped towards her Naruni, Hinata needs you, she said to him. Instantly the killing intent disappeared and Naruto's eyes returned to his normal blue, he turned to Hinata who was crouched behind Sasuke, and looked scared for her life. Naruto bent down to her and embraced her in a hug, you're okay Hinata, I've got you, he whispered to her over and over again. Sasuke wrenched his brother's shuriken out of the wall, letting Konkuro fall to the ground. I will escort you two to the Hokage. You will cooperate or I will kill you. Am I clear? He ordered with his Sharingan blazing. That won't be necessary. A voice said from the mouth of the alleyway. Everyone turned and saw a red-haired kid glaring at the two sand ninjas, these are my teammates. I will take them straight to our sensei for disciplinary action, he said. Konkuro and the girl stood against the wall, just as scared as he was when Naruto held his life on a whim. Gara, please don't overreact, we'll come with you to Baki Sensei Tamari, shut up or I'll kill you. The small redhead said before walking away from the alleyway, 
his teammates following after him. All members of Team 7 surrounded Hinata and pulled her from the alleyway. Are you okay Hinata? Sakura asked. Hinata, who was still in Naruto's arms continued to shake. I I I I think as so as Sakura-san. Naruto pulled Hinata tighter into his grasp, which she huddled into searching for protection from the horrifying experience she almost experienced just moments before. Far too scared to be embarrassed about the proximity. Sasuke looked around and then leaned forwards, Hinata-san, would you like us to take you home? Or something we can do for you? He asked trying to see her face. Hinata nodded, H home P please, she mumbled into Naruto's chest. Naruto held Hinata tightly as the four made their way to the Hyuga household. Sasuke and Sakura had taken positions just in front of Naruto and Hinata, and slightly to the sides to keep defense at its maximum. They arrived at the compound without incident, Hinata's grip had loosened a little now that she was out of the situation. Sasuke approached the Hyuga guardsman, we need to see Lord Hyashi Hyuga. He spoke with more authority than he deserved, bringing out his Uchiha pride. The guards didn't respond, but the one on the left hit the gate twice. Causing them to be open from the inside, a Hyuga member with a seal on his forehead walked up to the gate. Request? He asked. Sakura stepped up next to Sasuke, we need to talk to Lord Hyuga about an incident concerning Hinata, she said. The guard considered the two in front of him without taking any interest, but when he saw Hinata's shivering form his eyes widened. Right away, he said before turning and running into the compound. A full minute later, he came back panting. Hyashi-sama will see you now, follow me please. The four followed the Hyuga branch member to an office deep in the compound. He paused at the door. Enter. Hyashi's voice echoed from inside. The branch member bowed and slid the door open. Allowing the Genin to enter, Hyashi sat doing paperwork. A frustrated scowl was the only thing that flawed his illusion of perfection. What is this about my daughter? He asked without looking up from the sheet he was currently reading. Sasuke and Sakura sat down on a mat while Naruto crouched, holding Hinata to him. Dot father? Hyashi looked up at the sound of his daughter's voice. Only to see her looking at him from Naruto's arms. He dropped the sheet he was holding and stared at Hinata, hiding his concern under a face of passiveness. What is wrong Hinata? Why are your, friends, accompanying you to this meeting? He asked scanning the faces of Team 7. Sasuke, who knew proper protocol for visiting with a higher clan elder bowed his head before sitting up and talking clearly, Lord Hyashi, my name is Sasuke Uchiha of Team 7. I wish to relay what has happened to you if you'd let me. I'm afraid Hinata-san may not be comfortable talking about such an, event. Hyashi nodded at Sasuke's behavior, but frowned slightly at the Uchiha's words, go on then Sasuke, he said. Sasuke bowed again before continuing, we of Team 7 were on our way to the Shinobi Library in hopes of learning an area effect jutsu before the exams tomorrow, when my teammate Naruto Uzumaki heard something taking place in an alleyway we were passing. Unfortunately, what he heard was Hinata about to be sexually assaulted by a foreign ninja. Hyashi clenched his fists so tight his knuckles were showing through his skin a blaring white, we intercepted the assault and defused the situation, afterwards Hinata seemed to take the most comfort in the arms of Naruto, so as a team we escorted her here in hopes of you receiving and looking after her. That is all sir. Sasuke finished with another bow. Hyashi stared at him, and then looked at Hinata's face. She was asleep, but still crying and holding onto Naruto's shirt as if her life depended on it. Hyashi stood, frightening the Genin a little. I sincerely thank you Team 7 for returning my daughter to me safely. I owe each of you a great debt. The three Genin were surprised to be promised a debt from the Hyuga head. You may leave, except you Naruto. I would like to talk to you. Sasuke and Sakura bowed once more before leaving the room to wait outside. Hyashi turned his glance to Naruto. I see you still haven't released my daughter Uzumaki-san, he said. Naruto returned the look and simply said, she hasn't asked me to sir. Hyashi stared at Naruto from his place standing behind the desk. I assume these foreign ninja are here for the Chunin exams Uzumaki-san? Naruto nodded, it appeared so sir, he said, slightly nervous about being around such a powerful man. Hyashi walked around his deck and crouched in front of Naruto and the sleeping Hinata. Naruto, I know what you hold inside of you. I know about your parents. I know about your secret jutsu. Naruto's eyes widened in shock. I could ruin you if I want, I need you to know that. Naruto nodded, scared for what may happen. But the question is, do you know about everything? Hyashi asked. 
Naruto met the look of Hyashi, Hyashi-sama, I have never known anything about my parents, he said quietly. Hyashi frowned, I thought so. In that case I will make a deal with you, he said. Naruto's brow raised, deal? He asked. Hyashi stood up and began to walk behind the desk, I want you to kill the ninja that tried to violate my daughter, and in return I will tell you all about my teammate. He was your father. Hyashi finished sitting down behind his desk. Do we have a deal? Naruto smirked at Hyashi, I thank you for this opportunity Hyashi-sama, but I must be honest with you. I plan to kill him already. He smiled. Hyashi returned the smirk, the Hyuga need powerful allies Naruto-san. Will you be one of them? Naruto stood up, picking Hinata up bridal style. I will be whatever I need to be to keep this village safe. Hyashi nodded, just like your father. Hyashi took Hinata from Naruto's grasp, I wish you luck for the exams Naruto-san, he said placing Hinata on a large mat next to his desk, and pulled a sheet out from the cupboard and draped it over her. I will talk to you afterwards. Naruto bowed before walking out of the room and meeting up with his teammates. Together, they walked out of the compound. Once they left and the gates closed behind them, Sakura let out a huge breath. That was a bit nerve-wracking. Sasuke nodded with a grunt HN. The gate opened again and a Hyuga branch member ran out, excuse me? Hyashi-sama said you three wanted area effect jutsu, and his informants had enough about you to find what fits your style best. So, here you go, he said handing each of them a scroll. Naruto smiled, thanks. The Hyuga bowed and ran back inside the compound. Sasuke smiled, sweet. This ended up well, he said. Naruto cheered, yeah. Let's get some dinner and go learn these jutsu. Sakura smiled, if you guys want to help me shop, I can cook us something? She said. Both boys smiled widely, let's get going then. Your cooking is great Sakura-chan, Naruto said. The three started jogging towards the local market. Intent on being prepared for the Chunin exams. Mayoshi sat in his wheelchair, on the balcony that hung from his and his wife's room. His wife had just headed to bed, leaving him to wait for his visitor. Hearing someone land crouched on the railing to his left, Mayoshi turned and met the eyes of a serious Naruto. Naruto lowered from the railing and bowed to Mayoshi, Good evening Mayoshi-san. He spoke quietly. Mayoshi nodded back, Hello Naruto-san, what is it you need to speak with me about? He asked politely. Naruto looked at Mayoshi for a second in consideration. I informed Sakura about my status with the fox. I want to know your opinion before I tell you hers. Mayoshi's eyes widened in shock, she knows? And she still plans to live with you and Sasuke? He asked. Naruto nodded, yes, I consider her family. And she knows I would never harm those I care about. Mayoshi smiled at Naruto, shocking him slightly. I always hoped my girl would see the difference I do. Look after her Naruto-san. I know I can trust you, he said turning back to his room. A sudden mist blew over the area and Mayoshi turned to see Naruto's grinning face disappearing into it. As soon as it came, the mist was suddenly gone and Naruto disappeared along with it. I swear on my nin do Mayoshi-san. I will look after Sakura Nei chan His voice echoed on the empty balcony. Alright guys, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. As always, the rest of the story is already out over on Patreon, link to that will be in the description. Anyways, until next time, peace.